to him. Upon your children, upon your nation, upon the world and the universe. His mercy triumphs over judgment. His mercy has triumphed over judgment of Satan and his evil agent. Him, he deserves that. His mercy has foiled the evil plans of Satan. And here you are in God's presence, living freely glorifying God freely. He said, I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. These are voices of mercy of God speaking for you and members of your family. Give thanks to God for that. There is no sin you committed in the past that is being carried over by you because of his mercy. Give thanks to God for that. You are truly forgiven and justified spiritually because of his mercy. Now ask him to teach you to be merciful to other people. Ask Jesus Christ to teach you how to be merciful to yourself and to other people.
simply ask you, say, ask them. We can go to anywhere I don't know anything about. I am not the one that have taken it, but the other people should talk. But you know that I've kept quiet. Now, what is the difference between you and the parents of this boy? At least they gave birth to him. They knew he was blind. And they knew that this man had been blind for so many years. No one ever did such a miracle for the son. Instead of promoting the truth, they kept quiet and shifted the answer to the boy. If truth is not said now, it might not be said later. If the right judgment is not delivered now, it might not be delivered later. Let us see what happened and hear more. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. There are so many of your relatives that will only come close to you when everything is favorable. But when things are not favorable, when they will be questioned, they run and leave you alone. Now check yourself. How many people have you abandoned? at a point they needed you most just because you don't want to be part of their troubles. They knew that the Pharisees, the scribes, and the teachers of the law were interrogating them, questioning them so that they would find something they could use against them. They decided to shift and say, I ask him, verses 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. What was the motive why they were saying, give God the glory? Hidden agenda, satanic plots. Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. Who were they referring to? Jesus Christ. Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. I cannot come up with your evil judgment. Perish with your evil judgment. I'm not a partaker. Listen, I have my own right to say what I know. Look at what he said here. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see how many times have people shifted your opinions and caused you to say what you never intended to say? What became of you afterward? How many times did you stand your ground and voice out your own opinion even in the midst of oppositions? He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered to them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? What did you love before? that you have started hating because of opposition. Many move from one marriage to another with evil attitudes. Many move from one political party to another. There is always spiritual movement, physical movement, and the like. This kind of movement should be led by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, not the spirit of falsehood. We have a common judge that will handle the affairs of everyone on the last day. 
Remember, everybody seemed to be speaking here. The Pharisees, the parents of the boy, other people that said, no, it's right. We've never seen a sinner opening the eyes of another sinner. Remember, there was not a common agreement. People had their various opinions. So also in life, life is always surrounded with different alternatives, various opinions. And that is why you are given the right to choose, not just to choose, but to make the right choice. The best choice anyone can make is the decision not to sin against God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Many nations are plunged into wars because of judgments that are rendered, decisions that are made by people. Many people are at war today because of judgments that are rendered. There are judgments everywhere, but there is eternal judgment. If all of us who appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that we can give account of everything we have said, done, approved, or failed to approve. What kind of judgment are we expecting to have? What can triumph over satanic judgments that are already against you? Satan's plan is not to let you live. Satan's plan is not even to let you enter into the kingdom of God. He has agents everywhere. You need something that will help you to overcome all satanic judgment. And that is the mercy of God. Today's message, God's mercy triumphs over judgment. Let us read on and see what happened. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. There are two types of judgments. Number one, man's judgment that springs from man's opinions. Man's judgment which springs from man's opinion is a judgment that is based on what is seen, what is heard, what the circumstances look like, what other people have agreed to say or approve and on what one feels. Number two, God's judgment is a judgment that springs from the word and spirit of God. God's judgment is eternal judgment, overrules all, controls all, and cannot be changed by anyone. God's kind of judgment is final and unquestionable. Why did they throw the man out? Just because he proved to them that what he was saying was nothing but the truth. They have seen all the evidences, yet they did not accept it. 
They saw all the evidences, yet they did not accept them. They robbed the healed blind man of his right to be healed, right to receive healing, right to say the truth. And that was why they all agreed and cast him out. How many people are part of your WhatsApp group today? Why are they part? And how many people that are no longer part of your WhatsApp group or your association? And why are they not? How many people are still standing by your side as friends? And how many people are no longer part of your life as friends? You are where you are because of the friends or company you keep. You will be where you will be because of the friends and the company you are keeping. Why should anybody fail to stand for the truth? Many people have integrity and they wouldn't want their integrity to be destroyed by anything. That is why if it will warrant them to decamp from companies, groups of people that will not allow the integrity of God in their lives to grow, you will see them decamping because of God's integrity in them. Integrity is very important. It's one of the good qualities God has given to his children. Integrity cannot be proven. It must be discerned. They discerned, saw all the evidences, yet they cast the man out. But what about you? Many are depressed today because they have lost their wayward friends who is not ready to repent. Many are depressed today because they are no longer accepted by friends that are addicted to smoking, drunkenness, and other lives of sin. They say, I'm lonely. I am lonely. Loneliness is a life without God. If you have multitudes by your side without God in your life, you are spiritually lonely. You with God are the spiritual majority. They draw the man away for not lying, for standing for what he believed. That was nothing but the truth. What about you? The issues on your table that you are handling that will affect millions of people. Are you standing on the truth or you are collecting money to twist the truth? There are judgments everywhere. Judgments in the north, south, east and west. But the only judgment that will stand is God's divine judgment. God's divine judgment is final. You need to have something that will triumph over all satanic judgment. And that thing is God's mercy. Who is qualified to receive mercy from God? Matthew chapter 5 verses 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. There is no mercy in the kingdom of darkness. That is why Satan is not merciful. There is no mercy in the kingdom of darkness. That is why you cannot find anything like truth there. The judgment has begun already. Satan has his own people that are voicing out for him. They are in charge of affairs and we see them voicing out and these are the things that are causing wars everywhere. Bloodshed everywhere. Tribalism everywhere. Nepotism everywhere. Injustice everywhere. Misrule everywhere. God also has mercy that always works with the truth. What does mercy work with? Can I hear you? The truth. Truth always demands for evidence. Truth sees the evidence and admit them. And use them 
to vindicate the possessor. I mean the possessor of truth. God is the God of truth. If you are working for God and you are to speak your mind on the issues at hand, what kind of verdicts are you expected to give? Seeing the evidences on the ground. If you are not used by God, you will be used by Satan. If you are not working for God, you will be working for who? Satan. God never created anyone to work for Satan. He said, my people whom I have formed, I have formed them for my own glory. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 7. Meaning, you cannot say, no, I am from the south, north, east, and west. I am from this continent and that continent. I belong to this political party or that political party. I come from that uh, tribe. I am rich or poor. Nothing like that. Do the right thing. They drove the man out. As it was. So it is. God wants the world. And the inhabitants of the world. To promote the truth. And render. His kind of judgment. He wants his children. To be led by the spirit of judgment, mercy, and truth. Judgment has started already. Judgment has started already. And each one of us will be called to give account of everything we have done. On that day, no one would say, Oh no, I belong to a certain political party. I just came from a certain family. They told me that the other family is very wicked. That was why I joined them to say what I said, to do what I did. You will not be able to say all these things because they will not be as allowed. The only thing that will triumph over all satanic judgment in your life, in your nation, in your continent, in the world and even in your own generation is God's mercy. If you are looking for the mercy of God, you must be ready to give out the same mercy to other people. What does mercy work with? Mercy works with the truth. The truth demands for evidences. Jesus said to them, if any one of you did not commit any single sin let the person be the first to stone this woman to death being convicted in their own heart and conscience in their own mind they said look even if we have not done what this woman has done but we have done another one meaning we are also guilty you see them dropping their stone they dropped their stones beginning from the oldest to the youngest and they all left. Now ask, what really triumphed over all satanic judgments that were against the woman who was caught in the act of adultery? And it was simply God's mercy. Remember the woman did not go there and say, yes, um, I did not commit that sin. Or, um, they too, they have committed that sin. They have committed this, they have committed that. She kept quiet and was pleading for the mercy of God to speak for her. Jesus said here, for judgment to have come into this world. We are going to read it. John chapter 9 from verses 39. For judgment, I have come into this world that those who claim they are saying will become blind and those who are blind will see. We will read it now. Pay attention. Verses 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? 
verses 37. And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped. He said, verses 39, where I referred you to. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind. When you ignore the truth, you are spiritually blind. When you ignore the truth, you are what? Spiritually blind. Don't say, no, I can still see with my physical eyes. I am not blind. I can write, I can read, I can continue my job. I'm still working. I can move about. When you ignore the truth, hate the truth, promote lies, abandon all the visible evidences that will vindicate the oppressed, then you are truly spiritually blind. The worst kind of blindness is spiritual blindness. Inability to see the light of the gospel of salvation. Spiritual blindness is one's inability to see the light of the gospel of salvation that sets people free. For judgment have come into this world that those who see may become blind and those who do not see may see. Your spiritual eyes must be opened and allowed to focus on God, His eternal words and spirit. Let's complete this statement, verses 39. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remains. What is spiritual blindness? Sin is darkness. And darkness is what? Sin. When you commit sin, you belong to the kingdom of darkness. When you do not commit sin, you belong to the kingdom of light. Jesus said, as long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. The word of God is Jesus Christ. In him was light and that light was the light of men. It is better for you to live doing what is right than to die doing what is wrong. It is better for you to die doing what is right than for you to live doing what is wrong. This kind of judgment was not issued out by anyone. But Jesus came up with a very strong judgment that challenged the doctrines of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the teachers of the law. You say, nobody has ever come up with this kind of judgment. If I give it, this person will kill me. 
that person will kill me. They are too powerful. Jesus stood his ground and issued out judgment that preserved lives. Judgment that stopped the spirit of killing, stealing and destruction from operating. What are you in charge of? What are you presiding over? And what kind of judgment are you ready to give? The one that will cause chaos, confusion, wars, tribalism, hatred, disunity, anger, violence among people or the one that will stop the spirit of killing, stealing, and destruction. Jesus issued out his kind of judgment and those who held the stone dropped their stones quietly went back home and allowed peace to reign in the land. Now check yourself. What position are you occupying in your own nation? What position are you occupying where you are? What kind of verdict are you planning to give? Or have you secretly concluded to give? What will be the impact? The kind of judgment Jesus Christ delivered in these two chapters of the Bible stopped the spirit of ignorance from operating, the spirit of disunity from operating, the spirit of murder from operating, the spirit of kidnapping from operating, the spirit of terrorism from operating, the spirit of confusion, hatred, bitterness, rage, anger, unforgiveness, arrogance, self-righteousness, and the like from operating. God is looking for someone to use to bring peace. Are you the one? God is looking for someone to bring unity reconciliation, tolerance, forbearance, patience, forgiveness, equity, justice, fairness, righteousness, and good governance. Are you the one by your own fruit or character you will be known? Righteousness exhorts a nation, exhorts a family, exhorts a state, exhorts a continent, and even exhorts the world. Sin is a reproach. When you deliver wrong judgment, you are committing sins that will promote bloodshed on the land. People that came to this physical world 2,000 years ago are no more. What did they come for? What was their motives in everything they did while they were on earth? Some came to promote bloodshed, wars, violence, disunity, and the like. They had reasons why they did that. Some wanted to become more powerful than others. That was one of their reasons. Some wanted to become richer than others. They enriched themselves in their own evil ways. But today, they are no longer living in this physical world. They have also gone to face their maker and also receive their own portion or judgment. Some came to oppress people and promote oppression. When it comes to a certain tribe, they say, no, that tribe can never be in the best position to handle this or handle that. When it comes to a certain religion, they say, no, that religion, anybody from that religion should not be allowed to take care of this and take care of that. They come together to oppress and cause 
religious operation, tribal bigotries, and the like. These were the things they did, but today they are no longer living in this physical world. They want to meet with their maker without something that could triumph over all satanic judgments that were truly against them. Where are they spending their eternity today? Of course, you know the place. H-E-L-L. -L, hell. A few of them came to promote righteousness. They stood against killing, stealing and destruction. They promoted fairness, equity, justice, love, forgiveness, tolerance, patience, sincerity at the highest level, forgiveness, and even mercy. Today, they are no longer living in this physical world. They also went to meet with their maker, who has the final judgment or final say, with something that was capable of triumphing over all satanic judgments that were against them. They got to their maker, and their maker looked at them and saw something that triumphed over all satanic judgments, the mercy of God. Where are they spending their eternity now? H-E-A-V-E-N, heaven. Life offers people equal opportunities, and that is why we are here like them. How are you going about the issues of your life? and issues that are cropping up in this physical world. What is your judgment like? What are you doing? What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to handle issues so that you will not promote killing, stealing, and destruction? Are you going to put on or have something that will triumph over all satanic judgments that will stand against you on the day of judgment, which is God's mercy. We cannot blame anybody. We cannot blame our tribe. We cannot blame our leaders. We cannot blame ourselves. We cannot even blame Satan. We have to work out our own salvation, not the next time, but now. Whether someone is from another tribe or not, what is right is right. And what is wrong is wrong. Whether someone is from another political party or not, what is right is right. And what is wrong is wrong. Whether someone is from another religion or not, what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong light is always light i'm talking about l i g h t light is always what light and darkness is always what darkness what is right belongs to light and what is wrong belongs to what darkness you cannot say, no, I was under the influence of money. They gave me a big amount, and I was struggling to pay my children's school fees, have houses of my own, also become rich, and probably provide for members of my family. That was why I was influenced to collect money and do the wrong thing. Only the doers of the word of God are allowed to receive good things from God. God himself said in Isaiah chapter 1 from verses 19 to 20. Hmm. If you do not obey, you will not eat the good fruit of the land. If you obey, of course, you will eat the good fruit of the land. It's not a matter of destroying this nation and running to 
another nation for safety. It is not a matter of destroying this tribe and running to another tribe for safety. It is not a matter of destroying this continent and hiding another continent for safety. Remember that your enemies are unseen. One of your greatest enemy is Satan and he goes to and fro looking for whom to devour. If you leave your own country just because you have destroyed your own country with your own judgment and you go to another country probably to hide and hide your children there, will you also hide from Satan? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Jonah said, I will not allow mercy to triumph. You told me to go to Nineveh and deliver message. And I said the message to them. They have actually sinned. Allow them to be destroyed. God said, no. Go back and speak to them. He said, no. You called me and I answered you. Why are you calling me again? Let them perish. He just decided to run. On his way to another place. Hmm. Something that was bigger than what he ever dreamt about was waiting for him right there in the sea. Those people with him did not even wait. They went in his spirit and knew that Jonah was just the cause of the trouble they were facing. And they said, come, you cannot hide here. There is no hiding place and there is no peace for the wicked. Come here. You will go and serve your punishment in the belly of the whale. Let us throw him there. We will assist you. They threw him there. What saved Jonah? Was he not God's mercy? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? They said this man disobeyed God. He deserved death. That was their own judgment. But God still looked at him and said, look, he is my servant, let's spare him. It was the mercy of God that saved Jonah and caused him to go back and do what he's supposed to do. Your own case may not be like Jonah. You said you want to destroy yourself, destroy everybody, destroy everything in your country with your own hands. And you believe you can run to anywhere in the world for safety. What you plant is what you will reap. What you plant is what you will reap. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verses 12, God called his children and everyone in the world to sow their seeds in righteousness. Not in sin, not in rebellion, not in injustice. You cannot destroy your own family and believe you go to another family to hide there for safety. How have you been talking about the matters of your family? What have you said so far that is causing confusion, disunity, enmity, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, and lack of love? Many left their own country to another country only to be followed and which hunted by the unseen evil spirits of poverty, rejection, disappointment, failure, sicknesses, and diseases. You thought when you run and go to another place, you'll be safe there. If the right thing is not done where you are, it may not be done where you are going. The best time to do the right thing is not the next time, but now, behold, this is the day of salvation. This is the accepted time. He did not say, behold, next year, next generation, or uh, next people that will take over will do the right thing. Everybody is just there to devour, scatter, take, 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 take. You keep taking and you believe other people should come and repay what you have done. What you make happen for other people, God will cause other people that will make that thing happen to you. Learn to do good. Matthew chapter 5 from verses 48 
your Father in heaven allows his sun to shine on both the righteous and the sinners. Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is what? Perfect. Matthew chapter 5 from verses 44 to 48. Bless those who curse you. Do good to everyone. Not selected people. Why do you always run to a place that will favor you? When you are not a promoter of truth, you will become a spiritual prostitute. Write it down. When you are not a promoter of truth, you will become a spiritual prostitute. If it is where here you come, after destroying the place, you run to another place. You go again. After destroying the place, you go to another place again. You go again. When you are not a promoter of truth, you will become a spiritual prostitute moving from one place to another without any spiritual direction. We are given equal opportunity by God to come like the people that came. And we have equal grace to handle issues. Jesus looked at the whole thing and said, Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is what? Perfect. In other words, Jesus was telling you, telling me and telling everybody to be an imitator of God. To be an imitator of who? Can I hear you say God? Satan has occultic kingdoms and he has souls in occultic kingdoms that he also wants to allow to rule with his evil mission of promoting wars, bloodshed, corruption, injustice, killing, stealing, destruction, tribalism, misunderstanding, anger, intolerance, and the like. God also has his kingdom and his children he has empowered to bring good governance. They have the grace to promote fairness, justice, equity, tolerance, righteousness, good investment and development that are always visibly seen. They are not destroyers. God was the one choosing the leaders of the Israelites from the beginning. The people came up and said, we can also do our own and organize and choose people for ourselves. What kind of leader did they finally choose? That which comes from man is full of carnality. That which comes from God is always spiritual. God's government is unchangeable and should be allowed to dominate and rule. Satan's government is full of destruction and must be allowed to go through deliverance that is only done by God. What can triumph over all satanic judgments that are always against people in the world? That is the mercy of God. And that is why this message that formed our Bible studies today is titled, God's mercy triumphs over judgment. I leave you, your heart, your mind and conscience in the light of this message to be in the presence of God where you can make the right choice. Choose to be merciful not just to yourself, but also to your fellow human beings. 
choose to promote what is right and allow God's government to rule. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Right now, I stand against satanic thrones. All satanic thrones. All satanic institutions that are existing in the kingdoms of darkness. All satanic activities that are in charge of violence, injustice, anger, 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 misrule, intolerance, intolerance, bribery, corruption, sexual immorality, fear, 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 death, 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 to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost fire, 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 fire. same fire to them, send fire to them, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall stand and succeed. All satanic judgments, all satanic judgments that are against your nation, your tribe, your family, your business, your destiny, your good health, your blessings, your marriage, holy God fire, 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 fire. Same for after them. Make sure you are aggressive. Judgment that are against your good health, in form of sickness, disease, pain, holy God fire, sun fire, 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 destroy them. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be in good health. He does not want you to be sick. All satanic judgments that are against your good health. Holy God fire. 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 Same fire to them. Your health must not be condemned. Same fire to them. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, not the temple of sickness. The mercy of God has triumphed on satanic judgment. Your spirit of death with all your evil judgments in charge of sickness, disease, pain, weaknesses, 
Where are you? Holy Ghost fire. 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 Send fire to them. You are not of your own. You belong to God. He takes care of his temple. He does not want anything that is not planted by him to be in you. Amen. 
judgment. Satanic tribunals in charge of bloodshed, violence, 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 injustice, 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 anger, 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 bitterness, 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 holding on fire. Say fire! Say fire! Tear! 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 Destroy all of them. It's not going to be business as usual. It's not going to be business as usual. Anyone who walks with me will never walk in darkness. Meaning, if his mercy speaks for someone, his mercy will continue to speak for the person forever. Not occasion. I've taken everything from her. Like, give examples. All our glory now. Everything about her. I've taken them all. Where did you take them to? In my kingdom now, before Uncle. Which kingdom? Of light or of darkness? Darkness before. Who are you? I am her husband. Leave me alone. How many of you are hiding in her? Many, 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 many. How do you operate, you spiritual husband? I have held her. I held her a long time ago. I married her since. She even has children for me. She cannot have any child here. Do you know her age? Mm -hmm. I have taken this one since now. Menstruation for a year. Since how many years ago? Do you know the year I took it? Mm -hmm. Ah, four. I am the king. How many women have you possessed, you wicked king of darkness? If you leave yourself, I come in. What do they normally do that enabled you wicked king of darkness? Sin, 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 sin. How Hello. does the message of Christopher Orji mm. that are always against sins and sinful desires, how have that message been destroying you, mm. wicked king of darkness? When you speak anything that is against what we do, of course you are against us now. If you are against us, you are against us. We know, we know, we know. How many people have you possessed and destroyed in the world? I said many, uncountable, just... Uh -uh. Do you only go after women or you also go after men? Men, men. women, men, women, men, women. Uh, this one that I have even finished her. <laughs> She's finished now. You said through sins and sinful desires, you have been possessing both male and female, and destroying them all around the world with your evil judgments. Are you aware that God's mercy triumphs over judgments? We know now. We know all these things. Knowledge of the scripture is not the key. Obedience is. What is in today's message that will destroy all satanic judgments and set the people you have convicted in the spiritual realm 
completely free. They do what you have said now. They will be free now. Uh -huh now. Uh, but if they, if they refuse to do all your teachings, all what you have said today, they will still remain with us, bound forever. Ah, they must follow us there. Oh, we will not go there alone now. You, you people too will go with us. If you live in disobedience, we've captured you already. Come to church, live in disobedience. <laughs> you are with us. You are under our claws. How do you destroy nations and promote wrong judgment, injustice, and the like? How? We deal with the rulers. We don't deal with mere men. Rulers. We just incite them. We speak to them. We give them ideas. They listen to us. They carry out our plan. They make sacrifices, they do all those, and we, we, are, we are together. They are, they, are, they are doing our will, those ones. They are doing our will. They are doing our will here on earth until we cover every way. The earth belongs to us. What have you done to the nation, Nigeria, and other nations in the world? Yeah, let that chaos, it's just what we want, chaos. We want that chaos. Let it just be there. Let it, let that chaos, we are very happy with it all over. This, this place, this one here, <laughs> this place here, <laughs> this country. Oh. Which country? This one. Where we are standing in, uh, yell, this is a country. Nigeria. What are your evil activities? We deal with the rulers. They carry out our plans. Remember, the mercy of God always triumphs over your evil judgments. What are your evil judgments, your evil plans and works? that you have against this nation and nations in the world? Chaos, that's all. Confusion, scatter, mm -hmm. disorganization. Anything that is against unity or peace, that is what we have planned for this nation. And that is what we want. Every nation belongs to God. And God is the deliverer of every nation. You cannot... Take the position of God. God looks for whom to deliver. He chooses mercy rather than sacrifice. And you talked about your evil sacrifices. God himself chooses mercy rather than sacrifice. He says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Meaning you cannot even stop him. Jesus came up with a strong judgment and said to his disciples, See, you are already clean. Because of the words that I have spoken to you. Meaning all your evil judgments. You tried to use against Christ's disciples. Were completely triumphed. Defeated and destroyed. By the mercy of Jesus Christ. He is the same yesterday. Today and forever. Are you not aware that deliverance belongs to him. And is ready to deliver I every know. nation. Now that Shebi is the nation that turns to him now. He's the one that will turn to him. How yeah, many he... people turned to Jesus when he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. No one turned to him, but he offered forgiveness. You can't stop Jesus from saving people, delivering nations and setting them free. Are you not aware that he will still do it again? Any nation, people, that will do our works. Hmm? Uh -huh. They are still under us. The one that will turn to God. Uh -huh. Then we know that uh, that one has gone free from us. But anyone that refuses, that is still doing what we want, what we say, what we plan. Uh -uh. You are with us now. It's a simple math now. Just check it. You are with us, you are with us. If you do what we, all those things we send to you, 
You are with us now. But if you do what he tells you to do. Are you aware that God has brought down his divine judgment to rule all nations? It has begun. We know. You know. Uh -uh. And that is why we are scheming. That is why we are walking speedily, looking for how to, you know, quickly, you know, catch, capture as many as we can. See? That is why we have speed up our moves, tactics, techniques, and all that. Check all the nations. You sped up your moves, tactics, and evil plans when the woman that was caught in the act of adultery was brought to Jesus. But God's mercy triumphed over your evil judgments, and the woman was set free. Are you not seeing the replicant of that happening in this generation? When they go to the right places now, all these kind of places now. Like Which this, place is that? Yeah, is it, like here. Mention the name of this place. We are not in the same, uh, uh, how can I call that? You, it's you people that, are we in the same group? Which you, group do you belong to? Darkness. Say it louder. And... Which kingdom do I light belong to? Now. Light now, light, 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 light. Why know. did you not allow me to finish? You just replied, light. We know already. Mm. Everybody knows. Mm. Can I go now? No evil spirit comes to the presence of God and lives you to see, tell this story. We are not here to cast you out. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ to get you evil spirit completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. No. So you will not exist again. That no. is happening already. Check. No. Check. No. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check. Your no is turned to yes. Check your kingdoms and see what is going on. This one, I have <laughs> I have caught off opportunities. Like? In the 90s. Ha. Yeah, oh, this one, eh? See, she was just shining. Bah, bah, bah. And also, this one want to shine. How can this one shine? Wherever she went, she stood out. How can this one shine? For what? What uh, was she doing for a living then uh, that made her to be shining? Ah, when she finished her secondary school, mm -hmm. she got a job. Back up, a night post. She P got a job uh, and P she was P working as... Uh, just a PA now. And she would have gone... Higher. Even in, ah, oh, I saw it. What did you then do? Her boss sent her to University of Joss. What lies of sin did you push her to be living? This one, see, a lot now. That time, uh, drink, fornicate, from one man, you know, to another, clubbing, all that stuff. They started in introducing her to smoking, you know. She started, but ah, I wanted it. I wanted her to go deep into it. But somehow, I don't even know why this one likes her too much. There are so many ladies that are into what they call hookup activities. You see them clubbing, prostituting. Ah, we kill them when, when we are ready to take them now. How? What have you been using to ah, kill ah. ladies like that Do we use that the are into hookup activities? When they go into that thing, follow men now and all those stuff. Some use them for ritual and all that, take their glory and all these things. It's just, they are just our plans and our schemes. Our plan to take them while they are in sin. We are enlarging hell. You are happy when you are talking about that. Why? How can I not be happy with my work? There is no happiness in sins and sinful desires. Eh, for you people. But for us, ah. You talked about nations, how you possess people and use them to operate and work against everything. Cause chaos. Cause violence. Cause wars. Bloodshed. Misunderstanding political instability, and the like. That one is an easy thing now. We have our agents. Anyone that leaves himself, we, be, we use, and then our work goes on. And as long as 
you are with us. Our walk goes on and on and on. Jesus Christ had a spiritual grace to appeal and counter the judgments of those people that held stones. They dropped their stones and declared the woman not guilty. You have held your spiritual stones, your evil verdicts, evil judgments against nations. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we are here in the supreme court of God to approach his throne with the law of his mercy. And God has listened to us. What will happen to the nations you have planned to destroy, caused to live in the realm of chaos, killing, stealing, and destruction? Right. Seeing that God has accepted to allow his mercy to triumph over your evil judgments. The nations are here now. They are in our hands. So All nations are in the hands of God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. They are doing our will. Ah. Uh, I say it is only those who do the will of only those who do the will of the one you serve. Spell his name. Jesus. Jesus Christ did not allow the woman to do the will of his heavenly father before he allowed his mercy to speak for her. And she was justified and set free. What are you saying? Now speak quickly. Now that God has accepted his mercy and has allowed his mercy to speak for nations, what will happen to nations? If his mercy is speaking for nations, fine. What if after the mercy, they refuse to, re you know, stay and stand with him? Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who walks with me will never Walk in darkness. Meaning, if his mercy speaks for someone, his mercy will continue to speak for the person forever. Not occasionally. What do you have to say? But the same Bible tells you. What did it tell the woman? It said, neither do I condemn you. Has no one condemned you? And the woman said, no. No one else, sir. And he replies, neither do I condemn you. Go and live a life that is free from sin. Meaning, there was divine energy for the woman to live a life without sin. Because that was provided by Jesus as well. Did you ever hear that the woman went back to the life of adultery? Answer that question. I didn't hear that. Why are you bringing up that point? I have said it now. I have said it now. Whoever the Son of God has set free... Is free indeed. Yes, that is true. Is that not permanent that freedom? That is true. This is true. What are you saying? It's true, it's true. It's he true. has chosen mercy rather than your wicked demonic sacrifices. Mm. Can you stand the court of God? That is where you are now. Nobody. Those people that held the stone, being convicted in their own conscience, dropped the stone and walked away, beginning from the oldest to the youngest, meaning no matter your ranks in the kingdoms of darkness, whether you are Satan, Lucifer, snake, wicked king, idols, witches and wizards, and other powers of darkness, all of you have already sinned and have no single spiritual right to punish any sinner, any nation, or anyone. Seeing that all of you are convicted, even in your own conscience, that you have sinned against God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, are you also going to continue to cause chaos, cause trouble, cause violence, killing, stealing, and destruction in nations as you planned? If they allow us, I keep saying it. It's simple. If they allow us, we will continue. But anyone that sets himself apart, of course, we cannot come near such. Whether nation, whether individual, we can't come near them. That's just it. Does God's mercy 
continues to allow sin to exist. This earth belongs to us. This earth here. So as we release all our activities and they enjoy the things we send to them to do. Like? Sin, sin, sin. Every sin. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. No small, no big. Sin is sin. They are not here to know sin. They are here to know God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. God created the earth to live for him. God created the inhabitants of the earth to live for him. God created the air, even the heavens of heaven. God created the visible and the invisible world. Anything and anyone that is or who is created by God must obey God. That is the purpose. Did you create the earth? No. Why are you taking possession of something you did not create? He gave us now. He threw us here. What did you do oh. that made God to throw you down from yeah. heaven the to the earth? It's the same disobedience, the same sin, the same thing that we send to people. He also sent Jesus Christ here to the earth and he came in a human form to live a life that is without sins and sinful desires so that everyone in the world will live the same life. What are you saying? Are you not aware of that? His coming affected our works. Seriously, if not. Who's coming? The one you mentioned. Ha, he affected us seriously. If not, eh, this world, I don't think any human being will be existing by now would have finished you. And people like you. Ah, and he's raising people like you again. I don't know. What do you mean by that? That Jesus Christ is raising people like people me. People that is like him now. That can, you know, affect our works now. You know. We are not going to affect them. We are here to destroy all of them. Hmm. And that is what is happening already. Are you aware that for this purpose, the son of man was revealed? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes, 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 yes. First John chapter 3 verse 8. You yes. are aware? Yes, we know. What is your mission in the city of Jesus International Ministry? She came from Lagos. I don't know why she came. She just said, ah, I will come to, I will come. Hey, this is my last bus stop. This is... And when she came to the city of Jesus International Ministry, she has been communicating with, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Look at me, your mercy. Show me mercy. Let me finish her. Whatever. Let me just finish. You don't know what I have done. I've covered her. You cannot find her attractive. Never. So, she will remain like that. I killed her husband in 2007. What did you used to do that? Uh, from one thing to another, Sha. One thing led to another. Many people gone. have sicknesses and diseases. They just believe it's treatable, it's normal to be sick. One can go to hospital. And before you know it, they are no longer alive. Their wives suddenly become widows. Some women just had themselves killed and their husband become widowers. What do you know about issues like this? And there are still people that are sick. Are you saying that all these are your evil works and tactics through which you kill people, yes. destroy them? Exactly. Yes. Now you've come to a place where evil spirits are always destroyed and evil works of darkness are completely destroyed. What will happen? That's why I'm, I'm angry with her. That? Ah, why did she come all the way? See the distance now. <laughs> she came from where? Lagos now. Ah, this one. I have punished her. This girl done so far because shame, ridicule, mockery. I see the menstruation years ago. Some believe it's normal for them to have seized the menstruation. Some are married. They're supposed to conceive, but because their menstruations are seized, they don't even have any child. Pregnant in that house, I flushed it out. How? Miscarriage now. <laughs> Who is the cause of miscarriages? Uh, yeah, all these things. We, it's, uh, they are our works now. Death. Well, just anything that takes life. It's our work. You have named them, meaning you are ready to 
see them being destroyed. Because that is the reason why God is here. Through his word and by his spirit. To destroy the works of the devil. There is no route for you to escape. Find the name of Jesus Christ. Now I send fire to you wicked king. You said your many is Lucifer here. I hope you are watching. This is the practical side of the message. You see how to accuse your conscience. To tell you you have committed sin. That is why you have that sickness. That sickness. Have you forgotten that there is something God has that triumphs over judgments of Satan? If you have committed sin, meaning you are the number one person that should be forgiven by God. Isn't it? Jesus Christ did not wait for the woman to repent before he justified the woman. Number two, Jesus Christ did not wait for people that crucified him on the cross to repent. Before he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus Christ did not wait for his disciples to live a holy life. Before he said, in John 15 verse 3, you are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. It means, it's not because of the works of righteousness of the disciples but because of the spoken words of God that made them clean. That is where the mercy of God was. You that want to take your own life, you want to commit suicide because you believe you have sinned, you have grieved to the Holy Spirit. Have you forgotten that God's mercy always triumphs over all satanic judgments? You are created to receive the mercy of God. You are created to be forgiven and justified. It is not until you become powerful tribe before you rule a nation. It is not until you become the majority before you become someone or somebody who can cause people to enjoy the good things of life. You with God are the spiritual majority. All these forces of darkness are already undergoing total spiritual destruction. We were on spiritual assignment and God gave us a message and said, go out and preach this message titled God's mercy triumphs over judgment. The battle had been won already and that is why you are seeing what you are seeing now. And a victory is given already. Right now, I stretch my hand with authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And I send a fire of God's mercy into the world, universe, into our continents, everything that is created in the visible and also in the invisible world. And I send the fire of God's mercy into her heart and heart of everyone in the world. And I command the mercy of God to triumph over all satanic judgment and destroy the works of the kingdoms of darkness. Holy Ghost, find the name of Jesus Christ. Fire! Jesus Christ. That is the end. Thank you, Lord. Be free. In Jesus Christ's name.
when everything that has been used to cover nations, herself, her life, is completely removed, she will regain herself. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Be free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command the nations to be completely delivered forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. She is receiving a new heart. It's coming down to her now. It has just entered. She will come back to her senses. She is back. Wondering what happened. Why am I in the midst of people? Why did I just stand up from the ground? Is everything all right? So this thing I used to watch is true. It has finally happened to me. Give thanks to God for that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Why are you saying thank you, Jesus Christ? What happened to you? I just received my deliverance. Your names? My name is Emmy Song. From? I'm, a, I'm from Akwaibum State, but I live in Lagos. I got married in 2001, and in 2007, my husband died. Ever since, <laughs> till date. What really happened to him? Uh, he was sick. He was ill, terribly ill. He had um, angina, and um, it developed into a... Uh, and um, stroke and all that, so many complications, so many things. We, we spent two months in the hospital. It's a memorial hospital. I think Adeola also memorial hospital along um, uh, Itire Road. And the first bill I received was about 110,000 naira. And at the time, we, we didn't have up to that. I went to Alausa. By the mercy of God, I was able to uh, reach um, the doctor that was treating the governor at the time. So he put a call through to the hospital and told the doctor to commence treatment. And the Lagos State foot the bill for two months. A day in the hospital then was 10,000 naira. There were so many. The bill ran to over... I don't know, I cannot say how many millions, so it was much. But Lagos State paid it all. And after the burial and all that, my life has not been the same. And I was even dying too. I was the next target. But I, were you aware that these kind of misfortunes were caused by the wicked king of darkness what and other powers of darkness? I had seen in a dream then before I got married like I found myself in, under the water or so, and I saw one, I don't know if it's, the place is cloud, is somehow, and I, inside one shanty, and one-eyed man, one man with an eye, just one eye, old, and ugly looking. The man 
told me that I was his, that I, there was no way I would run from him. He even went out, and so I, I tried to run away, but there was this force that was pulling me. I could not leave that place. He came back laughing, telling me that he already told me that there was no way that I was not going to escape him. And when I married my husband that year, my husband told me that he saw six huge men in the, in the dream. They approached him and told him to leave their wife, leave my wife, uh, if not, we'll deal with you and all that. That was what he told me. That they told him, the tall, hefty men, that they want him to leave me. Spiritual in the dream. polygamists. Spiritual what? Polygamists. Not one spiritual husband, but many. Go ahead. I've passed through a lot. Even my director, an actor, he tried to help me. There was this project that was on back then in Nigeria. My director, he knew I was going to come out top because he knew that I was good on stage as an actor. Somehow my phone, I was, it slipped out of my hand into the gutter and that was it. Even a one stage performance I had after that, anytime good thing is approaching, my, something will happen to my phone. So this has been my experiences. I, if Can you remove what you used to cover your face? Feel free, you are in the presence of God. Yes, sir, because my gray hair, I'm so shy. Oh, my front hair wasn't like this. That will serve as your condition before jury, so that when you come for testimony, they will see you wearing a new look in God that will glorify God. <laughs> were you aware that the powers of darkness were the one promoting protests of all kinds? Riots of all kinds and I knew the like. It. I knew it, sir. Daddy, I knew that everything happening was not just normal. I just knew nothing was normal. Because when he passed, he was, I was about 34 years old back then when my husband died. And I'll, by next month, I'll be 50. <laughs> Going through a lot to feed. I can't even make, I don't even know where to start. I've come through a lot. I just do good. <laughs> when it comes to the things of God, age does not matter. What matters is the grace of God. So look on to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. Stop looking at your age, your personal achievements so far. Focus on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of faith of believers. I believe you have joined the believers today by the grace of God. The unclean spirits claimed that they pushed you at your very early age oh, yes. when you were sent to study in university to live life of clubbing, tribe, causing you to be addicted, smoking, drinking alcohol and the like. What do you have to say? Sir, just as I got to Joss, there was trouble with the vice chancellor. <laughs> there was trouble with the vice chancellor. The old one was removed. And the new one that came in said he was not going to give concessions to non-indigenous. So it affected me. So I could not. Back home in Lagos, I know all this youthful exuberance and all that. Drinking and uh, Dating even men that were old enough to be my father and all that. And Drinking uh, wine, juice. Alcohol, sir. And uh, somehow uh, my cousin started uh, introducing me to smoking and all that. And, and one of my friends too. But I didn't do it for long. I stopped. Did you and, ever know that they were springing, such addictions were springing from... The kingdom of darkness. I didn't think that way. I thought I was living the normal life other young person and other young people were living at the time. So I thought it's just the normal way of life. You that are clubbing, you are addicted to smoking. You go to church, 
you go back into your addiction. Addiction to smoking, addiction to drunkenness, addiction to masturbation, and addiction to lives of sin. Do you ever know that evil spirits that want to destroy your life are behind these kind of addictions? You have watched this thing and you are still watching. Now tell me what is going through your conscience. Because you're a human being. What is going through your conscience? Are you still willing to unveil yourself and allow evil spirits to continue to cause you to be addicted? Or you are ready to say, No! I have to appeal for the mercy of God that will stand against all satanic judgments, satanic addictions that are working against my life, my family, my destiny, and my nation. In the light of this, madam, what words of advice do you have for people that say, I am just under youthful exuberance. I'm only enjoying myself. I am not old. Let me go out and live lives of sin like my colleagues. What words of advice do you have for them? They are listening. Young ladies and young men out there, please, it is not enjoyment. All this partying, smoking, drinking, sleeping around with women or men. You uh, mean living a life of sexual immorality? With oh, yes, sir. It is not a life because it is an avenue for the devil to, to use you, to capture you and destroy your destiny. God has a plan and purpose for everyone. And, but when you allow the devil to come in and, and you, are, you get enticed and then you get carried away into the world, it will cut short the plan and purpose of God for your life. So my advice to the youth out there, please run to God. Stay away from sin. Repent. That is the advice because the end is never good. The end is never good. I have lost so many things. If I could turn back the hand of time, I would not leave the presence of God. I would just hold on to God knowing that he's the only one that can help me because all this evil, all this sin attracts demons. They attract evil spirits. So stay clear. Run to God. Focus. Serve God with all your hearts. If you are, if you are in church and you are still having all this, Christ, some, some of these Christian liberties, stay away. We call them Christian liberties. You, you're free to, to do some things. Uh, it's just a little thing. Please stay away. There are, there are strategies. Just stay away, run to God, and let God channel your destiny. That's all I have to say, sir. What do you do for a living? All the businesses I have tried, as I, tr as I open something, it will go down. Everything that, nothing that I do works. All the things I did in the, not, not anymore because I'm free now. All the things I did in the past, none worked. I have sold um, this ju um, jewelry, uh, costume, and all that. I've, what have I not done? And I put money into it, and nothing worked then. But I believe from now, it, things will begin to work for me. People would want to hear from you. What made you to travel all the way from Lagos? to the city of Jesus International mm -hmm. Ministry where God decided to allow his mercy to triumph over all satanic judgments in your life and truly set you free. What prompted you to travel all the way from Lagos down to Enugu State? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What made me to come here? Like I said, I, I live in Lagos and my house is very close to synagogue. I worship there sometimes. But whenever I go there for fellowship, I don't 
losing, I don't free my spirit. I don't free myself. Why? I live around. And some of the people around me too, they attend the church. And some of them, they do watch Emmanuel TV. So each time I go there, I feel I don't want to be seen. I don't want, maybe in case I am delivered and, you know, I see some things. And, you know, I don't want people to start to mock, laugh and say, oh, this one, we thought she was this. Oh, so she's... So I just initially, I said, okay, let me just... I started following Kojim online. I watch on YouTube. I watch on Facebook. You called it Kojim. Now you are free. Mention the full name. City of Jesus International Ministry. Do you mean City of Jesus International Ministry? Ministry. Yes, sir. So I, I saw... I started watching and following. And also, um, there is another one. So I started following. I just decided that since I'm not there, let me just go to if I'm sorry, Father. That's what I thought. That I'll be more comfortable in a place that I'm not, you know, known. That's why I came. And when you came to a place where you are known by God, what happened? At God, the city of Jesus International. God Ministry. located me, sir. <laughs> Was that one of the reasons why you were covering your face? So that some of your friends that are also viewers will not see your face clearly and identify you and say, this woman has finally received deliverance. Partly. It's not. <laughs> it's one of the. <laughs> one of the reasons. Yes, sir. All right. I want you to know that the works of God do not promote mockery, but praises, adorations, and thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor the works of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Stop, hiding. stop hiding. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Stop, hiding. stop hiding. Because, because the, works the works of God do not promote do not promote mockery, but praises, adorations, and thanksgiving to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Say, neighbor, I will stand publicly to testify of God's goodness and works in my life and family. Say, neighbor, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God Unto salvation to everyone who believes. Say, I believe. Therefore, I am here to testify. Say, neighbor, I believe. Therefore, I am not hiding. The glory, the glory of God. Say neighbor. neighbor. I, believe I believe. I am a believer. I am not. A blasphemer. Say neighbor. neighbor. I am. A believer. Someone. Who values God. His wonderful works, his wonderful deeds. My name is a believer, not a blasphemer. Say, neighbor, blasphemers are always hiding the works of God, the goodness of God. 
the wonderful gifts of God. God's healing. God's deliverance. God's blessings. God's breakthroughs. And salvation. They have received. Say, as for me, I am not a blasphemer. I will stand anywhere, anytime, any day, to declare the works of God. In this generation, and also in the generations yet unborn, my tongue will return praises to God. My feet will glorify God and show His wonderful works. Say, my body will testify of God's everlasting goodness and works. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, stop hiding the works of God. Stop hiding the glory of God. Stop hiding the wonderful blessings and special gifts, charitable gifts you have received. Stop becoming a blasphemer. Be a testifier. All right, we encourage you to live a life that will give glory to God. A life that is founded on the rock of ages, the written and eternal word of God. May God's word the foundation of your life. And we believe the stolen blessings are already returned. Amen. Amen. And you will come back with multiple testimonies. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. First and foremost, I would like to give thanks to God for 
the wonderful grace he has given to me to be in your midst today. I also want to thank you for coming and would like to use this opportunity to let you know that I just came back from the assignment our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave to me, which was to fast for 40 days and 40 nights without food, without water, and without anything. And by the grace of God, I was able to round up with that fasting exercise in this very spot. Amen. Amen. And because I rounded up with this uh, spiritual exercise of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, as the Lord commanded me to do, I decided to bring you here so we can start with the Lord. And I believe the presence of Jesus is here. Amen. I am not the healer, but I know the healer. Amen. I am not the deliverer, but I know the deliverer. I am not the Savior, but I know the Savior. Those of us that need to be redeemed, I am not the Redeemer, but I know the Redeemer. His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that faith is practical. We are not here to talk alone. We are here to put God into action. And be blessed as you join us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Man of God, help me. Help me. I, I have a dislocation. Uh, uh, the, the dislocation and my part of my bone was cracked. My hip uh, doesn't steady. It can, I cannot steady it. I can't walk. I've been like this for two years. I believe Jesus will do for you. I believe Jesus will hear me. Once again, my name is Christopher. I'm not the Redeemer. But I know the Redeemer. His name is Jesus. Never a sickness he cannot heal and never a disease he cannot cure. He is present here to set you free. Do you believe that? I believe. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand up. Amen. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My husband can walk now. Thank you, Jesus. Wicked spiritual husband. Come out to find the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All over your body, Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Now speak out. Who are you? Pushing me to lost. I explain. I make him go out and start talking to ladies. What do you want to achieve by doing that? Push I want to, to destroy that. him. Go. What have you done to his family? Scattered his family. Who else is in this body apart from Queen? Who else? I don't. How did you enter him? I entered him a long time ago. How? When he was very small. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every part of your crown, your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your crown. Your rings, your rings, remove them. Remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove them. Leave him alone. What are you removing? Leave him alone. Why? Why? Belongs to me. What are you removing? Huh? I'm pulling my rings. Your rings? Yes. Now take them and go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I feel light. I had a spiritual attack. Even as sat today as I'm talking to you, all the work I did, I'm not, I, I don't have the documents, they don't pay me. You need to ask for forgiveness because of the life you lived in the past. That was the cause of this. I pray God to forgive me for my past life. Life of fornication and adultery. And when that is done, you will come back for your testimony. Amen. I ask God to forgive me for my life of fornication and adultery in the past. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. You went somewhere in the past, and this place you went to was a herbalist home. That was in the past. And the mark was given to you. There was an incision mark, and something was given to you to drink. It was liquid. 
and you drank it and since then you belong to water. Each time you sleep you find yourself in the river. Marriage, there is no peace. So you need to denounce that by confessing what you went there for. Okay, that is the root of the problem you're facing. Your confession brings freedom. Confess your past and come back for your testimony. Amen. Um, looking at something that happened between you and a woman in the past that has to do with disagreement and this took some time before you really accepted and you were at fault at the beginning. It was later you realized that what you did was wrong. Hmm? Yeah. So you need to confess that and you also need to learn how to forgive. Because I'm looking at people from your father's side mm -hmm. that you don't even speak to. You don't talk to them and they don't talk to you. And this has created a gap between you and them. You need to reconcile. Okay? okay? You need to learn how to forgive. First of all, confess what happened between you and the lady. You were at fault. And also, you need to reconcile with your family members, particularly people from your father's side. You were not all that in good terms with your father, you know. Come out of her! Every part of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire the name of Jesus Christ! Every part of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Who is number two? Spiritual husband. Who is the third person? Queen from the Ethiop River. Queen from where? Ethiop River. As a queen from Ethiop River, how do you operate? Oh, this girl, she's a star! Mm -hmm. ha. Her light is so bright. And she has a good heart. Oh, she has a ministry. We don't want her! What did you do to the ministry uh, and to her life and the marriage? No marriage. <laughs> Why? Uh, Why? Uh, because we don't want her to serve God. Uh, we don't want her to serve God. She will be, she will be the, 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 the one to save her family. So we don't want her light to shine. I don't even know why she came here! What is uh, in this place that is against you? Uh, the power of... Of him. The power of who? Mention him. the name. Him. Mention the name. Who? Your God. What is the name? Uh, Speak in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the name? Jesus. Huh? Jesus. Speak louder. Jesus. Speak louder. Jesus. Everything scatter. Scatter. How do you mean explain? Uh, uh, they are not stable financially. We lock all doors, and this girl will be the one to liberate the family. We say no! We push her emotionally. She's very emotional. We push her out and we enter her and system. And she, she likes singing. She likes singing. That's what has been keeping her. If not, we'd have killed her long time ago. People, we don't want her. Don't. What are the bad habits you gave to her? Uh, what did you push her to do? Uh, anger. Why did you choose to give her anger? Why? You know, because whenever a good thing is coming, mm -hmm. we provoke her anger. And that is it. Everything we scatter. So you people in the kingdom of darkness use anger to scatter people's blessings? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Speak louder now. Yes! Yes! Why? Uh, because uh, anger destroys so many things. She so came to the city of Jesus International yeah. Ministry. And we don't what want is her. in this place that is destroying you? Uh, there is fire, yo. Huh? Fire. Fire. Uh, How does the fire destroy you and your uh, evil kingdom? Uh, the fire, we cannot penetrate. How did you enter her? Uh, she went to, to swim, to have fun. This is the woman of God. We cannot allow her. We saw her and we entered into her. And since then, we've been operating. She is a woman of God. How come she went to the pool? She went to swim, she went to have fun with her friends, to Which swim. Friend? Her friends, she went to, to swim, to have fun. Who deceived her to swim with a friend in the pool? It's her friends. So let's go, let us go and swim and have fun. The sun is so strong. And she went. We saw her heart, her heart 
practice is pure. She likes giving. She likes happy. She can't even surrender her last coin to put a smile on people. And we say no. How does that affect you? It affects us because we like people to suffer. No, people that are stingy. Does it mean that you are the one that yes, can't so, be stingy? Yes, it's from Why? us. We project them not to give, not to help. We start in their heart. So that people will, will suffer and they will keep running to us. She will go places. People will love her. She will pull crowd. People will love her because she is a star. And she will be the one to liberate her family. Her father loves her so much. Her father believes in We want the parents to suffer. So we don't want her to even marry. That is what we've been, we've been pushing men away. Hatred, anger. Right now, all of you, I command fire to descend. Fire from heaven. Holy Tweram of Jesus Christ. Your crown. Tweram of Jesus Christ. You are all cast out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. And the Bible says everything that is big starts little. This is our humble beginning. And we know by the grace of God this ministry will go places. And we have the headquarter here in Enugu. And from here, and from here it can spring and go to nations all over the world. So thank you for coming. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. <laughs> we need family deliverance. You go and get people that you buy with your money. You say, how much will it cost you to do family deliverance for my family? Some will say 200,000. Others will say one point something million. They say, build a place for us to come and stay. Buy this, buy that. When they come, they go and hide. Tie one object somewhere. And after some time of prayer, they say, there is one charm buried there. Now, they are the one that tie the charm and put there. They will go there and uh, say, see the charm. You say, ah, oh, these are powerful men of God. <laughs> All these deliverances they have done for your family in this way. Have they brought real deliverance to your life? To your marriage? To your business? To your spiritual life? Why are you easily being deceived? Just because you did not pay any money to have one-on-one -on -one consultation like this. That is why many of you came late. Imagine you were charged to pay like two million naira before you enter into a place like this. I believe after paying that two million naira, you say, hey, all the money in my account have been taken. By 4 a.m., you would have been here. <laughs> The reason is because you knew what it took you to gather such two million naira to pay. You don't value anything that is costless. You don't value anything that is free. Why is your life like that? <laughs> Look at the wonderful husband your God has given to you. Very humble, very simple, not getting angry anyhow. And you, the wife, you are sitting on his head. Just because God has given you that as a free gift. You can just say, keep quiet. I will slap you. The man will say, yes, ma. Yes, mommy. You say, yes, I have arrived. <laughs> say, Namide. Yes. You say, I am the one in control. This is the pure power of woman. This is the pure power of what? Woman. I'm in charge. Go, go, go and take children to school. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. He say, yes, ma. He say, yes, I'm in charge. You go to your neighbor and say, ah, my husband, do I tell him to do anything? He say, yes. He will not give you another suggestion. What else to do? And you don't value such a man. Or you have a wife that is very, very humble, committed, hardworking, 
and very, very confident. Taking care of you, taking care of your children, and taking care of even your own siblings. Instead of appreciating, you have become a drunkard. You have become somebody who is now going after other women, committing adultery everywhere, just because she does not talk. Even when she finds out, she always forgives and forgets. You have taken advantage of all these godly characters in her to be treating her anyhow. My question still <laughs> remains, why do you always fail to value what is priceless? What is cost-free? Why? You go to a prostitute and you pay money. You marry your own wife and you don't drop money for her to take care of herself and your own children. You go to a bar, you buy alcohol and you drink, meaning you pay with your money. But you cannot pay for food items. You cannot pay the school fees of your children. You say, leave it for that woman. They are her children. She should take care of her children. Repent. Jesus Christ is a free gift God gave to us. Why are you failing to know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior? Why are you calling him? He is my brother. He is a carpenter's son. We know where he comes from. Virgin Mary is his mother. Or was his mother. Joseph was his father. Why are you failing to know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior? What is the difference between you and what you are hearing? Anything that is given to you free, you are not advertising. Look at this ministry like this. Who are the people that are supposed to go out and advertise this? Do you not know radio stations? Are you not seeing the clips on the internet? Are the clips not being sent to you? Why are you not placing them on your social media handles, your WhatsApp status? Check your WhatsApp status. What is there? There are things that are contradicting the message of salvation that we are preaching here. Your real self is working for Satan. And that is why you are not promoting the things of God on your social media handles. Repent. Why are you not valuing what is here? If this generation passes away and another generation comes and begins to see the records of what is done by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in this ministry, do you think they will not curse people like you and say, what did these people do? during their time. How did they value what they have? Why are you hiding your faces? You don't want to confess on camera. Why? Repent. Here is not a place you can hide. Here is a place where you can be saved. Salvation can be done anywhere, anytime, any day. It can be done on social media handles. It can be done on cameras like this. It can be done in a secret place. It can be done in your heart, in your home. It can be done anywhere. Why do you not want salvation to be shown anywhere, anytime, and in any place? Why? Repent. Right now, I stretch my hand and I pray for all of you. And I command the evil forces that hold your heart in bondage to receive deliverance. Amen. I'm seeing your heart being delivered. Amen. Right now, receive the grace Amen. to live for God. Amen. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Both now and forevermore. Amen. Receive the grace Amen. to work for God. Amen. And walk with God. Amen. Both now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I command your life 
to be sanctified Amen. and anointed Amen. with the heavenly power, Amen. heavenly glory, Amen. and blessings Amen. so you can have enough grace Amen. to do the work of God. Amen. Both now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive. Amen. Receive. Amen. Receive. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will come, you stand. You see us, I see people walking. And you are standing. To you, you are here for, and of God, pray for me. And so many of you like that. And you know you can do it. And you don't need money. And you don't need to be paid the money. Freely we have received. And freely we give out. Why are you hiding your own, but you want to receive? Have you ever seen someone who is not giving out, receiving? Every giver is a receiver. And every receiver is a giver. What do you want to receive? And what are you giving? Life contains the grace to give and to receive. Tell your neighbor, life, life contains, contains the grace, the grace. To receive, to receive and to give. And to give. Say neighbor. neighbor. Life, life contains, contains the, grace the grace to give, to give and, to and to receive. Ask your neighbor. 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 Give out everything. Give out everything. So you can receive. So you can receive everything. 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 Their heart. You thought you could hide your same fire to all these doubts. Ah! It's doubts. The eyes, the face, your crowns, your rings, the womb, the legs. Try your kingdom. Shalom, I welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Joseph Esther Magaji. I'm from Kaduna State, but serving in Mejuguri, Borno State. The man of God asked me to come and confess all my sins, and I'm here to confess all my sin. For a very long time, I've been living a sinful life, fornicating, lying, and also watching pornography not all the time but i do it so along the line for a very long time august i got infected with hiv and i don't know all this well until last month on the 18th and 19th even though i've been sick i've been down so i never get to know about it until that last month I was referred from a primary health care to a TH teaching hospital in Meduguri. And then I come across a friend that is a member of this church. I told him all what I've been going through. He told me that I should just free myself and then I should also avoid anything that will make me to sin. And to the glory of God, I've been doing that. I came to the church on Sunday, I showed my result to them, the one I bought from Meduguri. I showed it to them. They asked me to go back to any good state teaching hospital and rerun the test. But the man of God prayed for me on that same Sunday 
We went back yesterday to Enigo State Teaching Hospital. I rerun the test. It came out negative. We were also referred to a different hospital for a confirmatory test because any good state teaching hospital don't run confirmatory tests. It also came out negative. So I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything. Thank you for saving my life. And to the man of God, thank you for allowing God to use you. Thank you. Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life. And we thank God for this mighty work he has done in your life today. Before you go ahead with your testimony, we would like to know how these lives of sin you lived in the past, how did it affect your life, your relationship with God, and your career generally? Okay. That sinful life has really affected me academically, spiritually, and even otherwise. Because one, at some point, I was not concentrating well in school. And again, when I pray, you know, as a Christian, when you pray, you always want to feel the presence of God around you. But it was more like I'm just praying and I can't feel the presence of anyone around me. Sister, so when you visited the City of Jesus International Ministry with this problem, you were HIV positive, what motivated you believing that you would receive your healing? Day before yesterday, that was on Sunday, immediately when the man of God stepped his leg into the church, the first thing he said was, is there any disease that God cannot heal? Is there anything impossible for God to do? Is there any disease that God cannot cure? Is there any sickness that God cannot heal? Is there any problem that God cannot solve? If the answer is no, leave it for him. Stop doubting. Don't doubt yourself. If at all you want to doubt, doubt Satan. Who are you supposed to doubt? Doubt Satan and his doubts in your heart. If there are people with cases more than mine, they got healed. Then mine is not any different from others. I believed that I was going to be healed because I believe in God. He's my healer and he has healed me. So we thank God Almighty. This is not a small thing. God has just turned your life around from darkness to light. What have you done to him? Answer me yeah. quickly. Huh? Destroy him. Destroy yes. the kingdom. Yes. He's a heavy man. I want to destroy him. How do you want to destroy him? What are the things you've been using to destroy him? Hunger. 
When he gets angry, what happens? I destroy many. How? He destroy many. Anytime he gets angry, what are the he things he destroys? Many. Everything. Like? Give examples. Finances. How do you destroy his finances when he gets angry? How? Make him to do all types of things. Like what? Give examples. manner of things. Go to anywhere. Like? Native doctor. Spending money. He received prophetic message now that he has visited native doctors. Are you confirming that prophecy to be true? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Why did you push him to visit herbalists, native doctors? Why? I don't want you to achieve anything. People that do go to spiritualists, native doctors, to look for solution. Do they normally find the solution? Yes or no? No. Why do you normally deceive them to visit spiritualists, native doctors? Where you know that they will not find a solution. Do you mean you also want to destroy them the same way you destroyed this man? Yes. Apart from getting angry, what other lies of sin does this man live that you have been using to destroy him? Make it to use his money, see how. How? What are the things you have been using his money yeah. for? Flex him. He flexes? Yes. Yeah. What are the lies of sin he lives anytime he flexes? Anything. Man, anything. Like? Man, nice ass. Man, nice ass. You cause him to be womanizing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You cause him to commit what? Adulteries. Adulteries. How many men have you possessed and caused to be committing mm. fornication and adultery? Many. Huh? Many. Try your kingdoms. What do you normally use to get men, possess them, and cause them to be committing fornication and adultery? Huh? The idols. From the idols. Meaning? Yes. The ancestral spirits. Yes. The idols in their family. Yes. What if they claim that they are no longer worshipping the mm -hmm. idols? No. Huh? No. If they say they are no longer worshipping the idols, they don't go to shrines to sacrifice animals and other things. What if they say that? How do you normally still possess people like that? You are know, growing up, we initiate you. How? In family. In the family. What do you normally use to initiate people uh, in the family when they are growing idols. up? The idols. Huh? Idols in the family. Do you mean once the person is what? Oh. Uh huh. Yeah. What used to happen? We used to go to the idol. Used to go to the idol. From there, no more. People that don't visit spiritualists and people that don't yeah. go to shrines or idols, do you still possess people like that? Yes or no? No, if you don't come there, we cannot possess you. How did you possess him? Ah, through a friend. A friend took it to another doctor. What did he go to native doctors to do? Power. He was going for? Power. What was this man looking for power for? He think that we made it there. He was believing that yeah, we he was it. very rich. Yeah. So he needed power. Yeah. What was the power he was looking for meant to be or used for? Protection. Those of you that always go to spiritualists, herbalists, witch doctors, some of you will say you want to sacrifice to witch doctors, to idols. Some of you will say you want to go and look for the idols of your grandparents, idols of your grandmothers, idols of your family. And you keep sacrificing, you don't know that you are sacrificing your destiny and your future. Anytime people do some sacrifices, what do they normally sacrifice? Anything blood. What is that blood Anything. meant for? Ah. Sacrifice for my own kingdom. Anytime people do such sacrifices, yes. what used to happen to them spiritually? Their <laughs> blessings, their finances, their security, and their breakthroughs. What used to happen to them? Receive them, leave me alone. Try! Try your kingdom! You normally use that evil sacrifices to seize people. How do you seize people? What are the things you normally seize in them? All sorts of things. Like, give examples. Yes. Sometimes you hinder your money. What if you are saying, I'm no more getting contracts. Nobody is calling me for anything. Yes. I'm losing my business. Yes. I'm losing my customers. And I'm not even healthy again. 
you will bring more blood. How? Sacrifice. Meaning, when you put them under that condition, you cause them to go deeper in sacrificing <clears throat> blood. What kind of blood do you normally require from people like this? Cow. Uh huh. Goat. What else? Ram. Mm -hmm. What about chicken? Dogs. Oh, that is too small. Anytime they bring such sacrifice, <coughs> such animals, and slaughter them, what do you normally do <laughs> to such people? <laughs> what do you normally do to them? Uh, give them power. Power from God or power from the kingdom of darkness, from evil spirits? My kingdom. I send fire to your weaker powers. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. Now answer me quickly. I send fire to your shrines. All your agents that are operating in your shrines, your evil agents. Now answer me quickly. Which kingdom do you belong to? <laughs> kingdom of God or kingdom of Satan? Satan. What is your position in a kingdom of Satan? What position do you occupy? Destroy. To make people hunger. To give people what? Hunger. What kind of business this young man you are possessed? Speak quickly <laughs> and answer me. Ah, it's who? It's a contractor. Contractor of what? Building. What type of building? Uh, building engineering. What happens anytime people call him for a job? Uh, what happens? Do they normally pay him? <laughs> Here's the money. How? I squander the money. <laughs> Now I send fire to you. Uh, Kill the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Apart from pushing him to commit adultery, yeah. what other lives of sin have you been pushing him to live so that you continue to cause him to squander the money? Yeah, he's squander his money. How? What other lives of sin? Yes, even though he's a buyer car today, tomorrow he's squash. Even though you give him millions today, tomorrow he's squash it. Yes. What do you normally cause to happen to the cars you have been buying? Yeah, through flashing you will scratch it. Yes, I will make it to be scratch it. I cause yeah. damage. You mean you cause the car to be damaged? Yes. And also cause him to be wasting his money to repair the car? Yes. Anytime he spends money to get the parts to fix the car, does he use to get the car repaired? No. Why? <laughs> With it auction. It will cause the car to be damaged beyond the repair. Yes. So he will be forced to auction the yes. car and sell it below yes. cost price. Yes. What used to happen to people that used to buy such car? <laughs> would they be able to repair such cars or they will inherit now, the same problem? That's become to that same problem. Now answer me. We are tracing the problem to the root. Anytime he gets a car and you idols cause the car to be damaged beyond repair. And you eventually cause him to auction the car and sell the car on auction. <clears throat> if someone buys that car, such auctioned car, will the person inherit such problem? As far as he, he moves out of his hand, no more. Meaning the problem will be okay and the yes. car will be repaired? Yes. What is your mission of doing such thing to a man? I don't want this man to be prosperous. What other lies of sin did you push him to live? Hunger. Apart from anger, did you cause him to be addicted? Either to drunkenness, to be drinking? Yes. He's a chairman. He's a chairman of what? Mm, of course. He can't drink. Enough. Give examples of the things you used to drink enough as you claimed. As far as alcohol is concerned. Post Any alcohol. <laughs> Say the names of the alcohol you have been pushing him to drink. Whiskey, brandy, mm -hmm. dry gin, mm -hmm. beer, mm -hmm. yes. Why did you decide to call him the chairman of alcohol? Why? Yeah. Why did you call him that name? Does it mean that nobody can beat him when it comes to drinking alcohol? You can't challenge him. Meaning he has nobody that can stand to challenge him. He drinks more than every other person. Yeah. Huh? Yes. And he still get himself. He still healthy. Meaning, after drinking, he will still be normal. Yes. As if nothing is happening. Yes. Did you give him any power within him that enables him to consume 
and to drink as much alcohol as possible. No, you have the natural power. There are so many men that boast. Say, I can drink anything. I will never get drunk. As far as I'm not drunk, I am not committing sin. The Bible says drink wine, but don't be drunk. You see them drinking everything drinkable. All types of alcohols and they don't get drunk. How many people like this have you possessed and caused not to be drunk at all? Even though they are consuming a lot of alcohol, how many people have you possessed to have this kind of man? I send fire to all of you, you not just the me. idols. You are actually not. Throw your kingdoms. Answer me quickly. Is drinking alcohol a sin or not? Alcohol is a sin. It's a sin. Why did you say that drinking of alcohol is a sin? Why did you say that? Yeah, that's what it will can make you calm your brain. Come to use you. Have you ever pushed Christopher Orji to drink alcohol? I don't know you. Very old chairman of alcohol. Many of them are here. You say it's just for why come, Mr. Chairman of Alcohol. Come and speak here. You have another colleague, Chairman of Alcohol. Go ahead and explain. Shalom, church. My name is uh, Angel Gabriel Okura. In my former church, I was the one in charge of uh, alcohol. They've been sharing alcohol in the church. What do they normally call you there? What do they know you with? They used to call me Chairman, Mr. Pawa. They had to call me by my name, Angel. Even in the market, in the street, where they see me, Mr. Panwan, chairman of Panwan, because it's only me that share alcohol in our church. Every Sunday, I used to share like um, 100 liters of Panwan. And it was uh, last week, I even believed that uh, Panwan is a sin, because in our church there, they tell us that it's not a sin. They say it's not a sin as long as you don't get drunk. To my greatest surprise, there's, they say it's not sin. We use it to win souls. And you see people trooping in our parish that na parish That our parish is a happening parish where people enjoy themselves. So it was last week uh -huh, when uh, Evil Spirit was confessing and it was saying that uh, Panwan is a sin, including me, my wife, and my neighbors that attend the same parish with me. And my, my, my neighbor also is a member of the parish. Let's see, where is he? This way, this way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so all of us, we used to drink enough. Even my children. <laughs> yeah, everybody in the parish, whether big or small, we take enough. It was every Sunday. So it was that last week, Tuesday. Ah, uh, uh, part one also is the same. When the Holy Spirit was confessing, so all of us just open our mouth. And uh, we lift our hand on our head. So, since that day, what has been your decision? Will you continue to cheer the occasion of Pan Wine Supply? I've left my parish anyway. I'm now a member of City of Jesus International Ministry. And we don't take alcohol. We eat not even Pan Wine here. But the club where I belong. What is the name of the club? Omon Sunrise Estate Club. It's mm -hmm. a very big one. So, the very day I arrived there, that was the day they made an election and they let me as someone that would be sharing pan wine. <laughs> Meaning you became the chairman of pan wine. Yes, in that well, place. Pan wine distributor. Uh, the, so since for over many years now, I've been the one sharing pan wine. All the alcoholics that drink in that place, even the <coughs> funniest part of it, they know me as an evangelist. <laughs> and they give me that position. And they purposely been, gave you that position. Yeah, it was... Just uh, your faith in God. It was last two months, which is no, November. A member of that uh, club was telling me in his house, he's a major general in the army, but he, he does not base here in any way, based in Kanu, but he's a member of our club. So he said, I knew God is using you very well. But there is one thing you fail to realize. I said, what is that? He said, our club, they know you very well. I said, what do you mean? He said, he said it in Igbo. No, he more can him. That uh, it's a spiritual thing they are doing. They knew me very, very well. That was why they made me a chairman of uh, sharing of uh, alcohol. That they want to know if they will get me and draw me closer to themselves and get me in to where they belong. So they really know what they are doing. So I tell him uh, that uh, pan wine is not a sin. So I don't see it as any way that we used to trap me down. 
But it was last week, I began to hear it. So I decided, I even told my wife when we get to him that we are going to resume that club meeting this month, this week Friday. But if I go there, I will resign. I, will tell them that, uh, I don't want to be a chairman of distribution of uh, alcohol. The eyes, the tongue. How many people have you called to be chairman? This man confessed that he has been made a chairman to be distributing alcohol. How many people have you pushed like that and caused to be distributing alcohol? Huh? Many. Himself is a minister of God, an evangelist. He said that he's an evangelist. How do you normally manipulate people, even when they supposed to be rendering godly services to be sharing alcohol? How? Alcohol is your way to get people. It's easier way to get people. He claimed that they have been sharing alcohol to people, and people were always happy anytime they drink the alcohol, yes. and then bring many yes. to attend the so-called services. Yes. Those people that used to take those alcohol, what do you normally do to them? <laughs> their blessings, their careers, their health, and their marriages. What do you normally do to them? Destroy. What used to happen to them? Name them one by one, so that as they are listening to your confession, they can receive their deliverance. Expose the kind of destruction you have been causing to Pushing them. Pushing you alcohol after drinking, maybe beating your wife in hell. Beating people. Yes. What about their finances, their jobs, their careers, yes. and their destinies? You use your money to drink alcohol. your money to buy alcohol because alcohol you can't get it free you must use your money what if people say no i don't used to buy it. we have people that used to buy for us uh, my own is just to drink uh, how do you also destroy people like that that don't ever buy but they keep drinking alcohol yeah, from people showing you spirit of hunger you give the people spirit or the person the spirit of what hunger Anytime they get angry, what do they normally do that are sinful? Yes, you can do all sorts of things. Like? <sighs> Fighting. Uh huh. Yes. What else again? Destroy. You may fight and beat people or arrest you. Mm -hmm. Yes. What else Take again? Take you to station. You spend your money there. No, this man, he hates smoke right from his time. Uh huh. Yes. So you don't do that. Mm hmm. Because he had smoke. Right what right. about people that drink alcohol and at the same time they smoke? Yeah. What do you know about them? Yeah, that is the spirit. It's a spirit. Which kingdom does such spirit come from? Idol. Many you idols used to cause people to smoke as well. Yes or no? Yes. Christopher OJ was explaining something the other day. He was telling people that many of you claim that you are no longer worshipping idols. But you have become a drunkard, meaning that the idols you are saying you are not worshipping are now living in you, causing you to demand for alcohol and the like, causing you to fight. And anytime you fight, if you don't see anything like blood, you don't stop. Just like you go to idols to sacrifice animals, and when they see that blood, they are okay. So they push you to fight. If you don't see blood, you are not okay. Are you confirming what Christopher Oji said to be true? Yes or no? Yes. That spirit in you that is thirsty of human blood must be destroyed. That spirit in you that is always happy when there is violence must be destroyed. What if they say that they are not possessed? They don't know anything like idols. They don't go there to bow down. They don't sacrifice any animal. Whereas they are still smoking, they are still drinking alcohol, and they are still getting angry. Not at sin. Huh? What if they say they are no longer sacrificing to you, but they are still smoking and drinking alcohol and getting angry? You are laughing. <laughs> they can't run away from it. You are hearing the whole thing by yourself. 
It is when you are ready to be delivered that you will be delivered. It is when your spirit is ready to surrender to God. That is when you can receive your deliverance. <coughs> Tell me how many of you are free from these things. Check your finances. Check your job. You work as if you are not working. The little money you get is to smoke, is to drink alcohol, and to commit various sins. And you are the same person saying, I don't have money. How can you have money? When you are wasting the one God has given to you. Life is given so you can give account of it. Blessings are given so that you can give account of them. If you can no longer give account of your money, it means there is something that is hiding in you which you fail to acknowledge that is destroying your finances. Deliverance doesn't just come. It comes when you submit to God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. How can you come to a church like this and still go back smoking, <laughs> drinking alcohol, womanizing, and committing sins? This is not such a ministry. You come here, you must be ready to stay away from all kinds of evil. Stay away from sins. What have you done to his marriage and health? No happiness. Where is the wife? He have a wife, but he don't understand his wife. Who caused him ah, not to understand the wife? I am the one and the idol. What did you use to cause that misunderstanding between him and the wife? Anger. How many couples have you caused not to understand themselves all around the world? You idols. <laughs> many of you will say, how can I quit something I love so much? You have special brand you drink. Anytime you put it in the fridge, you look at the whole thing. You say, man of God, this is temptation. <laughs> The only thing that I really love in life, more than anything, is what you want me to stop. Eh? I love you, I love your ministry. But this kind of assignment you are giving to me is a very, very tough task. You drink it, you clean your mouth, you use everything, brush your teeth, come to church and sing, and sing. And you go back. The same you will be the one to say, they have not paid me my money. No customer. Blessings are given to the obedient <coughs> ones, not to the rebels. How can you be coming for prayers for years? Just a touch is enough. Mere coming here alone is enough to solve your problem. If you are ready to stay away from your life, your life of sin. Why well, keep coming and no testimony? No testimony. Why? In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> right now I send fire to your shrines. The evil powers and charms you are using to operate. I command all of them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now remove all the charms, the wicked powers. Put them out. All the incision marks on the forehead. The chest. The back. The back. Father, we thank you for his freedom. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. I command him to receive a new heart, a pure heart from God. Amen. That is free from addiction Amen. and lives of sin. Amen. A heart from God that brings blessings. 
prosperity, love, Amen. unity, Amen. wisdom, Amen. knowledge, Amen. understanding, Amen. and holiness, Amen. both now and forevermore. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To him, who is as strong as I am here? That pushed me down here. Who is that man? Let me find out. Nobody ever <coughs> fights with me and wins. That's why he's looking at him. idols, the charms and the like, they are totally destroyed. Amen. Amen. And it's completely free now. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. His health and family. Sure. Mm. Son of a speak. Kill him. I possessed him. They give him to me. Which kingdom do you belong to? Speak and expose yourselves. Marine. Marine kingdom. What is your position there? Who are you there? A husband to a princess. In the kingdom of yes. darkness, meaning the marine world? Yeah. What have you done to his marriage, his health, and his job? I don't want him to marry. Because he has a wife in a place I give him a wife. Nobody in that family will become somebody. I brought poverty in that family. Every one of them must be poor. Nobody can build a house in that family. Even the one their father built before he died, I pull it down. And they sworn that nobody again will erect any house there. And you said you are who? A marine spirit. I from Atlantic Ocean. Many women and men are there. My people, my own. Apart from you, you marine spirit, what else have you done, you idol? I brought sickness and death. And the remaining people alive. I put them fear to get them. And they, they begin to look for a place to save their life. I brought somebody to direct them a shrine. That is where I captured so many of them. Where is the shrine located? In Asaba, Opanam Road. What is in this ministry? The city of Jesus, international ministry that exposed you demons. There is fire here. Fire from where? Fire from above. I send more fire to your evil kingdom. More fire to your agents. More fire. Fire. <laughs> then what is happening to your kingdom? Fire, 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 fire. What eggs have you destroyed in this family? Destroy. Their web beings, their academic background, their businesses, their careers, their marriage, all of them. Some of their women have married three husbands. Some men, three, four. Some are not even living with wife and husband now. And who is the cause of that? The prince of Marin about. How do you operate there? I operate there with the power to bring many people down. In the course of seeking for solution, they must seek me. And I will give them a temporary power that will not last. And that will make them to believe me. And they will come back again and seek more power. So explain 
all your evil plans and your evil activities. This fire is too much. How can I say anything? I'm burning inside. Leave me. I send more fire ah. to you. More fire. To your kingdom, no. your tongue, your legs. No. I send more fire. Yeah. What? More fire in yes, the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of people. They are still there. That society. They call it Ibe. It's like other places. What are the activities in that evil club? What did you push them to do? Those whom I have already possessed, I bring agents to bring them there. And the more they enter there, the more possessed they become. What do you push them to do? What are the activities? First, I will give them the spirit of fornication. They will fornicate to murder anybody on earth. What else? Yes. Every man that sees them will like to fornicate with them. And every woman that sees them now would like to fornicate with them. I give them that blessing to fornicate with all women and men. And the, the more they fornicate, the more chances they give me to penetrate to their life. Yes, that's how I get them. Those people, sometimes I show them what to do to tight some people and put that charm in the ocean. The number of charms is in the ocean. And uh, I promise them nobody can destroy that charm. So many women, they cannot marry. So many men, they cannot prosper. So many are drunkard. So many are mad. So many are misbehaving. So many are in the prison because I sent my agent to prepare that charm against them and throw it inside the ocean. My kingdom so that it will be protected and nobody will destroy it. And that is what I I sent them to do. So how many people have you pushed to belong in that evil club? There are many. Those your evil agents, whoever they sleep with, what will happen to them? It will be initiated into the modern kingdom. What are the powers you have to them? If I want, I give you power to make money. And that money will be temporary money. Anytime I want to take it, I will take it. It's mine. Anybody I like, I give. Bears on what I found out in that person. If I keep trying to possess all of them, I keep trying. Those ones that you cannot possess, what is in them that stop you not to have access to them? This type of fire here. I don't like this type of fire here. That is what I sometimes I see in them. And I love them to go their way for a while. And those you possess, what do you see in them that never want to possess them? They are open for me to possess. Pull them over your crowns. Pull them out. And the rings. Throw your shrines. All of them. Your charms. Your charms. Your charms! Throw! Your wicked power of addiction. Fornication, adultery, hardship, poverty, <coughs> shame, disgrace, sudden death, failure, and lives of sin. I command all of you to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Holy Ghost, from the name of Jesus Christ, let your glory, your blessings, and every good thing that God has provided for you be restored and given back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank God. 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 Thank once again, we're happy to have you here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. At the Tuesday prayer meeting, while the man of God, Christopher G, was ministering prayers of deliverance, healing, breakthrough, and salvation, the power of God located you, and we saw the manifest presence of God at the City of Jesus International Ministry expose the various works of darkness operating in your life. So we'll, 
want to kindly let you tell us the issues and the problems that brought you to the City of Jesus International Ministry, how they originated and how they have affected your life in the past. Thank you. Um, for me, this story is a long story, the story of my life, because what happened here, I have been experiencing it for so many years, but there was no solution until today when man of God was ministering in the prayer mountain and uh, God located me there. See, it was when I was uh, 10 years old. My mother took me to my grandmother's place that I should stay with her so that I will help her for some certain home works. So because my grandmother was living with nobody, all her children have left to some places so they decided that i should go and live with her my grandmother was the head of one big shrine in my village the shrine was called yugo everybody knows about that shrine and everybody was afraid of that shrine my village is Ndiobasi, also Ed. that shrine if somebody do evil and there was denying of that evil if they brought you there and you swear Everybody was expecting that that person must die. My grandmother was the head of that shrine. So any time they do sacrifice there, my, my grandmother would like to come back home with the animal. They used to do that sacrifice and they, she would give me that meat and I would eat. So when I was growing with her, there was a group of bad boys in that village. This People saw me and they called me one day. They sent me an errand that I should go and bought cigarette for them. And I went. The other day, they saw me again and sent me. That was how I was sending, sending, sending. One day, they asked me to go and buy India hem for them. I went and bought that India hem for them. They asked me to smoke. After they mowed it and the smoke, they gave me the half of it and asked me to smoke that is good if i smoke it i will be bored i will be this and that then i collected it and smoke uh, that day something happened to me but they hide it give me gare i soaked gare with uh, coconut and all these things but when i recovered i began to follow them to smoke all these things so by the time i will know all these things they have started calling me to follow them and go and they have met somebody see them in the farm there. I was the smallest. I was very small then. I was at the age of 10 years, where they were about age of 20, 25. They took me like their boy. So I was following them to commit all level. Sometimes there was a fowl that come across our backyard. They asked me to go and to kill that fowl. Sometimes I kill that fowl, give them the prepare, we chop all together, chicken, yeah. So that was what we were doing. So when I grew up, I discovered that Satan has been using me because when they call women for fornication, they will call for me too. Anything they do, they will like me to do it. I grew up with this character. So you're saying you found yourself living a life of fornication, drug abuse, at such a tender age, what age were you then? That time I was age of 13. I started fornicating with them at the age of 13 because they will call women. I will be looking at them when they, they will be fornicating with the woman. Sometimes they will ask me to come and do. So that is where I started fornicating with them. When I grew like at the age of 18, I leave them, traveled out to Onicha. So I was selling India hem at Onecha. So from selling that India hem, I was uh, moved to Asaba. When I moved to Asaba, where I enter one society they call Ibe to protect me because any time I stay alone, my conscience will go to that evil thing I have been doing with those people. My mind will tell me, do you remember there was a day you went with people and the harvest people see him. You keep people's uh, foul. You fornicate. You can't make it. I was afraid. And people must haunt you. Those people you collected all these things, they must kill you. They must do this for you. Do you know what they are doing? 
So I begin to ask people, where can I get good native doctor, this and that. So one day they sent me to one society, they called Ibe in Asaba. What kind of society was this? That society is a marine spirit society. They worship mame water, marine spirit. Sometimes they initiate people with dog. When you come there, they ask you to go and bring dog. If you bring dog, then they will slaughter the dog and use the blood and bath you. After bathing you with the blood of that dog, they took you with all the members of that Ibe society. They took you to River Niger where they will be dancing, playing all type of music, calling the name of Mami Wata in different names. Mari Spirit calling him to come up and receive his son, that his son has come to embrace her, that he should come. After all those things, that spirit that they're calling will make noise in that river Niger. Everywhere will be woo inside that water and the, all of us will be like we are drunk. We won't even recognize ourselves again. But for a while, that thing will clear. Then they will say that the marine spirit have accepted you and have collected your sacrifice. From them, you become their member. You will be going in their meetings, other people sacrifice. Anytime they come, somebody that they say that in his vision will tell you that this is what is going to happen for you in future, that you should bring this goat, you should bring fowl, you should bring ram. When you bring it, they do sacrifice, then everybody will eat it. They will tell you where to sacrifice some certain part of the animal you bring, you brought there. So that was what we are doing until I grew up. Before you go ahead, this society you mentioned, were they involved in any form of human sacrifices or was it just animal sacrifices they offered? What I witnessed there is if a member come and report that such person is disturbing him, he will call the name of the person, they will tell you what you will bring and what you bring. They will do incantation and do some certain things, tie what they will tie and call the name of the person and throw it inside the water. Anything that you want that person to be is what the person will be. So if you want to disturb them or battle with them or drag anything with them, you come to that place and you tell them what they will do for you. They will do it for you. That is what they were doing. But I never witnessed any human sacrifice there. So this society, they were involved in perpetrating acts of killing, stealing and destroying people's lives? Yes, that's what was they were doing that time. So until I began to see that sometimes I witness progress, sometimes I experience backwards. So I decided to look for another higher place to enter. Before you go ahead, you mentioned while you were part of this society, what kind of progress? Because we know that nothing good comes from Satan. You mentioned you experience progress, then setback. Can you clarify this? Because Satan does not give progress. Yes. Sometimes when I'm looking for a job, I will come and say, I'm looking for a job in social company and uh, I want that company to employ me. They, they will told me the type of sacrifices I will make. I bought all type of fruits, banana, oranges, all type. Mention them. Then I put it inside basket. They will ask me to go to four road junction and put it there and talk whatever I want after all the sacrifice in that their house. So I will do that. So those people that I want them to employ me will employ me. But this um, progress, was it permanent in your life? It, no, it was not permanent. The worst was the money I made from there was just like air. It just flied away. I did not use it to do any reasonable thing. So you're saying that nothing good comes from Satan? Oh, nothing good comes from Satan. Viewers all around the world, you're watching and you're listening. It is only the blessings of God that make us rich and addeth no sorrow. Okay, sir, so kindly continue. After the society, what next? So I witnessed what I got from that place doesn't last. And I decided to go another side because I wanted to be rich. So I met another person who took me to that shrine in Okeja. Then it was that shrine because I was looking for contract. So they give me a charm. They ask me to buy all things. They ask me to buy. I buy a snake. This um, 
cobra. Uh, they asked me to buy a strange bed and a uh, human pass. I told them I don't know where to buy human pass. They collected money from me and sent one of their agents there. He went and bought human score. That is what they used to prepare that charm. So that charm was exactly was giving me job then. I was winning some contracts. So one day I follow one of my friends to one crusade. That crusade in that Okija, that man of God said that somebody had a charm in his house because that charm was in a big pot. And uh, I used to republish that charm every Friday, once in a week. This new society is called Oguguapo. Oguguapo is in Okeja. Okeja is in here, the local government, Anambra State. The things you bought for the sacrifice, how was the sacrifice carried out? And what happened afterwards? The way they prepared the charm and put some part of all those things I bought in a clay pot. They burned the other ones and grounded it to ashes. They used the ashes and give me and told me that any time I'm going out, I should use and the rub on my forehead that it will bring favor for me. The one in the pot that I will took it to my house and put it inside my cupboard and I will be refurbishing it with pine wine every Friday, once in a week. I will put candle, pour pine wine inside it. Then I will use one stick and turn it and turn it. It will bring foam. And uh, as it is bringing foam, so the blessings that come it will be growing. But it wasn't permanent. So you would use these powers of darkness in order to um, get favor, get jobs from people, but still it won't be permanent. What will happen when people see you, when you've performed this ritual in your house in the morning and you leave? What will usually happen? Uh, truly, I used to get uh, favor from people. Uh, but one thing with that money is the money I got from it, it doesn't last. Even the contract doesn't last. It will be one or two contracts. The charm will spoil again. These charms you were using, were they able to work on true children of God or through companies that were serving God? No, I don't think because I really know that I wasn't a true child of God, but I wanted to get rich by all means. That is why I went there, but at the end, I came out with nothing. You mentioned about a crusade you went to. Can you pick it up from there? Yeah, that crusade, the man of God there was saying that somebody prepared a charm, and that charm is in his house now, and he's sacrificing something in that charm, that he wanted to use that charm to gain contract, that if that charm remained in that house of that man for three more days, that that man will be mad. That what we say that man is to go and bring that charm for the people of God and man of God here to destroy. So the thing shocked me. I came out and told them that I'm the one, that the charm is in my house. The same people with me, we went to my house and brought out that charm and they destroyed it. After then, everything locked up. I don't know what to do again. I begin to look for another place. So while the charm was being destroyed physically, the spiritual effects were still present in your life. You were not completely delivered. Were very, very present in my life because nothing works out. Fear gripped me. Hair threats here and there. Even though I come close to people, people with now you look like a criminal, get out here. I say, ah, ah, I'm not a criminal. And it makes me again to begin to look for a way to get charm that people will love me. So until I get to a place, they told me that somebody will shoot me with gun, that I will just die prematurely. I told them, what will I do? They said that they will give me charm to fortify myself, that man will not kill me, woman will not kill me, even gun will not even kill me. I begin to sell some of my property to gather money to do that charm. Later, I got a little money. I went there, no less than 50,000 that time. With all that things I bought, I bought some certain things like tortoise, different type of fowl, this uh, cock, 
they prepare it with toad and the medicine. Some they give me, I swallow. Some they put it in my body with razor. If you see my body, you see many charms. The, this charm in my body now is four different types of charm. You see here. This max, you see here. These big broad ones. Now, this is the back one. If you look well, you can see the back one. The same thing. So, even the ones at my waist, my stomach here, even my leg, down leg here, you will see marks everywhere is full of charm that time. We call ourselves freedom fighters. Because that was when there was a riot in northern side. They brought uh, Igbo people cops in our uh, bridge. Then people start to do riots. So I was involved. So when this riot was happening, the former governor then called uh, soldiers and police. They started fighting with those people who were doing the riots. But most of us, those who are Masobians then, because we had fortified ourselves with different type of charm. None of us was killed with gun because if you shoot us, we say, or oh, she it is water, pure water. And it, it throw us, if you shoot us on the body, it's like water, it doesn't harm us, it doesn't even hurt us. You will see bullets will be falling down on us, for grand. So we were using that thing to do different type of riot. My own particularly was just a riot. Where riot come away? start destroying many things. Because the native doctor that gave me the charm told me that I should not use the charm and thief. Any day I touch something thief that the charm will spoil. But I can come here and put fire on a building, put fire on a vehicle and anything. But I won't take anything. So you were saying that these charms were given to you particularly to cause destruction, go for protests, riots and all that? Of course. That it was the aim of giving me this charm is to cause riot. Anytime there's riot, as I will have the power to destroy anything and come back without harm. We see youths of nowadays, so many times a protest will just rally up, especially for um, no right means, and there will be a riot, destruction of public properties. Would you say that they are being possessed by these same spirits and they're using the same powers of darkness? Yeah, that is what is happening now because so many riots will be hijacked by all these reckless boys. They will use the opportunity and destroy so many things. Not the true people who are protesting, but those evil boys that devil has possessed will use the opportunity and destroy a lot of things, a lot of properties, even life we lost. So that was what the charm was protecting. And the other charm, the, the, the small one, and the one I swallowed was uh, this of sign of everything that is coming. If, for example, that time, we have a group that is called BIA, Biafra Intelligent Agency. So anytime strengthen come up, they will send us to go. So, but because of that, police were looking for us. We started to make that charm that if at all police is looking for us, we are here. Police will be at the junction, but we will be here and notify that police is coming here we will escape before the police arrives here so that one is giving us sign so that one was the small one and the one i swallow it will when the everything want to come it will vibrate my body like this and anybody who has that charm the same thing will happen to him through there we will escape each, each person we will look at ourselves and say it's like something want to happen we will escape the other one is i want to gain favor if you look my forehead, you will see one mark here. That mark, they call it Ijogazi. That anywhere I enter, that everything will go smoothly for me. And any eyes that behold me will love me and show me favor. That was what that one was happening. So that was how I lived my life until I discovered that all those things is waste. It doesn't work and it doesn't benefit us anything. I forsake all those things. For how long did you live this kind of life? <laughs> For so many years. I am 
46 years. I was born in 1977, November 21st. I lived this life so many years, at least. Last three years, a family member started uh, claiming that our land, it was a family land, but he wanted to claim it like the land is his own. And the man was a very dangerous man. He's a member of one society. Then when we got to meeting, we said, we are not going to follow this man up with empty handed. We must look for another strong place to go. There we go to another charm in Abia State. That man, if you go there, you will see many people come there to collect power. All these internet fraudsters, many of them, they come and to, to thank the man that the fraud they engaged has worked out, been able to get millions. They, some people come. Give a man to very first from that fit. We're going to give him 100,000 naira with a cow. That if the man will give us charm, so the man give us charm, so that the day we are going to judge the matter, I will defeat him. He said that this charm, we are going to dig ground our compound and bury the charm. When we bury the charm, we will put gunpowder on top of the charm and burn the gunpowder. Then we pour pine wine on top of it. Then the one he gave us, he said that the day of that judgment, we will leak that thing. That anything we talk, that people will accept it rather than to accept his own. So we went that judgment. And the, the judgment was in favor of us. We win the judgment. So it was later this November, we went and paid the vow we made. We paid the money and the animal involved. So the remaining charm, I have thrown, thrown it away. So I decided to come here for deliverance because I know that all ramification in all these things, that I have found no favor, I have found no deliverance, nothing. So I decided to come here because one of my friends told me, that all this thing I'm looking for, that there is a man of God here who God is using perfectly to heal and deliver people. So I said to come. When I came here on Sunday, you know me, I don't believe in all these things because I have tried so many powers and uh, I don't think that I see uh, anything there. I have gone to so many churches. When I see some people falling down, I, I begin to laugh. I say, what is falling you people down? Because for me, I don't think any power can make me to fall down. So, but that, that Sunday, it was a different issue. When I came, after the gospel, uh, it was a healing time. The woman of God came and they was touching people. Maybe she touched me. Ha. It's like I was like a dry leaf. I was very light and I fell down. I wanted to f stand up again. I fell down. I said, what is happening? That I will come this prayer mountain today. So when I came this prayer mountain today, the same thing happened. Very bigger one happened. That when a man of God was praying, he touched me, immediately touched me. All my body was engulfed with fire, and I, my eye was turning me, turning me, turning me, until I fell down. And that was where I forgot myself. I didn't even know myself. I didn't even know that I was in the prayer ground. I began to see something. This house, particularly this house, I saw one pure white dove on top of this house. Intention was there. You mean the building directly opposite the prayer mountain? Uh, mountain. I was watching that dove. My mind was towards there. I said, what could be this dove doing there? And this, this dove was shining. The rest of you, you can't behold it twice. My mind was totally there. So there I know that truly God is here. So we thank God Almighty for your deliverance. Viewers all around the world, I hope you're listening to this powerful deliverance. There's a lot to unpack from this. Okay, so while you were being delivered, the evil spirit manifested itself as a demon from the marine kingdom. And it called itself the husband to the princess of the marine. This has affected your marital life. It doesn't want you to get married. And you've been...
in so many marriages and relationships in the past that didn't work out. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, my marriage was totally messed up by the devil. Because the first lady, I do everything in her head. Let her run away from me when the condition was so hard. Poverty, depression was in my life. I started selling my properties to make sure I eat my machine, my motorcycle, my tailoring machine, wardrobes, um, generator, many of them. I told her that we should go home. Let me not remain in this place and die. So when I brought her home, I told her that my mother was still alive then. I told her that my mother has shown us a place which we can be uprooting cassava to make sure we eat. But if this cassava finish, we will start looking for what to eat. Then I went to a bush to clear where we will plant our own. She said she will not do such a thing. So later she ran away and uh, went back to their village. When she went back there, because she too was possessed seriously. So another man took her, pregnant her. She was pregnant for three years and uh, eight months. Yes. One day they called me. They said that I was the cause of that uh, unborn pregnant. That anywhere they go, they said that she do something against me that I should come and revise all what I have said against her. I do so. I revise everything because that time if I'm grow annoyed and say this thing will happen to somebody, it will happen. Through this power of darkness? Through this power that the devil gave me. If you make me to grow annoyed and I say something will happen to you, it will happen to that person. And I know they say good thing, now only evil thing I can profess against person and will come to pass. So there are so many people all around the world, they are like, you don't dare me, you don't um, mess with me because if I say anything against you to come to pass. So are you saying that such people are possessed by these powers of darkness? Yes, they are possessed because if you see my tongue, they put razor there and put that charm here. He was all around the world. He's showing us his tongue where the power to cause people are placed. We know as children of God, we are to bless and not to curse. These powers of darkness were given to him to be able to curse people. effect when they put that charm inside that wound and they will ask me to hold it that I should not eat anything throughout that day until tomorrow so that the charm will be able to penetrate inside my tongue that if I speak out anything against person that thing will come to pass and it was happening like that so I told that lady that because you have done this to me you will suffer for it so that lady went out and she got another man, and the man pregnanted her, and the pregnancy lasted for three years and then. So another marriage, the same thing, this devil keep giving me possessed women. When they come, they mess my life up, they go. Here they came, they mess my life up, they go. Until last year, I begin to go so many churches. Last year, God gave me the one I'm living with now because I paid her bride price December last year. Okay, so this evil spirit also narrated how it destroyed the lives of your family, your siblings, um, causing various attacks like madness, even death, destroying their marriages also. You mentioned your sister has been married like three times. So what can you say about this experience? Yes, this evil spirit destroyed our family totally. I'm telling you, without the grace of God, I myself we have not stand here today to say anything. Our first son, I'm the second son, but that first son, my mother gave back to him and gave back to five girls before me. I am the seventh child of my mom. So, but that first son, he started to drink like there is no tomorrow. So, 
when they started drinking, smoking, any type of cigarettes in their hemp. So one day he got accident. After treating him, the doctor told him, don't take anything alcohol or smoking. He says nothing will stop him from taking alcohol and smoking. He keep taking alcohol and smoking. He becomes stroke and died. Our first daughter too, the same thing. She was mad and we got to so many places where I person called where they collected what they collected from us. They, they couldn't hear her, but at the end she too died. The one I followed just died with serious like that. Our last born, his own life is nothing to write home about because he is a cortex. He is a, what they call a executioner. He do whatever he wants to do. Many times he has gone to prison so many times. Sometimes he come back. This time I don't know where he is now. Somebody told me that he is in Lagos with all these bad boys. He, was, he handle guns, he thief, he do everything. He smoke like mother, even drugs like cocaine. All these hard, hard drugs, he took it. So I don't know where he is now. The other one, my sister, married more than four husbands. Nobody could pay even her bride price. But when the other one paid her bride price, he died. A year the other man paid his bride price, she died. My mother have nine children. How many are we today? We are only four one daughter and the three boys and that three boys uh, my dear is nothing to write home about it's only me that is looking for a way to succeed but other ones are comfortable with their condition even the my father's house there was a, a fight between our village and neighboring village then the, our neighboring village came and they burned houses in our house. My father's house was among the houses they burned, which means today I don't have a home. If I go home, I just attach with a friend. That house is still there. I don't know how we are going to rebuild that house because the devil has destroyed everybody. People that are supposed to build the house, many have died. The people alive has no hope to rebuild it. So until I came here. This evil spirit mentioned that your family was dedicated to a shrine in Asaba. What can you say about this dedication? It manifested itself as an idol in your family from Atlantic Ocean, from the Marine Kingdom. Uh, yes, before this issue of Asaba, my grandmom, when he was the head, she was the head of that shrine. She dedicated my mother, children to that shrine because my mother was the only daughter. The daughter she have died of and it happened, happened to his only daughter. He now dedicated all his grandchildren to that shrine. Before I myself, out of fear of what is happening to my family, I even put the name of my family in that shrine I went to Asaba. This various attacks you've been experiencing you've experienced setback living in abject poverty you've gone from a sh one shrine to the other seeking powers so are you telling us that no single good thing came out from serving the devil for all these years absolutely no single good had it been that there is single good thing maybe i wouldn't have been here i would have been going ahead to worship that dev devil N or I would have been in this condition I am because I'm totally abject poverty. I have nothing at village. I have no home. The home we have have been destroyed. Nothing. So that is why you see me here. So nothing good comes from devil. Nothing good. At Even though the devil have given you anything. Be hopeful that you are going to collect it back. All of them is going to be destroyed and you are going to be worse than as you, as you were before. What point did you get to that made you realize that you needed to be delivered? It's because I can say that I have tried Satan all. I have tried him. Because I, can't, I don't think that he will still have the power to deceive me because I have devoted my time to work for him, worship him, but he gave me nothing than destruction. 
So I started to look for God with sincerity. That is why I said I need man of God to deliver me. During your deliverance, can you tell us your experience? You mentioned you saw a white dove right opposite the building outside the prayer mountain of the City of Jesus International Ministry. And after your deliverance, how do you feel right now? My experience was anytime the man of God touched my stomach and my head, my stomach would turn me and my head was like I was placed on the fire. Fire. So I was seeing fire in me, inside me. It was not ordinary because anytime he touched me, it's like fire is in me. And again, I begin to see a white dove. This white dove was on top of one building. I was opposite direction of that uh, prayer mountain. I was looking at that dove, very white, pure white. So my attention, my mind told me that that must be the Spirit of God. Praise God. We thank God Almighty for such a powerful deliverance, converting you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Can you tell us what you believe this deliverance has brought to your life? Good. You know, I have problems in me, like my heart always pain me. I don't stand more than 10 minutes in any place. But when I get there, I was asking, ah, there's no seat here. How can I stand like this? But at the time, I got a courage until the man of God came and touched me. But I can stand here and tell you that all these pains I used to experience in my body, I was no longer experiencing them. And my body was very, very light, like something had been taken away from me. That shows me that really God has delivered me from the power of darkness. And have you experienced this kind of deliverance anywhere else? No, I have never. I've never experienced such deliverance. This is the f first this kind. Having been to a lot of fetish places in search of solution, gone to native doctors, sacrifices will be asked to be made, you will be asked to pay amounts of money. Did you go through any of that process here at the City of Jesus International Ministry? No, not at all. They did not collect anything from me. It was totally free totally free. No money was collected. Nothing was collected from me. Indeed, freely we have received and freely we give, as a man of God, Christo Woji would say. So we thank God Almighty for your life and this deliverance you've received today. What do you believe this deliverance has brought to your life? What are you expecting from your life and how are you deciding to live your life from now? Um, number one, what I'm expecting in my life Poverty, uh, untimely death, um, marital problem is over. God has taken control in my life. And from today, I will be living a life of righteousness and holiness. That is the key. Because if I don't do so, Satan will find it easy to come into my life again. Because of that, I will not like this deliverance to be for nothing. I will take it seriously. That's a wonderful decision. Kindly give a word of advice to viewers all around the world. There are so many people still living such lives of sin. You lived in the past. What word of advice would you give to them? My advice to those who are still living in sin is because you have heard it before. I said, I took my time to worship and the work for the devil. Nothing good come from the devil at all. You can hear this uh, testimony and confession I made. And it is true. All these things I visited, it's only temporary. It cannot do anything for you. It cannot do anything good for you. Rather than he will kill you and destroy you. So, my good people, my fellow men and women, please come back to God. God is the solution of all problems. And God is the only one that will save our soul, give us peace, give us happiness, and everything good we want, and not the devil. devil will only 
destroy our soul and uh, deceive us. So my people who are still living in sin, come back to God. God is the only solution of our problem. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful advice. We thank God Almighty for your life. And today, as a man of God, Christopher would say, deliverance is being set free from lives of sin, sinful desires, and its consequences. Today, you have received true deliverance and salvation. True spiritual freedom is a life without sin and sinful desires. We encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life and to stay away from lives of sin and sinful desires so that this deliverance you have received will remain permanent in your life. We are seeing God using you mightily in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, God, for my deliverance today. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm not Remove your wicked garments, spirit of old woman, hiding in her to make her look old, to delay her, to block her progress. <laughs> Why are you delaying her? What do you want to do? Why do you want to destroy her? Destroy. What have you done to our career and our marriage? I've done everything. I've done everything. She has everything. Nothing. She has nothing. I want to go. I'm tired. I want to go. I want to go. Who are you in our body? Look at me. Doing to her in a dream. I gave her, her food every day. This girl is crying in her. This girl is tired. She's 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 Come in! 
that does not <laughs> allow her to commit sin or fornication. What other lines of sin did you go to her apart from <laughs> what what are... anger? Oh, this girl doesn't want to be angry, but she doesn't want to be angry. Because it's too hard. That's it. This girl doesn't want to be angry. I'm the one that is now. Oh, she runs away from me. I'm the one that they want. I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> What else did you push her to do against her will? I can't remember. I give her fear. I just get scared. She wants to do something. I don't know how to do it. Who is she? Who is she to do something? You do this to her. I will not see her back. I'm the one. 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 You know what she does? She cannot do it. I'm the one. What the hell? She wants me to leave me alone. Who has God destined her to be that you are trying to confuse her and stop her from becoming a politician? Who is she destined to be by God? She is meant to be a God. She is meant to save people. She is meant to help. I stop that. I'm a baby too. Leave me now, I want to go. Oh, don't leave me. <laughs> Was he physically or spiritually? How did you enter into her? Spiritually. What happened that very morning that allowed you to enter into her and possess her? <laughs> to father's house. I don't know. Leave me. <laughs> right now, I send for her to the compound. The father's house. The strong. Other spirit to husband. It is fire of the Holy Ghost. No more. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Leave her mind! Leave her conscience! Leave her heart! I send fire to your evil voices and I command all of them to be destroyed by the fire of God. Turn the devil! Jesus Christ! Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. The foundation of the family and lots of people in the family, and I command them to receive this fire. Return everything you have stolen. Leave their glory. They had. I sent her to his company and I command deliverance to take place. Every spirit of stealing, killing, destruction, disappointment. Jesus, Jesus. I sent her to his contract and I command her to deliver. Where are you coming from? From my best states. I sent her to the documents of the company. And I command them to be Sister, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. Okay, my name is Ndokobachi God Cassandra. I'm from Abia State. I'm self-employed. Sister, during the prayer at the permanent site of the City of Jesus International Ministry, we saw the reactions of the evil spirit that was once living inside of you. And sister, this evil spirit actually made mention of some things. The evil spirit said it is a snake that like he wanted to, he has destroyed you. That was in the past. And he also caused you to stop praying. What do you have to say about this? Yeah, I confess that to be true. Like, I've noticed that there's something living inside of me. Sometimes I, I feel some touch in my hands, in my feet. This kind of 
pains I don't understand. And I confirm it to be true. Like, based on what the evil spirit confirmed, they have destroyed a lot of things. I confirm this to be true because I've really done a lot of things which I've not completed to this very moment. I wrote into language, studying languages, French precisely. I wasn't very well, but when it comes to communicating, like, I'm doing it practically. I can't do it, but inside of me, I'm doing it inside, but I cannot really showcase it outside. So I confirmed it to be true. So now I've destroyed a lot of things. Like my prayer life is zero. Whenever I'm praying, I'll just see myself sleeping. Sometimes I'll be like, ah, if I can just stand and watch um, the TV, like why can't I not pray? Sometimes I'll just be like, I'll be so conscious that I don't want to sleep. But I notice that along the line, I might even start thinking of something else. But it's thing kept kept on like that. I just kept on tr- trying my best to develop prayer because I, as a worker, one of the things that makes you a child of God and also a worker in the house of God is prayer. I was just trying to build my prayer life, though it's the spirit doesn't want me to build my prayer life. So I just thank God that I'm free now. Thank you, Jesus. So, sister, the evil spirit made mention that it's a snake. So, sister, how has your dream life been? At times, I can't even remember my dream. But the dreams I have most at times is I see myself eating in the dream, being fed in the dream. I see myself in a place that I don't understand, in the midst of people. And I'll just play along with the uh, what's, what's that is going on. I'll just see myself doing things I'm not meant to do in the dream. Sometimes I even see myself fornicating the dream. I, I know I've seen myself with all these strange dreams. There's a dream I had where cockroaches were just all over the ground. And one of the cockroaches just stood and told me that it's going to kill me. And I noticed that when I had that dream, since ever since I had that, I've just been scared of cockroach. Like I've always seen myself having strange dreams that I'm not meant to uh, to have. Spirit said it caused you not to do anything again, anything useful as a human being. Yes, I confirm that to be true. I've been. I just feel like should I even end end my life? Uh, if I remember where I'll go after that, I just I just let me just keep on striving because as if I'm living, but I'm not living. Because anything I just do, I will see myself dropping being frustrated nothing is moving as if i'm being stagnant i'm not moving and i'll just be looking at other people some other workers that i know that i came before them i just feel like maybe something cannot be done or be worse is that god does not exist is that god is not seeing my efforts like i just feel frustrated so sister this evil spirit also said it pushed you to fornicate so sister what do you have to say about this that is very very true in the past like i do have sexual feelings for opposite sex just a mere talk might even make me to just i'll be like let me give you a try let's just start from somewhere before you know it i'll see myself uh, committing sexual acts like fornicating which at the end of the day i'll regret doing that i'll be like ah, why am i doing that sometimes i even confess to someone like it's someone i know that maybe spiritually the person is bigger i'll be like ah sister i'll see what happened and i'll be like so once you have confessed that you are free but i kept on i cannot continue to live that life again so by god's grace i've i'm not i'm no longer living that kind of life okay sister this evil spirit made mention that it cost you the spirit of anger is that is very very true I was just see myself getting angry. Even though, even when I don't want to be angry, I'll just be like, this week, I'm not going to be angry. This week, I'm not going to do anything that will offend God. Then devil will just come with use anger. I'll just use someone around me to make me angry. So I'll be like, let me not put it to her. When I put it to her, that means I've sinned. But I just thank God that I'm free. This evil spirit made mention that it caused you spirit of lost. What can you say about this? Yeah, that is true. Like, I have lost. And then I'll just see myself fornicating with somebody. I'll just be thinking. You just give me that evil thoughts. I'll just be thinking. I'll just I'll fade it away from my mind. Ah, I'm not supposed to think of this at all. Because if I'm thinking about it, that means I'm also doing it. So you're confirming that this evil spirit caused you to have that spirit of um, loss and having the spirit of fornication. And this evil spirit further again by saying that it caused you to have the spirit of fear. You, it made you to always be scared. So sister, what do you have to say about this? Uh, I confirm that's very true. I'm just scared. I feel inferior. Even when I, inside of me, I know I have more to perform. But those, something will just keep on dragging me off from what I'm meant to do. I'm even talking to you and I'm even surprised. Like, I just felt that something less. But even like, when I want to do something, I want to face the crowd. I want to do something. That's people will just come. Just make me to fidget. But I'm even surprised that I can't feel. Like, I'm sitting there. I'm not feeling like 
anything. I just feel, I just see everybody as the same. I just feel okay. So you confirm that truly, truly that you once had the spirit of fear in the past. Yes. And this evil spirit said it entered you spiritually. So in the aspect of your dream life, how has it been? And your spiritual life, how has it been? My spiritual life is just is down. It's down. I must see. Like I'm not being serious. I've been trying to, but uh, if I'm just doing it one or two, th- three days, maybe four day, something will just make me too. I will be distracted. But it's just of praying. I'm not be praying as I, as I should as a Christian. I'm not not be praying very well. So sister, this evil spirit have caused you to live all this life of sin. Now that you've received this wonderful deliverance from God Almighty through our man of God, Christopher Oji, what do you believe God Almighty has done in your life? I believe that God has opened ways for me, ways of success, ways of breakthrough have been opened. I believe that by now, from today henceforth, there will be changes, positive changes all around me and my family. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, sister, what is your advice to viewers all around the world who are watching right now people who are living those lives of sin who have the spirit of fear anger lust fornication what is your advice to them okay my advice to them is that they should run to god they should not go far from god they should run to him they should hold him firm they shouldn't leave god it's just god that made me to still be alive to be here if i've continued that life of sin maybe by now I would have been gone and forgotten so they should run to God. They should live those life. They should avoid bad friends. They should just be prayerful, study their Bible. If if they know that it can't work with them alone, you know, they should look for a spiritual uh, man or woman, someone that they know that they're spiritually inclined. They can meet the person, can do team study. With that, they can develop their spiritual life. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful advice. So, sister, we encourage you. The now that you receive this deliverance, the command of God has taught us that deliverance is being set free from sin and sinful desire, being removed from the kingdom of darkness also to the kingdom of light. So, sister, we encourage you, make God's word the foundation of your life. Stay closer to God Almighty. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And we'll see you coming back for greater and mightier testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Alfie. Thank you, Jesus. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Turn your kingdoms. Turn. Turn. Remove your covenant of rings. We get spiritual husband. Turn your kingdom. Turn up as me. What have you done to her? Turn your kingdoms. I should have killed her. Wow. I should have killed her. Ah! What are you doing? Motor has dead. Where? Ah! At that junction. She escaped. Who are you that plan to kill her? Oh, her husband. Her husband. Meaning you are the spiritual husband? Her husband. She wants to get married. Uh-huh. For where? What have you been doing to the men? Oh. Have been coming oh. to her? Oh. Married? Spirit of anger. Who did you give anger. spirit of anger? She. Herself? She's my wife. She, she, she. How does she behave to the men? Hatred. I'll give her hatred. She will hate the person. Okay. And the person will roar. She wants to get married. Oh. Okay now. Who is she to you? He's my niece. What did you say now? She clubs at night and she's her. What do people do in clubs? Drinking and partying. How did you find out that she used to go to club? It's my niece, my, my close niece. And she's always on the club, even if I don't function. Did you hear what the young man here said? What do you have to say, you evil spirit, the spiritual husband? Does this lady go to clubs? Yes. Club. What does she do in the club? She wants to be happy. She's just there. Frustrated. Oh. 
I have pushed her, pushed her. You said you have been trying to push her. Yes. What have you been pushing her to, to do? To smoke. Uh huh. Go with men. Uh -huh. Still, he refuses. I don't want her to stay with any other man, except me. No. No, the husband. The husband. The husband. Child the name of Jesus Christ. Child. You said you are in the beer parlor. You only escorted your friends. And we see smokers around you. You say you are not taking. You are not smoking. You are not drinking alcohol. What are you doing in an environment that is not godly? <coughs> what are you doing there? You say because you don't want to lose your friends. That is why you are there. The Bible advises you not to have anything to do with the unfruitful work of darkness. What has believers got to do with unbelievers? You say you are not committing adultery, but you are in a club. What are you doing in the club? Is club your church? Is it a place of your worship? <coughs> God tells you not to touch the unclean things. God tells you to be separate, not to touch the unclean things. That's the instruction God gave to you. You go to club, stay there, and you say you are, you are not smoking, but you have friends. You say you are not an adulterous woman, but you have adulterous friends. You say, I'm not committing the sins they are committing, but you have them as your friends. What is the difference between you and them? remove the covenant rings, you wicked spiritual husband. Pull them out and set her free. All satanic marriages, evil rings, spirit of anger, chain of seduction, lust, masturbation, stubbornness, Yes. What about your anger? I'm going to club. Mm, yeah, I do club a lot. Who used to check you there? My friend. What kind of lies of sin have you been seeing her living? She smokes, mm -hmm. she drinks with alcohol. Alcohol. What are her names? Choma and Chiso. One day I was somehow frustrated. So I called her to take me to club. I want to go and have fun. What did you do drunk. there that made you believe you had fun? I got drunk and at that moment nothing was bothering me. I was okay. You got drunk with what? Alcohol. Is drinking alcohol a life of righteousness? Not at all. Is it a life of holiness? <laughs> drinking alcohol, is it sin or not? I didn't see it as a sin. You never saw drunkenness as a sin? Clubbing as a sin? Yeah, I saw that one as a sin. Now you know. What message do you have for all girls that are clubbing? People that used to drink alcohol, smoke, and also live a life of sexual immorality. What message do you have for all of them? Mm, I have to tell them that it's not good, though I know it's something that causes it. Because when you got frustrated, you feel like, let me do this thing so that I'll be happy. But that's not the right way to do it. 
Did you find the joy and happiness you were looking for? To be frankly speaking, no. How did you come about the city of Jesus International Ministry? How did you come about Koji? Who brought you here? My uncle. She claimed that you are the uncle. Yeah. What yes. life of sin have you been seeing her living? <clears throat> What I know her, she drinks a lot of alcohol and then she also loves and is very stubborn as well. How do you mean when you say that she is very stubborn? Stubborn to who? She had many people around her, even to the parents as well, even to the suitors that came before. What is happening to your spiritual life, your marriage life, and your career? I'm not married yet, but not that they are not coming, I'll end up hating them or saying one thing or the other. I do find fault of this person is not tall, he's not handsome, he doesn't have money. If someone is not tall and he's not handsome and he doesn't have money, what other reasons do you still find? If someone has money and is very handsome and is very, very tall and the person comes to you, what other reasons do you still find? The way he talks. Like, give me example. Someone that controls me a lot, I don't like it. What do you mean by someone that controls you a lot? There are some men that do not want their future wife to be a drunkard, just the way you are. To be clubbing, just the way you were doing. To have the spirit of anger and stubbornness just the way you were before you delivered. And when they encounter such person, they will use every proper means to give correction to such a person. If the person has money, look very handsome, and is extremely tall to your liking, but always gives you this kind of correction. Don't smoke again, don't drink alcohol again, don't Follow these bad girls that go clubbing. Don't be saucy, don't be rude and stubborn to your parents. Is the person seemingly controlling you? No, I want to say something about the clubbing. No, when I started clubbing, I have no man in my life. So ever since I have started clubbing, I don't used to give men chance to my life. I just like to be myself, have the fun. So no one have come across me that who say stop the clubbing, stop this, stop that. Do you at all know that evil spirits in you, the jealous spiritual husband, was the one that gave you all these bad habits just to scare men away from you? I don't know. Did you know that no reasonable man that is sent by God will get married to such a lady with such character unless the lady repents? And that probably was the reason why they did not come to you? Not that they are not coming, but I don't want to give them. Those coming to you were sent by Satan himself. That was why they were easily sent away by him, just to keep you in the room of disappointment. <clears throat> what is your decision now? I do pray a lot, go to church, like living my normal life, holy life. What have you gained? In clubbing, drunkenness, stubbornness, disobedience, anger, and other lives of sin. What have you achieved? What have you gained so far? Nothing. What do you do for a living? I'm a hairdresser. Who is she to you? She's my sister. Will you advise your uncle to have a wife that will always go to club to look for peace, happiness, and joy? We advise him to have a wife that is stubborn, full of anger, a wife that drinks alcohol. No. If you don't want that to happen to your own uncle, why are you preparing yourself to be a wife of somebody in drunkenness, waywardness, clubbing, and the like? Do you also go to club, madam? Mm -hmm. Who are you to him? The wife. Do you drink alcohol? I used to take alcohol, but it used to mess me up, so I stopped. Did you know that she used to drink alcohol? It's only yes. from wine. wine. In the village, I like to drink from wine. So what message do you have for pan wine drinkers? <laughs> <laughs> they are here. There are many of them who say, oh, that one is, is white. 
He said, so far is white, is holy. <laughs> so far is what? Is what? Is what? <laughs> He says it's coming from the tree, it's natural, it's holy, it's right, it's normal. Drinking palm wine, is it of God or of Satan? Of Satan, when is excess? Meaning anybody can go ahead and commit sin, little sin, and hold himself. Is that what you're saying? No, sir. What are you saying? Drinking it in excess is a sin. Listen, this is the life many of you live. You travel to your village. You call your people and you sit on the table only to soak yourself in the wine of iniquity. All those idols that you are claiming that you are no longer worshipping are now living in you. And they are the one demanding for one alcohol or the other. They are the one that blinded your mind not to even see this drunkenness as a sin. Look at the way she's defending anything that has to do with pan wine. Look at the way she's defending it. <laughs> That's how you defend everything. You go to your village, as long as it's pan wine, you are happy. If it is any other alcoholic drink, you say, no, this one is not good for me, but this pan wine is good. Some of you will even claim that it contains some nutrients. <laughs> so you go to repent. So in the light of this issue of and wine, which your witness are drinking, are you confirming that you know that she is drinking alcohol? Yes or no? Yes. She do. Will you be able to recommend <coughs> her for somebody to <coughs> see all this attitude like clubbing, drunkenness, <coughs> stubbornness, waywardness, and the like? Will you be able to convince a man and have somebody that you can marry? No, unless she's repented her wounds, then I will commend her. Did you, at any point, call her privately to say, See, this kind of character you have can stop you from getting married and keep you in this house? <coughs> because we are not communicating all this. The same pound wine she drinks is the same pound wine you used to drink. And you never found anything wrong with that. If not that we are talking about it now. Many of you are like that. You have sisters. You see the kind of terrible lives of sin they are living. You keep quiet. You want to push such sister to an innocent man out there. And when such sister is married, you say, thank God. She is out of our home. <laughs> <laughs> this trouble shooter is out. When you want to go and marry your own wife, you look for somebody who is not drinking alcohol. Whereas your own sister is drinking alcohol. You look for somebody who is not clubbing. Whereas your own sister is clubbing. And some of you used to take your own sister and say, let's go to club. They become your pet, your best friends. But when you want to go and get married, you are looking for someone else's sister who has no sin. Whereas your own sister it's full of sins and sinful desires. Are you not saying that what you plant is what you do? What? Reap. Reap. Can we say that you have just reaped? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah? Because she's not seen anything wrong with the alcohol or even lying. She's lying in the presence of God. Are you telling me before to stop it? Because what you're mad at me. So you want to stay in the house forever? <laughs> yes, she wants to get married, man. She's the first daughter of my my only sister. And they have uh, two other uh, staff lawyers here. That was enough to get married. No one to get married. You first, but uh, and uh, <laughs> to get married. Stop this tomorrow, please. Stop, 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 please. Stop. This is our guy. He's a guy from my uh, state. Don't mind her last time. Every day is fight. Even on Sunday, they're fighting. <laughs> every day. <laughs> I'll be at home, you call me for every day to settle, settle this week. Every now and then. I ask her, well, please, if you can't go ahead with this lady, let her go. But you and her, you need to go to the dance. But she don't want to go. She don't want to go. Every now and then, one night at home, like in the village, she will call with a uh, boyfriend, he told, uh, he told me, from uh, Europe. So during the discussion, I was next to her. She was being so rude and uh, picking anger, speaking to that guy in a bad manner, something like that. I call her, 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 I call her,
as we talk, talking to this man, and she's like, if you don't talk, mad, let him go. I asked her, for how long will you stay in this house with chasing men after, the, like, you don't come today, and the introduction, even take list, they will come back again. Because of your attitude and your character. Even and then, not one, not two, not three. The last one that I, I wrote was the one that, uh, the, uh, that one from my state. They were living together in Lagos. Every day in Squadron. Breaking phones, breaking TV, every day, even on some Christmas Day, you must fight and argue. Every day, she come out with bruises, broken legs, even and then. I remember the boy, please. If you if you want to kill her, because of this whole thing, let her go in peace when she comes to your house. I go to the village, to her mother's house. Don't care about her, her carelessness. If you want to marry her, you and her should arrange not for the difference. Because even with her, she'll tell me that, that boy you're watching pornography, this one is fine, but go to church, two of you, you don't want to get anyway. So, I don't know. Yeah. I have to lie to her that my friend is doing child education. Uh, After the church, I went to party. That's why she came out very early and dressed up. She did what? If I said, <laughs> she did what? That's why she came here. If I didn't lie to her, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be here. I have to lie to her that there was a party on Sunday. That's the only way she went to be here. Like if not, she wouldn't have come here. How did she dress from the house? Her party <laughs> dressing now huh? is half like this. Huh? It's what? She was dressed like she went to party. She was dressed with half this set of it. She was dressed like this. They had not given her uh, that much time inside the church. Meaning she was prepared at home. For party, yes. Yeah. Let's hear from her. Go ahead. Okay. Last week, my uncle came. Who is your uncle? Point at him. He came and told me that there was a child education and the party is going to be a very big education like that. I'm saying, wow, okay, now I will go because ever since I separated with Kessel, my ex fiance. So ever since I separated with him, the only thing I want to hear is just party, party, party. So I don't care anything again. I just want to be having fun. So when he told me about something that is going on in the church, in big location like that, I was so happy. Hmm. So when I came here that Sunday, I prepared myself that I will fix nails. You fix? Let's see. <laughs> see I cut it. It was then. very long. So it was what? Very long. long. Very long, but I cut it. On Sunday was very long on Sunday. On Sunday it was very long. Why did you fix that kind of nail? I thought I was going to a party, so uh -huh. I have to go and uh, change my hair, make my nails, my legs, everywhere, so that I'll be looking good and sharp. So, <laughs> so when I came in here, I was like, brother, are you sure there is a party? <laughs> <laughs> he mm -hmm. said, yes, there is a party. I even asked brother Angel, uh -huh. so I was like, tell me the truth, is there going to be a party? He said yes. I said, but I didn't see anybody that is carrying a child. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he told me that they are somewhere, they are sitting down somewhere. I said, okay, now let the church dismiss so I can go. So after everything, I didn't see any party. I was like, uh uh, uncle, you told me there was party. So let's go into the party now. Now our church have dismissed. Now I said that there's no party mm -hmm. that he just wants me to come here, that he wants me to be delivered here, this and that. That he has been asking me to go to TB Joshua since. I refused to know, so that's why they have to lie to me. Yeah, sorry, that's all. Even this one, I thought, for a long time, before <laughs> mm -hmm. I came back, uh -huh. she refused to come. She first gave excuse that, where would she stay? Go to the hotel, I think. She said, No, how would I stay in the hotel for two days? Go to the just house, no. Stay in the hotel, no. Just to come to Inugu and go to church, it's a problem. Where is she living? She's in the church, the mother. Did you know that she received deliverance when she came? Yeah, I don't tell the first day. So I was asking me, what about the party? Because she's ready and she's mean that she will get her own husband. On Saturday, I told her to dress well because my friends will be there. And then saw that I'm not married yet. So they are looking for a wife to get married. But if you look good, it might be a lock. So she told me, okay, I have done my nails and changed my hair, I bought the new clothes. I said, it's fine, just come. So when she got here on Sunday after the break, I go, this time, not seem thing like the party here. She said, no, that's it for me. That behind the building, that's it for party. Then after the check, then like, okay. I wish to go to party, they said, no, the party is over. There's no party anymore. It's for deliverance. So it didn't happen today, but on Tuesday, I know it will happen. So come back on Tuesday again. Thank God today, she's here, then God half his way. So those long nails you fixed, the new hairstyle and the short dress you put on on Sunday, mm -hmm. were just to attract men. Yes. What message do you have for ladies? People that like that kind of thing, they only go to a place they can be noticed. 
they can seduce men, attract men to themselves. What message do you have for them? Are you in the party now or you are in the house of God? Prayer room? I'm in the house of God. Even that uh, Sunday, he said she will come here on Tuesday. I said, if you don't get a block, you want to come back again. He said, you want to come back again. I have to tell her that if she don't come, then I have to block her. That I can't go again, they ask her, if she come, he said, yes, she's coming. Thank God today, she said. So I feel that she's delivered to me. Let us pray for your forgiveness for life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have said and why is not a sin? Never leave the husband. Jesus, you that look for people that fix long nails, and people that have strange eyelashes, and people that do modern hairstyle. Anytime you go to a club, you start looking. Look for people like that. If you don't see any lady like that, you believe the lady is not holy. These are reasons why you have been having relationship with agents of Satan. Now check your business, check your health, check your career. Imagine if you have an encounter with someone who is highly possessed in this manner. What do you think will be happening to your business? Even if you are the richest man on earth, what do you think will happen to that wealth, that riches? The Bible tells you we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. You go to occasions only to look for flashy ladies. Some of you will say, if the lady is not fake colored, is not your type. If the lady is very fat, is not your type. If it's not slim fit, is not your type. And you have been having relationship with demons and satanic agents. You are free to go to places but be led by the Holy Spirit. They know what you want. Did you not hear what the lady said? See her here. She's laughing. What did the one look at? Short skirt, short uh -huh. gown. Uh -huh. It's not. Yes, I like it. What about steps? What kind of step do you people normally take if you are there? Can't work. Can you can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and watch it. They are watching you. Do it well or the way we normally do it. I can't do it. You can't take it. Because the spirits. Let's what if you get back home and they start calling you? Your friends. friends that used to smoke go to club and say, Come, 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 let's go. There is one fresh one. No, Very hot. They won't call me because huh? I have not been with them since December. No. You know, when you are delivered. Satan knows you are separated from his kingdom. And he will not take it easy. He will go and inform all his evil agents to come back to see if you go back to the former life of sin you used to live. If they decide to call you and say, please, we are very sorry for not contacting you since December. We are even prostrating. We apologize. And we know you have a good heart. You always forgive. We have come up with a very good party that you will never live to regret. There are classic men there, rich people. 
many of them are single. They are looking for whom to marry. If they come up with this, what will you tell them? Because they will call you. Yeah, definitely. I will tell them that I'm a changed person. When your uncle used to tell you to come to this church, yeah. what do you normally tell him then? I used to just give necessary reasons. Like, give an example. The place is far that I can't go. Though, let me say the truth. I say I don't trust any man of God again. Because I've been to many churches. Mm -hmm. What did they do to you that made you believe that you don't trust them again? They used to give me fasting, give me prayers to do. After doing it, nothing is working. And it keeps increasing. My problem keep increasing day by day. So I was like, I don't want to be going to any church again. Let me just stand. Down. What is wrong if a minister of God gives you fasting exercise or programs to that? What is wrong? If that minister of God is led by the Holy Spirit to tell you to fast, is there anything wrong with it? Nothing is wrong with it, but I expected to see something like after the fasting and prayer, I was supposed to see that something changed or something changed my business and everything that I do, but nothing. The true meaning of fasting is a life without sins and sinful desires. Yes. So if you say you want to fast, <coughs> why yet in sin? That fasting will not work. Take your time to read Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58. Yes. Those who fast and sing will not have answers to their prayers. Are you seeing now that you can't even blame the ministers of God because you too do not know yourself the true spiritual fasting, which is to stay away from sins and sinful desires? Like some churches, they used to collect money from me. So they said that they will use and buy what they used to cleanse me, pray for me. So, did anybody collect money from you here? Nobody. But you will still need to observe that spiritual fasting, which is to stay away from sins and sinful desires. If you like, eat 200 times a minute. As long as you stay away from sins and sinful desires, you are spiritually fasting. And that kind of fasting will bring answers to your prayers. Did you hear what I said now? Yes. You said you were tired of ministers of God. Are you tired of this place? Not at all. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I think Jesus now, what do you have to say to your uncle that? He's the best uncle ever. <laughs> Why? What did he say? He brought me here. For what? <laughs> For deliverance. Did he bring you to the club? No. Yeah, <laughs> Church. <laughs> spiritual cowries manifested them physically and caused them not to be seen it's prophetic how, it's dreams. Only how, it's only how, it's only how. I'm done her. She must serve me. She belongs to me. Stop asking me. Stop. Everyone <laughs> is created <laughs> to serve God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit 
not you. We can win. <laughs> I'll fight you. Where? You I'll have no off. spiritual strength to do I'll that. You off. know. When did you give her that spiritual power? When? <sighs> that manifested themselves physically. When did you give her? Last week. Last week. Last week. Saturday. Hey! Last week, mm. Saturday. It's inside her handbag. Go there. Inside her handbag. Yes. Oh, handbags. I put it there. Uh -huh. I did it. I'm still doing more. Mm. Mm. Hey! Jesus Christ. Mm. What lies of sin did she live that gave you access mm. to manipulate her even while she was fasting for 21 days? Mm. What gave you that access? Mm. I sent her this message. She From? bring up her phone. She read the text message. I gave her the cards. Yes, I did it. You, yes. you said you sent her mm. text mm. message. Mm. 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 You know, they are asking me. Physically ah, or spiritually? Uh, hey, phone, her phone ring now. She opened her phone immediately. First message. Who was the person that On the way. used to call her physically? Why not to see? Does it mean you use your own agent? <laughs> or you yourself appear physically to call her? Me! She see me physical, spiritual, anywhere, on the road. Anywhere, she sees me. Anywhere, in her office. Anywhere, in her office. Anywhere, anywhere. Try the name of Jesus Christ. There is a handbag here. Check. What is this? My handbag. Who is speaking now? That claim that this is your handbag. Who is speaking? Meaning this handbag belongs to you, Queen. Yes. But it's a physical handbag. Do you have many of these in the market that women ignorantly buy? Yes, now possess them with this. You possess them. What makes your own handbags different from the normal handbags in the market? What is the difference? Unique now. Hey, we are too much. You if are you see us, we know now. Tell them, ah! Jesus Christ. How do you mean? Explain. <sighs> You said your own is unique. Yes. What makes your own because unique? I'm the queen. See, yes. Ah! You claim that this is your bag. Why are you no longer touching it? Cowardice, cowardice, cowardice! You say, mm -hmm. Open it. Mm -hmm. Give her the bag. Mm -hmm. Collect the bag. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, now collect the bag. Let's see the cowardice. Where are the cowardice? This is only one, we can only see one here. Mm -hmm. But we said cowards. Yes. Come back inside home. Go, go, go. Hey! You say it's not my thing, you get cowards, you arrange them and put it on your waist. We use it as fashion. Ah. Hey, the devil Jesus Christ! Why did you allow her to bring such items to the presence of God, the city of Jesus International Ministry? What is your intention? Anywhere she's going. Mm -hmm. So you allow that cowry to be in her bag so you can use the cowry as a monetary mirror. And spirit to monitor mm -hmm. her spiritual movement okay. and physical movement. You are too much. Why did you Aye. say that? You are too much. How do you know? I say, how do you know? God is all knowing. How do you know? And His spirit lives in us. Okay. You are too much. <laughs> I have warned you. You know. Nobody wants anointed servants of God. Mm -hmm. There is no spiritual right given to any. Being to one, anyone who is anointed by God. Now, how many people all around the world have you deceived to get items like this, even many, in the market? Many, many, many. And through that, many, monitor them and destroy them. Many. Wow. 
wear it on my neck. Mm-hmm. On their wrist, mm-hmm. on their waist. Mm-hmm. Now they, on their arm. All day, they will be there. I'm a big girl. 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 I'm a little big. Before what? No, now. I'm a big girl. Big girl. Daniel fasted for 21 days. And his prayers that were hindered were automatically answered. This lady claimed that she fasted for 21 days and appeared and gave her courage yes. even to block her vision. Yes, I did. That. Why is her own opposite to that of Daniel? Because she belongs to us. How many people have you deceived to fast for 21 days? Even some, 40 days. Some fast for 100 days. You see them fasting from morning to evening. They will eat. They will continue again the next day. Some fast for 40 days like that. Some fast for 21 days like that. And some fast for 100 days like that. What you use to give you access to people that are even praying and fasting to enter them, stop their prayers from being answered, and destroy everything about them? Say now! Mention the saints, no, mm-hmm. using to possess them. Mention okay. the names one by one. Anger. Don't hide anyone. Don't hide anyone. Anger. Fornication. Addicted. Being addicted to what? Uh, and you have written drinks. I was mm-hmm. pressing their phone. Facebook. Oh, oh. What's up? King of King. All of them. Oh, pressing their phones. <laughs> can't see right. Mm-hmm. There are so many children, even you see them pressing their phone. Mm. They say they're playing game. Parents will say, leave them they're alone. Possess, oh. huh? They're possessed. They're possessed. Oh. What if their parents say, no, they are kids. If you remove this phone from their hands mm. or this toy from their hands, they will be crying. That, I just want them not to cry. Their parents are possessed also. Their parents, they are possessed. By? Marrying kingdom. They are agent of darkness. If someone is born of the spirit of God, Mm-hmm. and living a holy life mm-hmm. and a person goes to market or anywhere mm-hmm. they sell items like this mm-hmm. to buy them mm-hmm. will such person also be possessed by you no. queen of the modern world Each person have the mark of Christ what makes someone a genuine born again someone who is born of the spirit of God what are the qualities what lifestyle does the person live? Holy life. Holy life. Holy life. <laughs> there are so many women that used to fight just because their husbands have not bought them handbags that look so unique. Some special attachments that look so unique. Mm-hmm. Some kind of shoes or even cars mm-hmm. that look so attractive and unique. Mm-hmm. What do you know about things like this? Who is pushing them to quarrel with their husband? And some even divorce and separate. Because of that. We possess them now. They belong to us. Ah, they are possessed by the marine agents. Yes. Why are you always nagging with your husband? Yes. I want to make my hair. Mm-hmm. I want to make my hair. Mm, tell them. They are here. You can look them. See them. <laughs> Check them. Where are they? You are hiding. All of you are hiding your face. There are many. You don't want to have to point you. <laughs> they are what? They are here. Hey, my husband, I want a bone slide. I want a handbag. A unique handbag. I want a, my nails. I want to do my nails. Useless Look at the nails this one put on. Even this lady you are talking about, that you are living in her body. Mm-hmm. Look at the nails she put on. Mm-hmm. What are they for? Mm-hmm. See the cortex. Mm-hmm. See the nails. Mm-hmm. What are they for? Mm-hmm. For who? Mm-hmm. For us. Mm-hmm. Us. I want to look good. I want to look good. I want to look good. <laughs> if that woman see me, you know that my husband is rich. <laughs> you're preaching. You are saying that you, that, that you do what? That you do what? Have you turned to Christopher? Uh, yes. Are you not saying people should repent? Mm-hmm. Why? But they are your people. Mm-mm. Let them go. I what don't want them anymore. Fire is too much. I will fight to Turn the name of Jesus Christ. You have no spiritual strength to confront the grace of God here. Now say more things. They say they want to fix their nails. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Feel this one. Uh, which one? I wish. I want to look good. Uh-huh. I want to look good. Uh-huh. I want to look good. I want to look good. 
useless woman. What about men that look for people like that? They will abandon their wives at home and go after ladies with that kind of appearances. Women with such kind of hairs, nails, buy for them. Eyelashes. They, they do they them. used to do what? Buy for their those thai chic now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They call it what? Thai chic. Thai chic. Is that name coming from the kingdom of God or the kingdom That's of God? That yes. is. Meaning you are the inventor of the name Sai Chick. Yes. You marine spirit. Yes. From the ocean. Which ocean? Huh? All of them. Every ocean. Mm -hmm. We are there. You mentioned some. Yeah. Mention all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mississippi, Indian, Pacific, Atlantic, Blue Seas. We are there. 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 Mm. Many of, of you come late to church. Not because you want to make up. They will be hurrying you. Let's go. Say, wait. I'm coming. They will be outside. Some people will find their car. You see them waiting for you. Some will praise their horn. Go, go. I'm coming. I'm coming. Because you are putting on items that belong to the kingdoms of that. You will come with your attachment, but you don't come with a repentant spirit. Repentant attachment. You come with your fingernails, but you don't come with your Bible and writing material. You see the way you hold, you cannot even hold pen because the nails are too long. You can't hold anything. You cannot cook at home because the nails are too long. That's why when you try to cook, you discover that the thing is not easy for you. Say, you must get me a mat. You must get me a mat. <laughs> and before you know it, you will now get another agent of darkness that will help you to break your marriage. We will just pretend uh -huh. as we are often. Uh -huh. We don't we don't have anybody that can help us. Uh -huh. Please, can you take us as a maid uh -huh. when we enter? We will deal with you. What are those things you normally do to deal with people? Destruction. Mention them. Give mm. example. We start committing fornication with the man in the house. So. Uh -uh. Will the wife catch the, this kind of evil act? Silence them. You do, do not do anything. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. We have seen women that finally caught their husband mm -hmm. and they remain paralyzed. Mm -hmm. huh? you kill you, you die. You say you pretend they, like a maid yeah, as if you are not fine. Yeah, they you say, I need help. help. Can you take nails. me into your house? My nails, they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. I have my nails. Mm -hmm. See my nails. I can't touch water. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. I can't cook. Mm -hmm. I want maid. Who brings maid? Who pretend though? Mm -hmm. How do you normally pretend? Does it mean that the person will be like, okay? Angel. Oh, madam, please help us. I will do everything you ask me to do. Please, you know, I don't have mother, I don't have father. We don't have money, please help us. We have mission. Mm. What mission? Destruction now. Hey, mission guys, we will scatter the family. What if the man is extremely rich and the lady is extremely rich, healthy, and buoyant in all areas? What will be happening to them? Financially, physically, we are the cause of divorce. You that are extremely lazy, you cannot even wash your own clothes, and you're a woman. Even for you to wake up in the morning has become a, a case. Your husband has spoken and spoken and is getting fed up. You cannot wake up very early. Tell them that here. You cannot prepare dishes. Timely. Mm -hmm. You wait for your own convenient time. That is when you wake up. Even if you prepare, you say, can I eat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> man, eh? You finally push the man outside to start living a life of adultery. And you'll be the one to start campaigning, parading the news everywhere. My husband is now unfaithful. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Tell them. <laughs> My husband is sitting on me. Tell them. You cannot sweep, you cannot clean anywhere. You cannot even wash your husband's clothes. No, your children's clothes. 
He will say, you two, you are a man. Come and take care of the house. Come and sweep. Don't you have hands? You should cook as well now. If I do my part, you should do your part. We are one. Come and cook. If I cook this morning, you should cook in the evening. And a woman. You're a woman at home and the whole home is smelling. Full of dirtiness and dirty odor. And you want your husband to love you. That alone can kill the affection in a marriage. Who used to make women to be extremely lazy, unwilling to do anything at home, domestic works? We are there. <laughs> From our kingdom. What if they say they have received one title in the church? Mm. Some of them will say, I'm this, I'm that. Hey, don't go that side. I'm an usher. <laughs> I'm a chorister. I'm the chief director of music. I have no time. I have to go for this and that. I don't have time to take care of anything. What do you have to say about such excuses? Are they from God or from Satan? First of all, let me start from the title. Hmm. Bring one million mm -hmm. so we can give you the title. So you will buy title with money? Yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Not with mm -hmm. holy character. Nothing. Not with godly character. Nothing. But with money? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will have position in the front seat. They will be pretending holy. Holy, 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 holy. People will be respecting them because of money. People respect them because in the church. Of money. Because of what? Money. Money. Now ask yourself, why do you money. always look for people that testify? Especially people that say, I am an owner of a company. Or I am from another country. Or I'm a rich man. Immediately, people finish sharing their testimony. You don't want that to collect their testimony. You force yourself to them. Why do you always do that? It's not because you worship money. And when you are being confronted that this kind of acts, I'm not going to begin to take it. and begin to hate minister of God. The workers mm -hmm. that fought you or reported you. They, they don't want us to associate with people. Mm -hmm. I will never believe that we were simply led by evil spirits to do it. Church is a place of salvation. And that salvation is a personal issue. You come, you have an encounter with God, and you go with the encounter to maintain it. Church is not a place of worldly connections. A place of the co connecting time. Give me your number. Give me this. I am poor. Help me. If you are poor and you come to the house of God, it is the duty of God to bless you. If you now force yourself on people, you have mapped out your own strategy, way that you want to receive that blessing, and you will be abandoned by God. <laughs> if you can do it alone, why involve God? If you cannot leave it for God, why are you calling his name? The people that received charitable works here did not beg for it. Don't follow me again. God himself is brother of truth. Many of you have become beggars in the house of God. You are just here because you want to see who is rich here so you can collect the number. When any worker confronts you <coughs> and say, What are you doing? You say, A person is wicked. And you begin to say, I pray God, flood these people out of this place. Your dangerous prayer points can never be answered by God. Because God is a just God. His works must be done. If you are not willing to do his work, someone is available. In the Bible, someone said, Yeah, I am. Use me. These people are here to work for God. And that is why they are standing against all satanic activities here. You are hearing the confession yourself. 
How many of them have you possessed like that? Many, many of them. You see, married men, one day, leave this girl alone. After, we call in, hello, where will you come and meet me? Useless. One day, one day, what is married men here? I want to destroy them. I don't want to see it. You said you want to destroy them. How? How? They are coming after her now. They are doing what? They are coming after her. Try your crown, your crown. Try the mind, the heart. Try. You that used to pick people. When they close now, you have people you are looking for. You have looked around and said, this kind of gear, I want to pick her. You say, where are you going? Enter, enter. <laughs> and when you see an old woman or an old man that really needs help, you ignore. You say, my car is not, is full. Or I don't pick anybody with my car. But when you see a girl that your I go after, you stop and open door. And you collect the number. And you call yourself a child of God or a Christian. When we say don't collect people's number, you just think we are just saying it. Or you think maybe the ministry is self-centered. Are you not seeing the impact now? Fire! Anytime they collect that number, what name do they normally save the number with? The other one. He said, send my number with the angel Michael. <laughs> hey! Huh? Uh, you saved your number with I what? I should save his number, angel Michael. Okay, hey. he gave you his own number mm. and said you should save uh, his own number. Angel Michael. Mm. Is he really angel uh, Michael? No, no. Uh. <laughs> Did you really save that number with angel Michael? Yes, now. Many is in the phone now. I was even calling you, but the girl is not giving her and giving attention. Not at all. Let's go. Let me come and pick you now. When you are close for the work, let me come and pick you. Pick you to yeah, pick though. this lady to let do what to tell. I want to see you. Yeah, baby girl. Fine girl. Baby girl. The girl say no. Okay. I don't want to. I've repented from my sin. I can do it again. I've repented. I'm a repented soul. You that are looking for people that are delivered here so you can have their contacts. Mm. Are you not mm. seeing the dangerous trap mm. you have set for your soul? Mm. If this girl had mm. listened mm. to the request of the man mm. and possibly mm. had sexual intercourse with the man, what kind of sickness mm. would the man have? Mm. What would have happened to the man? Mm. Mm. We are home breaker. You are what? Home breaker. Oh. Hey. First of all, we break the home. Meaning the marriage Jesus. will be what? The marriage will be destroyed. Destroyed. How many times destroyed. did you come for counseling in a place like After counseling, you go secretly and live lives of sin. You say, my wife is behaving yeah. like yeah. this. My husband is behaving like this. Whereas you're the one. I hope you're seeing yourself. You must watch the screen and see the bangles. Those items that were removed from her initially when the prayer started. That's what you're watching. Look at them. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Any man I see this lady used to say, Give me this bango, I love it. Did Christopher or you say the same thing? Give me. I love you. I love you, my girl. Uh -huh. I love you, my girl. Uh -huh. And the lady will do what? Ah! Take it. <laughs> from where? Marine Ocean. Marine Kingdom. Oh. Kingdom of Darkness. What used to happen to those men, their health, spiritual lives, their career, finances, and everything? Their marriages. Mm -hmm. The marriages will crash, business will collapse. Then they will come to us and seek for fame, for money. We we'll give them money. Mm -hmm. Give them money, loyalty, fame. Mm -hmm. Yes. The man will say, mm -hmm. I've come back again. I've 
I've come back again. Mm -hmm. I've come back again. Meaning, you give them money through mm -hmm. what means? Rituals, mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. popularity, fame. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will be claiming big boys in the town, big men. I'm mean, a politician. I want power. I want power. Who we'll gives them power? Hey! I've landed there. Hey! I'm now a big boy of the town. We'll be carrying girls up and down. Committing what type of sin? Ah, sin of fornication. You that are no longer living in your house, <laughs> hotels, various classes of hotels have become your home. You don't even go back home. You have various girls, you are booked in various hotels. Spend day and night there. Just because you claim you have money. Money that is coming from the kingdom of darkness. If such people leave this physical world, where would they spend their eternity? Hey. Mm -hmm. Classy ladies. Mm -hmm. Classy. Classy. Riding cars. Cars. This girl. I like before. Ah. What will you tell yourself now? What are you saying to yourself? And what will you tell your friends? You have seen the cause of business failure, marital challenges you are facing. You have seen everything by yourself. What life do you want to start living now? It is all up to you. There are two sides to life. Hey. You smile and someone smiles. It's not the same thing. You know the kingdom you belong to. You cannot force me to belong to the same kingdom you belong to. When we move, we move with the power of God. When we talk, we talk with the power of God. When we cancel, we cancel people with the power of God. When we look at people, we look at people with the power of God. We don't give a breathing space. That is why when you are coming to us, you must be spiritually matured. There are sometimes you just greet shalom. To you, you are greeting shalom. But the spirit behind your greeting is not a spirit that should be welcomed. Or responded to. Then you see the minister of God keeping quiet. Or even walking away without responding. Then you say the man is rude. You greet him, he does not answer. He has no respect. But you don't know the spirit behind your own actions. You need to come to the level of spiritual maturity. So you can discern and understand the way things go. You see other people who call out the mango. And they will find themselves swimming in the oceans, find themselves being initiated. But this bangle is collected now, and that evil connection is completely destroyed. Amen. Amen. And the minister of God here will never find himself in that marine world. Mm -hmm. We're trying you now. How? We'll get you. We'll set you up. Ah. Can you set God up? Yes or no? I don't know. You see me? Mm -hmm. I'll come by myself. Yes. You do what? You small boy. I'll come. Try to the ah. Jesus Christ. I'll come. How do you plan to come? I'll come. In what form? I'll come. Dress properly. I'll mm -hmm. come and sit. I'll mm -hmm. come. As a woman. A oh, godly woman. Mm -hmm. I'll sit. When you start praying. Come. In what form will you appear? Any form you want to. You see that day? We only want what God wants. Not what is set up by mm -hmm. you in the evil kingdoms. Ah. You will know whether you will still come. The Bible says that this is not the moment of ignorance. Acts chapter 17 Verses 29 to 30. Say the days of ignorance are over. Are you not aware of that? Meaning you have broken and violated spiritual rule. And you know what happens? 
if you go beyond your boundary, you will not live to tell the story. And that will happen to all of you in the kingdoms of darkness. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire. Oh, fight oh. Check whether you still have any strength to fight. Mm -hmm. I have. Hmm? I have now. Now check. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The weakest strength has been taken. Turn the rivers in the oceans. Turn in the moon. I send fire to the blue sea, to the sun, to Panther in the sun, Leviathan, Queen of the Coast, Mediterranean Sea. River Niger. Do you see her power? Check. I want to go. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you see her power? Don't touch. Don't go there. No. Ah! Fire the back. Hey. The back. Mm. And I send fire to the wicked beads, the spiritual ones mm -hmm. that are not revealed. Mm -hmm. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Fire! I command the old heart she has to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit and I command her to receive a new heart from God. Amen. Amen. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. They say the heart you cannot manipulate. I command the evil voices to be silenced and destroyed. Amen. She is loosed. Amen. Say the name of Jesus Christ. Answer me. Do you still have power? Huh? I salute you, sir. Why did you say that? What? Ah! Say the name of Jesus Christ. Who is in me that is too much? Greater than all of you in hell. Fire! I pull the crowns, monitoring eyes and mirrors. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command them to be destroyed. Fire! Christ, pull out all the bangles that are invisible. All of them. Fire! The rings, one by one. Christ. 
I send fire to your throne in a marine world. Your base. Say the name of Jesus Christ, Indian Ocean, Bermuda Triangle, Pacific Ocean. I'm looking for my trouble. Atlantic Ocean. Don't go there. <laughs> I send fire to your evil troubles and I command all of them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire! I send fire to the invisible seas, oceans and rivers, invisible streams and cities of sins and I command all of them to be dried up and consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! I want to go. I want to go. Fire! I want to go. No one will accept you. Fire! What is happening to your evil cowardice? Even the one at home and the one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is happening to the wicked power there? Fire! 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 I command all of them to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Fire! You have lost your spiritual connection. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Hey. Those men that got themselves initiated just because they received the bangles. I command them to receive deliverance. Amen. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Fire! Fire! Your request is not granted. I will never. Jesus Christ, will you still set Christopher Oji up, come to the front seat, and sit like a woman? Yes or no? No. Why did you suddenly change your mind? This problem. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to the church auditorium, and I stand against all satanic seats. Reservation of the evil spirits, positions that are targeted by evil spirits to sit, stand, and operate. And I command the fire of the Spirit of God to destroy anything that is not of God. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. No seat will be reserved for evil spirits. Amen. Forever. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. <coughs> hey. I don't have power. Lose my power. Hey. What caused you to lose your power? Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire to her heart, her womb, her legs, her toes. Her knees, her waist, her womb, the back, the face, Aye. the face. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command your satanic veil to be removed and consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go now. Let me go. Fire! Let me go. 
You cannot use the air because the water has been dried up. You can't use the, <laughs> the ground. You can't use the blue sea. You yeah? How do you know my tight is sound? You wanted to do what? To fly? Yeah. <laughs> now try it, can you? Mm -hmm. Check mm -hmm. whether you can. Mm -hmm. Fly in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. I sell fire to the air. Mm. The F. All visible and invisible creatures. I sell fire to the darkness and to the light. Hey. <clears throat> I send fire to the north, south, east, and west. And I send fire to every human being. Where do you want me to go? Are you tell me now. Hmm? Where are you supposed to be? That is hell. Okay, tell me. Where you'll be destroyed mm -hmm. forever. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire! Fire! You cannot use anywhere to move. Uh -huh. Not even the wall. It's okay for me here. Ah! Fire! Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Not living and non-living things will ever accept you. <laughs> Fire! Fire! No, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Ah, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to open her spiritual eyes again? Fire! Jesus Christ! No! Fire the eyes! Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the freedom Jesus. and for destroying the wind of oceans and seas forever. Amen. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Aye. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Fire! 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 The mighty name of Jesus Christ! The evil powers are totally destroyed and the wind is permanently consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's name!
Look at yourself about this. I don't know, I just saw my pan bag and my beat and cowries. What are all these items? What were they for? For handbag, I bought it in the market. Mm -hmm. For beat for my grandma. For cowries, I don't know how it gets to me. I was doing uh, 21 days prayer and fasting. So Saturday was the end uh, of the prayers. So in the midnight, I was praying to close my prayers. So after praying, my phone rang. I just opened it because as my work, they created me as such that people, the customer will be calling me as a customer care line. I'll be attending to their issues. So I thought that this customer that called me, I picked the phone, I opened it, it was first message. The message was there, uh, you just noticed just that one of my maid is sick, just like that. I just shout Jesus, I deleted it immediately. So I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I say, God, have mercy on me, show me mercy, have mercy on me. So after praying, I sleep. So in my sleep, I saw myself, my hand like this. I just saw four cowries on my head. And I said, ah, what is all these things? So I said, I, was, I started praying. After praying, I didn't see it again. So I now opened my pillow. I saw one under my pillow. Ah, ah, then I said, you should go. Go and search your handbags. I don't know. I just go to this handbag first. I saw one. The other handbag, I saw one. The other handbag, I saw one. Pillow. One is under the tray. It's under the tray of my bags. The other handbag is not there. So I don't know. I started praying. So when I pray after I checked, I didn't see it again. I didn't see the cow with the game. So I'm surprised to see it today inside my hand. Are you saying that it was the prayer in the power of the Holy Spirit that manifested what the enemy used to be monitoring your life? Yeah, that's what I feel because maybe you now do it so that I will backslide. I will believe that my prayer has not been answered. That is what I feel. That what happened. What happened to you during the prayers? I don't know. I don't know. Man what were the first things that we are taking away from you? I don't know. When you came to me, I noticed that you touched my hand. That is where I got myself. So are there any other things? I don't know. Were you aware that you were putting beads? You were putting these items on your hand? These beads? Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh? Were you aware that it was they were instantly removed when the prayer started? No. When the man of God started praying for you? No. What do you think that these beads signifies? Why were you putting them on? Um, I observe that uh, anytime I put the bead, men are approaching. They are coming. Even in the office, customer will come. Hey, find a, I like your bead. I'll now say, do you like it? The person will say yes. I'll give them the bead. It's as many as. How many people have you given such beads to? How do you normally replace them? The one you've given out? It's me. Where do you normally get them from? And how do you normally the replace them? Had. Were you aware that these beads were given to you by the queen of the coast? So you can use that to seduce men and initiate them into the kingdom of darkness. I don't know, just that based on my work, you know, they always start telling us to be look good and they, based on my table, they, all this management, they like you to be attractive, to be charming or whatever, you understand? So any day you do not dress well or make up or do wear all these attractive things, they will send you a memo. Why do you not make up? Why do you not dress? You know, I don't know. Maybe Satan is using them to possess people there at the customer service. So I don't know honestly. But it's my grandma that gave me the aid. But you were delivered before and you were pretty aware that you were not supposed to be connected to anything that is not given to you by the Spirit of God. Why would you go back to collect things like this? Knowing fully well 
where they are coming from. Why? Um, honestly, I can't tell, man of God. I can't tell how I go back to using all these ornaments or whatever before I stopped it. I can't tell, can't give the account how I go back to start wearing the, those ornaments again. What is your decision now? Do you want to continue to put on things like this, carry things like this? The unclean spirit confirmed that this bag was made and imported from the kingdom of God. How did you get the bag? Yes, through a, a female customer selling a handbag. So the woman came to our office and then gave me this bag, said that this is for me. I bought it from her. The queen of the coast claimed that they used you to be seducing married men. And someone used to ask you to enter their vehicles. So men, married men, to be saying, enter my vehicle. And they have been asking you for your personal number. And one gave you his own number and said you should save it with the name Angel Michael. What do you have to say? It's true, sir. Um, I don't know. After service, I'm... I'm just from the church, I'll just go straight to my house. So, but I observe that at times I'm going, they will start, stop. Which people? Married men say I should enter. For my mind, I don't want to enter because I'm trying to avoid the same. Maybe Pepsi will be start talking, you know, some negative words. So, I'm trying to avoid all these things. So, from my mind, I don't, I would not like to enter. But I now have a mind that you don't have that mind of talking all these negative things. So I will enter. So but when I will enter, the person will start, you know, talking to me. I like you. I like you. This girl. I'll be telling the person, ah, for my mind, though, I'll be saying, ah. So maybe after when the person will drop me to my house, they will now ask me for my phone number. Out of free mind, I will give them my phone number. Later, they will start calling me. Can you come? Come over. Let's share one place. You know. I say no. I beg. I just deliver from all this nonsense. I don't want to start living this life again. I don't want. So the other one, yeah, that one and Joe Michael. So man, just here down here. He stopped me, he said I should enter, I enter. So you know ah, started touching me. Ha. Huh. So oh God, please, I'm just coming back from church. Please, please. So after the man dropped me and said I should give him my phone number. I gave him my phone number. He gave me, he collected my phone and put his phone number. I said I should save it with Angel Michael. I said, okay. I save it with Angel Michael. So, the days on Monday, on Tuesday, we went to work. On oh, Monday, on Monday, start from. I was in my house. I was calling me, you know, I want to come and pick me. So, we can go outside, you know, do that, do that. I said, Oga, for what? Why can't you face your wife? Oga, please. Have mercy on me. I don't want to involve myself in all this. Thing. But man say, forget about all these things. So what I will be in the office will be calling me when I will be present for the day. Let me come and pick you up so we can go somewhere and share ourselves. So at the end of the, the man started disturbing me. So I gave the man one. Say I'm setting you as my father because your age is the age of my father before he died. Please don't call me. Just if you want to. You just know that if you like me, just take me as your own daughter. Don't tell me all these things. Okay, what will I learn from you? I now call the man, but I now talk to the man and vice versa since the person that day. I don't know his real name, just he said I should save his number. It's Angel Michael. I don't know his name. Because I'm not interested to know his real name. Alright, what is your decision now? What do you want to do with these items? I don't want to use them again, man of God. Hmm? I don't want to use them again. I will never use them again. I will never. And what life do you want to start living? I want to start living a godly life. A life that will please God. I would like to bring myself fully to serve God wholeheartedly. Because God have a gift from God. I want to start using that gift to work for God. What gift do you have? God give me a, I have a gift of vision. Right from when I was, since I was childhood. I have the gift. 
Yeah. What message do you have for married men? Yeah. What message do you have for the youth okay. and for people in the world that also go after charming items without finding out their souls? Okay, from the youth, the message I have for youth is that don't be greedy because the word of God said the beginning of the adult, uh, adult is the fear of God. Yes, fear God. Do what pleases God. Avoid sin. Be for God and work for God. For the married man, God give you a wife to be together. And the Bible said, let your breast of your wife satisfy you. So why are you going outside and look outside? Nothing is there. Be with your wife together. Build the family with your wife. That is my advice. What do you believe that exposed the hidden calories? The calories you said that you never put in your own bag. Manifested it physically, even to the people to see physically like this. As you are seeing it now. What manifested this thing and exposed what Satan hides in your back? I feel it's the power of God that uh, this ministry that exposed the works of the devil that put these calories inside my handbag. And what do you think the power of God that exposed this invisible cow and made it visible and delivered you from the negative powers that are attached to them has done to you? I believe I'm totally free. The breakthrough has come. I'm free. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. Thank Jesus for delivering me. Thank Jesus for answering my secret prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. Those evil powers that were in these handbags from the marine kingdom are totally destroyed. Mm -hmm. So now this is just ordinary bank without any marine connection. Mm -hmm. So if you are to carry this bag, you have to be in an attitude of prayer all the time, calling the name Jesus and the blood of Jesus in your heart, giving thanks to God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And the powers of darkness will never, never have any spiritual connection with you. You can take your bag by faith and nothing will happen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are a born champion, a born winner, a born overcomer. You must have the right attitude to celebrate as a born champion. If you are having negative attitudes, that can breed racism, tribalism, discrimination, hatred, unhealthy rivalry, to the savior of your soul, the king of kings, the lord of lords. Hosanna to his glorious name. Keep clapping for him. 
He deserves the glory. Keep clapping for him. He deserves the praises. of God Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and I command your life to be driven by the king of glory Jesus Christ forever I command the gate of your life to open I command the gate of your soul to open. I can see Jesus entering into your soul, into your spirit, and into your body forever. Right now, receive the grace. Receive! Receive! I stand against all spirits of sexual immorality, anger, rebellion, blasphemy, disobedience, anger, murder, lies, deceit, Corruption, hardship, disgrace, shame, and death. Anywhere they are operating against your life, I command your life to receive deliverance. Receive deliverance. Receive deliverance. Receive! Receive! The tied donkey was untied and was ridden by Jesus Christ. Right now, I command everything that is used by Satan To tie your relationship and fellowship with God. 
to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I can see that happening. You spirit of lies. Addictions. Fornication. Fornication. Adultery. Adultery. Masturbation. Pornography. Pornography. Unforgiveness. Blasphemy. Holy Ghost fire. 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 Send fire to them. Send fire to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Send fire to them. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not a temple of sickness, temple of fornication, temple of adultery, temple of lust. Your spirit of immorality, sexual immorality, your spirit of immorality, lust, anger, drunkenness, bitterness, robbery, robbery, kidnapping, kidnapping, terrorism, terrorism, anywhere you are, Holy Ghost fire, say fire, say fire, Holy Ghost fire, say fire, turn the name of Jesus Christ, send fire to them, in the name of Jesus Christ, send fire to all of them, the donkey was tied in a particular spot without any spiritual movement. Whatever that has tied down your finances, every spirit of joblessness, every spirit of joblessness, debts, debts, failure, failure, near success syndrome, where are you? Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Tear. 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 Send fire to all of them. Lose your life from all satanic bondages. Lose your spirit from nightmares, evil attacks, delay. Lose your spirit. Jesus Christ sent his two disciples to untie the tired donkey. And the donkey was loosed. He rode on the donkeys. He should ride your life. All evil spirits that have been riding your life, your marriage, your career, your destiny, your community, your village, your clan, your idols, your idols, your idols, your idols, Holy Ghost fire, tear, 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 send fire to them. They cannot write your life anymore. This appointment cannot write your life anymore. Hatred cannot ride your life anymore. Poverty cannot ride your life anymore. Addictions cannot ride your life anymore. Send fire to them and set your spirit free from them. Jesus told the disciples, if anyone asks you, tell them that the Lord's need them. If anyone asks you, why are you untying the tied donkey and the court? Tell them that the Lord need them. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are his dwelling place. A place of his glory. He should ride your life. Jesus Christ should ride your life. Not Satan. Send fire to them. 
Sell fire to them. Sell fire to them. Lose your destiny from hardship. Lose your destiny from hardship. Lose your destiny from pain. Remember that Jesus Christ did not go to untie the tied donkey. He sent his disciples. He is sending you to lose yourself today. He is sending you to lose your destiny from hardship today. Lose yourself. Lose your business from failure, hardship, delay. Lose your contracts from curses, from charms, from charms, all satanic charms, whether buried or thrown into the sea or any water that are working against your life, your marriage, your marriage, all spiritual padlocks, physical padlocks, occultic padlocks that are used by evil spirits and their agents to padlock your destiny, your marriage, your glory, your blessings, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, 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 destroy all of them. Destroy all of them. Your marriage cannot be tied. Destroy all of them. Your future cannot be tied. The fruit of your womb cannot be tied. Make sure that you are praying. The disciples were responsible. They were the one who went. And they were the one that untied everything. Make sure you're praying for yourself and for people in your family. Lose your blessings. Lose your blessings. Anywhere your blessings are tied and hidden from you, let them be loosed. Let them be loosed. Blessings are to seek and find you. Not you looking for the blessings. Anywhere they are hidden from you. Any village, any community, either in the visible or in the invisible world, that your glory, your blessings, your breakthroughs are hidden. Let there be deliverance. Holy Ghost fire. 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 Same fire to them. They cannot tie your womb. They cannot fill your womb with fibroids. Infection. They cannot fill your blood, contaminate your blood with HIV AIDS. Whatever is being used by evil spirits to shorten your life, to shorten your destiny, to tie down your life. Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire. 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 Send fire to them. Remember the disciples did not wait for Jesus Christ. To be the one. To untie the tired donkey. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Prayer is the key to lose and to bind. What is it that is bound in your life by evil spirits? These are the things you are here to lose and set yourself free from. 
What is it that is tied by Satan in your business? These are the things you are here to lose yourself from so that your life can move forward. You cannot be stagnant like a tied donkey. You cannot be in a place of poverty, place of want, place of shame. You have to move closer to Jesus, closer to your blessings, closer to your glory, closer to your success. Your spirit of hardship, your spirit of hardship, all evil powers that are operating on social media handles, Holy Ghost fire, tear, 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 tear. Send fire to all of them and begin to enjoy your blessings. Send fire to all of them and begin to enjoy your blessings. Enjoy your blessings. You are created to enjoy your blessings. You are created to enjoy the blessings of God upon your life. Make sure that you are praying. Let your soul, spirit and body feel the presence of Jesus and say Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ comes to save and not to afflict people. Jesus Christ comes to make people holy and not to make them immoral. Your spirit of immorality. Your spirit of antichrist. Your spirit of death. Destruction. Rebellion. Anger, addiction, addiction, and blasphemy. Holy Ghost fire. Tear, 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 tear. Send fire to them. If you are standing and watching without praying, you are like the donkey that is tired spiritually. Let the captives make haste for their deliverance. You must be willing to be set free before that freedom will come. Your spirit must be aggressive. Your spirit must be angry. Your spirit must rise up in anger against all evil spirits that are oppressing your life, your health, your marriage. You ancient idols, ancient idols, witches and wizards, witches and wizards, witches and wizards, your spirit of rebellion, your spirit of rebellion, evil spirits from the occult world, Holy Ghost fire. Say fire, say fire, tear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tear, 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 tear. Send fire to them. These are the evil spirits that are sponsoring blasphemers because they know that the ministry is destroying all of them. These are the evil spirits that all the blasphemers are possessing. And that is why they are not comfortable because the ministry is destroying these evil spirits. Say fire to all of them. Say fire to all of them. Say fire to all of them. You ancestral spirits, spirit of death, spirit of death, accidents, 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 plane crash. Plane crash! Plane crash! Holy Ghost fire! 
Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire. 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 Same fire to all of them. We are winning and they are losing. Your womb will no longer be tied. Your blessings will no longer be tied. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. Lose everything that is tied down by evil spirits. Lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them. Lose them. All things that are tied by evil spirits. Let Jesus Christ write your life. Let Jesus Christ write your life. Not evil spirits. Not pain. Not sickness. Not disease. Not barrenness. Not shame. Not addiction. Not disappointment. Not hatred. Not hatred. Not gossip. Not blasphemy. Let Jesus Christ ride your life. Open up for him. Let him be the one riding your own life. He rode on the donkey. He should ride your life. He should be exalted in your life. He should be glorified in your life. Sickness has no place in you. Sickness is not wanted. Disease is not wanted. Pain is not wanted. You cannot be looking for good health. Until your good health and let good health seek and find you. If your good health is tied somewhere, go there by faith in Christ Jesus and untie your good health. Let your good health seek and find you. You are created to be healthy. You are created to be prosperous. You are created to be successful. You are created to be generous and kind. You are created to serve Jesus and not evil spirits. Make sure you are losing your spiritual life and setting yourself free from nightmares, evil attacks, wet dreams. Anything you lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven. And anything you tie here on earth will be tied in heaven. This is the season to recover everything that belongs to you. Jesus said to the two disciples, Go to the village, you will see a donkey and cords that are tied there. Untie them and bring them here. This is the season to recover everything. Everything you have lost. This is the season and the very week for you to recover everything that is hidden from you. By faith, untie them and bring them closer to yourself. Untie them and bring them closer to your family. Bring unity. Bring love. Bring joy. Understanding. Faithfulness. Hope. And the like. Closer to your family. Bring peace. Closer to your heart. Not far from you. Bring understanding. Closer to your life and family. Not misunderstanding. Jesus Christ was honored and glorified. Everybody bowed down. 
and shouted Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. If he is your Lord, then let everything that you have lost in life be revealed. Let them seek and find you. Let him alone in your life be glorified. Right now, give thanks to God. Give thanks to him for recovering everything you have lost. Those who believe are joyfully giving thanks to God. Those who believe by faith are joyfully celebrating. Those who believe are joyfully saying Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus Christ's name we have celebrated. Be in an attitude of prayers as we attend to the sick ones. They cannot celebrate the Palm Sunday with us in sickness. So be in an attitude of prayers as we attend to them. In Jesus Christ's name. You're free in Jesus Christ's name. You're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank You're you, free Jesus. in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. You're free. Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are free in Jesus Christ's name. You're free in Jesus Christ's name. You're free, sir. Jesus Christ's name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks to God. Turn with me to the book of 
Matthew chapter 21. The book of Matthew chapter 21. We are going to listen to today's teaching titled Who is riding your life? Ask your neighbor, say neighbor. Who is riding your life? Let us find out as we read the book of Matthew chapter 21 and also the book of Galatians chapter 5. Let's quickly read. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. What did he prophetically describe? He told the two disciples that they were going to find a donkey and a colt. Imagine someone telling you what would happen in a few moments. I read again. Go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tired and a cord with her. Lose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. Who was to ride on the donkey? And on the court. Say it louder. Say it louder. Ask your neighbor. Neighbor. Who is riding. Your life. All these was done. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet saying. Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a cot, the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. If Jesus were in this generation and happens to give people this kind of instruction, the first question they would ask Jesus is this. What if we get there and the owner decided to arrest us? You are sending us to go and steal. You are sending us to go and do what? To go and steal. If we get there and the owner decided to arrest us, one, there is no receipt to show that you paid for this donkey. Two, you did not send any lawyer that was stand in case there is any issue. Three, you did not choose to go yourself nor even send any of your relatives. You spared your own family members because we can see them here. You did not send them. You spared your own family members. You also spared your own integrity and yourself. And you are sending us, meaning we and our family should go and perish. What a wicked master you are. 
Have you ever been sent any message by the Spirit of Jesus Christ to do something that you never did before? How did you respond? The disciples said to themselves, Yes, Lord, we know the one who is riding our very lives. You are the one who is riding our lives. We've got no spiritual right to question you. How many times did Jesus Christ tell you to stop blaspheming? And you are still blaspheming. To stop gossiping. And you are still gossiping. To stop fornicating. And you are still fornicating. And even seeing other people. As what? Fornicators. How many times? Jesus Christ is the word of God. Speaking to your heart. Jesus Christ is the truth. How many times have you told lies? Even when voices within you were telling you, don't tell lies. Those voices were simply the voices of Jesus Christ, the truth. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, I have a message for you. Titled, Who is Writing your life. The disciples were human beings like you. They also had flesh and blood. They had children and family members like you. Who was actually right in their lives. Satan or Jesus Christ? Who is speaking to your conscience even as you are listening to this message? Don't mind that man. Let him close this service. You know, today is Palm Sunday. I have somewhere to go. What will happen after this message? What is the next thing? There are strange voices. There were other oppositions in their hearts telling them, what if and what if this or that happens? But they did not mind any negative voices within them. They only paid attention to the instructions of Jesus Christ. Life is created to be driven by its maker. Tell your neighbor, life is created to be driven by its maker. Ask your neighbor, who is driving your life? Ask your neighbor, neighbor, who is riding your life? Many of you have bicycles and you just decide to bring the bicycle out. Keep it in order and then ride. Anywhere you turn the bicycle to, that is where it goes. Now, who has been riding your life? Many are possessed by the spirit of blasphemy. Look at blasphemers. You see them everywhere on social media handles being driven by Satan just to stop people from knowing Jesus Christ and his power to save. Before you listen to something, pay attention to something, sit down and ask yourself, who is driving my life? Who is riding my life now? When Jesus called out the two disciples, he called them out to give them 
spiritual test to know if truly they were genuinely obedient to him or not. Now, what nature of test are you going through now? Now, what nature of test are you going through? Some, when people lie against them and even blaspheme and paint them black on social media handles, they see themselves becoming under the influence of the same spirit of blasphemy. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, no matter what is being said, I know who is writing my life. You cannot describe me better than myself. The spirit of a man is a spiritual mirror that mirrors everything about such a man. Other disciples were saying to those ones, you are done. You are being called out by our master just to be destroyed. If I were you, I would have said no. How can he send me such an errand? You are not just a child. You are called to be a child of God. Meaning that someone called you. True of us? Can I hear you? True. If someone has called you to be his own child, whose influence, dominion, or control are you supposed to be under? Is it not the same person who has called you? Yes. Don't sit on the fence. A minute for and another minute against. The two disciples went and followed the path of obedience, humility, self-denial, and absolute faith in Jesus Christ and they were able to make the impossible possible. They were able to untie what was tied somewhere. If God calls you into a deliverance ministry. Your obedience in him will be tested. Anything can be used to test your obedience. You need to come to the level of saying, if this is allowed by God, glory be to him. I am not going back. You need to do what? Come to the level of saying, if this instruction comes from God, I will obey him. Glory be to him. I am not going back. If you are not given a deliverance ministry, then nobody will talk against you. That is why you have become pets in the hands of blasphemers. That is why you are not on social media handles. Nobody speaks about you, talks against you. Satan cannot discourage his evil agents. Satan cannot attack his evil agents. Satan cannot be against people that belong to him. People that belong to him. You are not called to preach the gospel alone. You are called to cast out the devil. 
why are you not doing that? You have your level. If you are just preaching message or salvation without destroying Satan and all his evil agents, nobody will ever say anything evil against you. Because you are not touching their evil kingdoms. You must know what it takes to go down to the things that God wants you to possess and possess them. You must know what it takes to go down to where Satan has tied people, their destinies, their blessings, everything about them, and get those things loosed for the glory of God. Who is riding your life? Whoever is riding your life who will determine your future. If Jesus is the one, he will drive you to blessing, drive you to power, drive you to honor, drive you to glory. Other disciples were amazed. So you could obey our master like this. Truly, two of you are different from us. We are not the same. How can the wheat be separated from the chaff? How? Can you tell me? How can the wheat be separated from the chaff? This is one of the ways. The way of obedience is the way of power. You see, this minister of God is not powerful. Are you saying that his level of obedience is low? Where there is obedience, there is what? Power. Where there is disobedience, there is no power. Jesus was extremely powerful. When he entered the temple, demons began to manifest. He healed the sick, cast out demons, and set the oppressed free. What did agents of Satan say? Evil spirits enter the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and teachers of the law. In Matthew chapter 12, read from the beginning to the end to say, This man is doing all these works only. By the spirit of Bezebar. He is using evil spirits to cast out what? Evil spirits. Why were they saying all these things? To stop people from going to Jesus, visiting his ministry, going for prayers, and receiving their own freedom. Now, let me ask you, was Jesus Christ truly using Bezebub to cast out evil spirits? No, no, no. What spirit was Jesus Christ using to do the work of God? Can I hear you say the Holy Spirit? The people that called him someone who was possessed by Bezebub. We are not there to cast out demons. Remember? They were not there to heal the sick. Remember, they were not there to bless the poor. Remember, they were not even there to do charitable works to people. But they were there to blindfold the eyes of people and stop them from receiving their freedom. Who is riding your life? Life cannot ride Itself. Tell your neighbor, life cannot ride itself. Someone must ride your life. Who is riding your life? How can voices be speaking to you to go and smoke and you're submitting, surrendering, and obeying such voices? How can
can voices be telling you, slap your husband, slap your wife, send her out of your home, and you are also obeying such voices? Are you saying that these voices are the ones riding your life? How can voices be telling you that you are going to die and you're becoming depressed? How? Is your life created to be controlled by the spirit of death? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? No! No! The psalmist said, I shall not die, but live to testify of the goodness of God. He knew who was riding his life, not the spirit of death. Jabez said, No! I am created to be honorable in the sight of my brothers. God, remove the curses upon my name and make me more honorable. God listened to him and did that. The reason it was and still is because he knew who was riding his life. Why are you comfortable with poverty? hardship, pain, sickness, disease. Why? Even the donkey and the cord did not say, no, don't untie us. No, we are comfortable where we are. We are happy here. They allowed themselves to be what? Untied. And they humbly followed. Even when they got to Jesus, They never said, we never knew this man. How can he climb on us? No, no, no. I need my owner. Let my owner come and climb on me and ride me. You cannot talk contrary to God's word and win his blessings. You cannot do what? Talk, speak contrary to God's word and win. His blessings. Could you imagine a donkey walking on people's clothes? People removed everything they had and placed it on the floor and the donkey marched on them. What an honor. Let's clap for Jesus. For that. Ask your neighbor who is riding life. Who made the donkey to be honorable and even to step on people's clothes? Can I hear you? Who is going to make your own life much more honorable and enjoyable? Can I hear you? Jesus Christ. Blasphemous? No, sir. Gossipers, no sir. Liars, no sir. The critics, no. Condemnation of people, no. Evil suspicion of people, no. It's like, it's like, he's doing this, she's doing this. Who is the one that is going to write your life? Jesus Christ. Anywhere you see me, Talk about Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see me, talk about Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see me, talk about Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see me talk about Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. He's the owner. He's the owner. He's the owner of my soul. He's the owner. He's the owner. He's the owner of my soul. Since. 
of your soul opponents people that are just looking for your downfall which they will never find anywhere you see us talk about Jesus smile and sing anywhere you see us talk about Jesus Jesus, hey. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see us talk about Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see us talk about Jesus. Hey. He's the owner of my soul. Oh, is the owner of Jesus. He's the owner of my soul. water on a solid rock. What do you see? You just clean the dust and make the rock much more cleaner and much more beautiful. Your blasphemy works are simply introducing this ministry. The City of Jesus International Ministry Christopher Oji and all members and partners to God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and all heavenly blessings. Do you know how many people that just gave call and said, we saw what people said about you, we also were led to go through everything you have been doing. And we went into prayers and God spoke to us to partner with your ministry and support you. Now check who is losing and who is winning. The more you talk about me, the more blessed I am. Anywhere you see me talk about Jesus, hey. He's the owner of my soul. Anywhere you see me talk about Jesus, hey. He's the owner of my soul. He's the owner. He's the owner. He's the owner. way God has given to me to keep frustrating Satan and all his evil blasphemers is to continue to live a holy life. You don't hear that? The best way God has taught me and given to me to 
frustrate Satan and all his evil blasphemers is for me to keep living a holy life. A life without sins and sinful desires. So you are looking for this. You will just find opposite. You are looking for anger. You will find something opposite to anger. You are looking for lies. You find something that is opposite to lies. You are looking for immorality. Then you find something that is called holiness. The more you look for immorality, the more I will be used by God to introduce you to holiness. Anywhere you see me talk about Jesus saying Anywhere you see me talk about Jesus Jesus is the owner The King The Lord grace and God brought me here all the evil agents of Satan thought I was the kind of ministry they could come together and pull down they sent their evil agents with all their wicked temptations some came with money others came with immoral attitudes and they simply found none and would never find any. So they decided to go on social media handles as failures to showcase themselves to the world that they are blasphemers from the pit of hell. Tell me any genuine ministers of God that you have not spoken against. You only abandon the fake ones and you are speaking against the genuine ones. Why is your life like that? And the more you speak against them, the more prosperous they are. Prospering much more comfortably. watching to see. When they started seeing much more blessings, bigger blessings, they began to do what? Attack. Can you attack what you have not given? Can you destroy what you have not given? It is only when a blessing comes from Satan that Satan can destroy that blessing. If a blessing comes from God, the more your attempt to destroy that blessing, the greater the blessing will become. Plus, you must watch and you see people are in the church. These were the people you tried to stop from coming to church. Let's clap for you. We are clapping for them. Let's clap for them. say, let's post this against your pastor. Eh, they will stop. 
They posted and you decided to come even earlier than ever. Let's clap for them. You came very early and everywhere is filled and you're celebrating Jesus and his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Let's clap for Jesus for that. Right now, I stretch my hands and I command everything that the enemies of your life has ceased to be released to you. I am seeing them being released. Every single blessing that Satan and his evil agents have ceased in your life and family. I command such blessing to be released. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God for that. Now tell the viewers who is driving your life. If Jesus is the one, shout the name Jesus Christ. You have to be in spirit and give God that anointed voice. Call the name of his holy son. If Jesus Christ is the one driving your life, your family, your marriage, your career, and your destiny, shout Jesus Christ again. Don't stop shouting. decision like the disciples. To always receive the word of God into the midst of your heart. And obediently act on it. Like the two disciples. Make that decision. Nothing else will be strong enough to write your life. Your word, O oh Lord, I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Meaning the psalmist was completely under the regulation of the word of God. Make that strong decision in your heart only to be driven 
by the living and eternal word of God. Not your weaknesses, not sin, not sinful desires, not unforgiving spirit, not blasphemy, not gossip, not anger, not fear, not sickness, and not disease. Your life cannot be driven by the spirit of death. You will live. You will live. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your life that is lived without sins and sinful desire is the new Jerusalem. I am seeing Jesus Christ coming into your life. I am seeing him coming as the king of glory. The lord of your life. And a supplier of your blessings. In Jesus Christ's name. Grace of the living God almighty. And of his son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Always bless your life. Always help you to triumph every trial, every obstacle, every temptation, every enemy both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of your life. Someone is celebrating. Someone is celebrating. What an imaginary scene of life, that whom you overpower today might be the source of your help tomorrow. And you seem as if the world power is yours, by stealing, killing, and destroying people just for the pleasure of yourself and others. Just as the Bible says in John 10 verses 10a, the thief is come just to steal, kill, and destroy, that's what the Bible said. Emmanuel's story begins in his childhood, abandoned by his father, and left to navigate the world alone. As he grew older, his life took a turn for the worse. He found himself entangled in a web of crime, actions that would eventually lead him to prison. His mother, after years of searching for her lost son, found him behind bars. She poured her resources into securing his freedom, but despite her efforts, no lawyer could set Emmanuel free. Just as hope seemed lost, a stranger appeared. A man, sent by divine providence, offered to assist. Unbeknownst to Emmanuel, this was the same man he had once left half dead in a crime gone wrong. Now, this man held the key to Emmanuel's redemption. The stranger directed Emmanuel's mother to the City of Jesus International Ministry, promising her a solution under the mentorship of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit through the guidance of the man of God, Christopher Orgy. After years of struggle and uncertainty, Emmanuel's case was finally solved through the prayers of Christopher Orgy. But the miracles did not end there. The stranger, once left for dead by Emmanuel, not only helped secure his freedom, but also supported them with a sum of 100,000 naira, promising further assistance. The transformation was profound. Emmanuel, once a prisoner, was now free. During a service of testimony, Emmanuel received a charity cash of 1,500,000 naira and 10 bags of rice from the man of God, Christopher Orgy. This was a chance for Emmanuel to rebuild his life, a testament to the power of redemption. It reminds us of the power of forgiveness, and how those we may have wronged can become our greatest allies. It underscores the importance of faith and how divine intervention can transform a life. Emmanuel's journey from crime to redemption, from despair to hope, is a lesson to us all. It's a reminder that even in our darkest moments, there is always a glimmer of light. It teaches us that no matter the crime, 
no matter the sin, redemption is always possible. It's a testament to the power of faith, the power of forgiveness, and the power of second chances. As the man of God, Christopher Orgy, always says, is there anything hard that Jesus Christ cannot solve? As you reflect on Emmanuel's journey, may it inspire you, may it uplift you, and may it remind you of the power of redemption. Shalom. The messages of death is not for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What did I say? The messages of death is not for me. Prophetic utterances, various dreams and revelations, even voices speaking to your heart because of your current condition. Thank you, Jesus. They are not for you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God already paid for your complete death. Thank D -E -B -T -S, you. D-E-B-T-S. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be a unifier. What did I say? Be a unifier. Bring your home, your friends and people together to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That is your personal assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remember the ministry God has given to you, caring ministry. Don't give up because many have caused you to doubt whether truly you are called to do that. Thank After helping, that, that they is, don't value anything. That is very true. They that turned is around to that devour. Is, that is very true. Extremely true. Very, very correct. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You had a tough moment and you received the word in the midst of your heart. And you finally decided to surrender, even against your own will. And today, you have a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is true. 100% true. A very tough decision that ordinary men would not have taken. It is very true. It's very true. It takes grace to save life. It takes the spirit of Jesus Christ to be used to save life. It takes the spirit of Jesus Christ for you to be used to save lives. He allowed himself to be driven by Jesus, he acted and completed his assignment. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. If you were not involved, the boys would have been dead by now. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The fact is true. It is true. 100% true. If you had said no, let us pay back evil for evil. Must I be the one to be sent? Let other people be the one. By now, the person will not be in the church like this to experience Jesus Christ. That is very true. Thank you, Jesus. They are even here in, in the church. That is a fact. That is a fact. They are in the church for them to surrender. Because this is God's another chance. Not for them to live for Satan, but for God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Satan only kills and also sends people to kill. Satan only 
steals and sends people to rob, to steal. And Satan destroys and also sends people to destroy. That is why you see people kidnapping people and killing them. You see them kidnapping people. They will also collect money and still kill the people without any regret. The chance that is given to them, if they utilize the chance, will be a living example for others. And that is what God wants. Anything short of this will be dangerous. Did you hear what I said, sir? Thank you. Yes, yes, I heard that the chance they have, they must utilize it for God. Otherwise, they will lose the whole opportunity. This is grace that is given to them. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for the life you are living. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. That message was not too far. You know about what you are saying. Yes, sir. Your names? I'm Daniel Austin. How old are you? I'm 20. Where are you from? I'm from Abia State. What do you know about the message? The intervention of the man. My name is uh, Emmanuel Machina, madam, from Abia State. Sir. Who is the young man by your side? Who is him to you? That's my junior brother, sir. And who is the woman? Is my mother. What do you have to say? So I'm very happy to be in the presence of God today because I did not expect you to be here today because the case was very, very tough to me, sir. But I thank God that I'm free today, sir. I bought a stolen phone, sir. So on 216, I bought the phone. So I don't know that the phone was a stolen phone. So they caught the phone in my hand, uh, anti kidnapping spot. They knew. So they said that I should go and provide those guys that they said the phone for me. I said, I don't know those guys. So they take me to prison since 2016. I spent almost nine years there. So, and uh, I've met many, many, many barristers to work the case, but when they come, they'll just go. But I thank God for the man of God that is here. God use him and uh, set me free, sir. Because I was thinking that I'm going to die there because no hope again. But I thank God for life today, sir. I'm very, very happy, sir. This is an opportunity for you to open up and confess your sins. Remember the lives of sin you lived. Satan used you in the past. You know? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. The issue is not like issue of buying a stolen phone. That is just what Satan used to finally take you to prison. So, your case is beyond that. So, open up and say everything. Blood is in your hands. I live a, I live a bad life, sir. I live a bad life because when I was in Enugu State, I lived with my father. But my father abandoned me, so I stayed in the streets for years. And uh, I'm a courtier, sir. I'm a courtier, and uh, I've used machete and caught somebody, sir. But I've not killed somebody before. Sir. Blood is sacred and should not be wasted. If there is any spirit in you that is always thirsty of blood, that spirit in you that is always thirsty of blood 
must be destroyed. These are evil spirits that are working for Satan. They are not working for God. You are also addicted. You are taking something. Yes, sir. What are those things? I used to smoke, sir. I smoke oh. weed, sir. And I drink, sir. Alcoholic, sir. Today is a day set aside by all Christians to celebrate the triumphant entry of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, into Jerusalem. And they should mark the day you receive Jesus Christ into your life. So you young man, what is your decision? To receive Jesus Christ into your life and live for him or to continue your sinful so, lives? I want to accept God as my Lord and personal Savior. Also. Who used to send you? You said you have friends. You people used to beat people, injure them and go for such evil assignment. Who used to send you? No one, sir, because we will be there when we are smoking. They will say that let us go for for oppression, like to go and collect something from people with force. So we we'll go, sir, with my friends. What do you have to say to the man whom God used to intervene? Sir, I'm very, very grateful, sir. I don't know what to do, but I pray to God for, for God to use him and set some people free and change people's soul. Because inside there is not easy, it's not the easy something, sir. People are dying inside there, no help, nothing, nothing. But I pray to God, let God give him the power and the strength to continue his work. Do you know him before? No, sir. Have you met him before? No, sir. Okay, let's hear from him. Well, he does not know me according to what he has said. But in fact, he ought to know me. He ought to know me because him and his gang knew me. In 2016, which he has said, May 8th, Sunday. I, after praying, reading John 14, 15, 16, and 17, they broke into my house with a Monday hammer and with a um, pump action and I was shot in the stomach and um, my intestines burst open but I forgive them and I asked Jesus not to hold it against them I was staying in Coal City Garden house 77 and I was in the hospital. They, they thought I died. They all saw me. They believed I, because my intestines split out into pieces. I was in the pool of my blood. They thought I had died. They believed I had died. And after three months in the hospital, the police said they had arrested two of them. And, um, in connection with another matter, I told the police that I had forgiven them so that this matter is considered closed. So the police still continued to press charges in the other robberies which they had gone. And 2016, I stayed three months in the hospital, I recovered. And um, just last year, towards the end of last year, I received a message that I am to represent him. He, he needed a lawyer. And after 
I had the case. I checked the file. I saw the DPP. And I discovered that this was actually the people who used the Monday hammer and all that broke into my house and shot me in cold blood. And I said, okay, I will consider the matter. The mom got in touch with me and I told her that she should come to this place, the City of Jesus International Ministry, and seek the face of God that from then I will decide whether or not to take the case. She came here. She came on Sunday with uh, the wife of uh, the young man. And um, they stayed till Tuesday. And on Tuesday, uh, they also were at the prayer session. And um, the man of God asked the wife, to go and confess that there is blood in the hand of the picture she was holding. And she went and confessed everything that the man, Emmanuel, had done. And the man of God prayed and uh, said to her that your son has been forgiven, that he will be set free. And the mother came and told me. And I said, then I will take up the case. Since God has set him free. So, on the first day in the, when we came for the case, him, the second person is not here. There were two that were set free. I told the mother the whole story. She wept, but I told her, please don't tell your son who I am. Please, for God's sake, don't tell your son who I am. I have forgiven him. God has forgiven him, and I will get him by God's grace. I, God will set him free. So I argued the case. After three or four adjournments, it wasn't an easy one. The judge agreed to my submission and uh, set him free. You that want to kill Somebody has offended you. You that are unwilling to forgive people. You that say somebody should die just because the person has committed offense. Who is driving your life? Who is riding your life? Jesus said to people that crucified him, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Stephen said to God, take my spirit, but then do not hold the sins of these people that are stoning me to death against them. You that say, this man should be bound out of this church, bound out of that church, bound out of this company, bound out of this country. Who is riding your life. God is the God of forgiveness. Hebrews chapter 8 verses 12. What did he say then? I will forgive the sins of those I have not forgiven of their sins. Meaning, I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. But you are saying, no. Retain their iniquities. I remember their sins forever. My question still remains. Who is riding your life? You are a married woman, you are here with unforgiving spirit. You cannot even forgive your own husband. 
or you're a married man, you're here, with unforgiving spirit, you are planning to divorce. You are going after other ladies. You cannot even forgive your own wife. Or you are the one hating other people, speaking ill against them with unforgiving spirit in your heart. Who is driving your life? At least Jesus Christ triumphantly entered into the city of Jerusalem. You are the living temple. The temple of Jesus Christ. Why is he not living in you? Why are you not allowing him into your heart to forgive people that offended you? The wheat are being separated from the child. It is not how long you have been in this ministry that matters, but how well you live your life. It is not how long you have been a partner of the city of Jesus International Ministry that matters, but how well you live your life to glorify God. How long did this man spend in the church here? But look at what he has done. Somebody that came to him with people and shot him. I never believed that the same man is alive today. To him, he believed, I've seen another lawyer, a powerful lawyer that came to um, stand on my behalf and finally, I am out. He never knew that the same man he went to shoot it is the same man that God used to rescue him from prison. It is not how long you have been sitting here and say you are the elder of the church. You are the financial committee. You are the chair lady. Chairman of men Chair lady of women. Building committee of this and that. It is how well you live your life that matters. What is it that somebody that has done to you that you are finding very, very difficult to forgive that can be compared to what this group of people did to this man, yet he forgave him. And he practically expressed his forgiveness. You said you're forgiven. You blocked everybody. You are not talking to them anymore. You don't even greet them. You don't even help them. You don't even go to them. Nothing concerns you. And you're calling yourself a child of God. Repent. The work of God is practical. What is practical? Forgiveness is practical. Love is practical. Faith is practical. Humility is also what? Practical. Can't be coming here and going back with the same attitude. That is why Satan is trying to incite his evil agents to um, attack on social media handles. But they cannot pull down the ministry. They are making us popular. What a free advert. Let's clap for them. <laughs> if it were other places, they would say, Allow that boy to perish. After all, he was the one that shot you. Don't go and attend to him. Don't rescue him. He who kills by sword must do what? Die by what? Sword. You use Bible to promote killing. Revenge. Negative way of what? Revenge. Was Jesus not killed? Did he die naturally? He was killed, yet he did not retaliate negatively. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. The best way to retaliate is to forgive. What is the best way to retaliate? Why have you suddenly become blasphemous all around, circulating the news you are circulating? Is it not because of your evil way of retaliation? Repent. You are the one lying. You go on social media and those to lie. 
These are the kind of lawyers that God sent to rescue people on earth. These are the kind of lawyers God sent to save the common souls for God's sake. These are the kind of lawyers God gave the spirit of leadership to hold the position of leadership. You know, if you're a leader with the spirit of unforgiveness, Satan will use you to destroy many people. Why are you oppressing certain tribes? Is it not because of your spirit of unforgiveness and tribalism? Why are you oppressing and intimidating your political opponents? Is it not because of unforgiving spirits in you? Anger. Why are you intimidating your political opponents? Oppressing them? Setting them up? Is it not because of the spirit of unforgiveness? Bitterness and evil way of revenge that are all living in you. Repent. Life cannot right itself. Life is created to be driven by the maker. If God is in you and God says, I will forgive the iniquities and remember that sins no more. Why are you a channel of unforgiveness? Why? Tell me why. Why? Why are you with you haunting all your political opponents? Your business colleagues. You just want their shops to close. That is why you go to native doctors, get charms, bury them somewhere. Call their names. Make sure you close their shops. Do you want to be the only one to live in this physical world? You are not paying blasphemers to go and blaspheme, leaving ministries because you know you lack the power of God to do God's work. You are the one paying the money. When they are talking, you say, <laughs> see your pastor, see what I'm saying about him. Are you not hearing? You'll be the one circulating the news because you yourself have sold your soul to Satan. Repent. You cannot stop the work of God. The work of forgiveness must go on. If there is no sin, would there be any need for forgiveness? Sins are committed to be forgiven. It, it is not all about who committed a sin. It is all about God in you who always forgives sins that are committed by anybody. How can you be a daughter and you are fighting with your mom because of unforgiveness? Say she just abandoned me. She never cared for me. And this and that. You are harboring offense in your heart. And your mom is getting old. You cannot care for your own mother. You are calling her a witch. Repent. You are a boy. You cannot even care for your parents. All you know is to come still destroy everybody. Cause shame in the family. Run away. Embarrass yourself and everybody. And disgrace your parents. And you call your parents, if your parent is a man, you call the man a wizard. If both of them are alive, you call them witches and wizards. If your parent is a, a woman, you call the person a wizard. Repent. If you come here, we will tell you the truth. Why are you running away from a place like this? Tell me why. And why do you want here to be closed? You cannot close what you have not built. It is not possible. What makes this man a member is not his coming to sit down and dance and wave hand like this, but carrying out the works of God in terms of forgiveness, charity, care, love, tolerance, and the like, like this. You that are here, what makes you a member? It's not you're coming to sit down and say they will always place you on the front seat. You have your own special seat. You cannot sit at the back. But carrying out God's assignments like this. 
Let's hear from the man again, the Baba. Go ahead, sir. Well, my decision is to love Emmanuel just as I love my son. And it is also my decision to support him, his brother, his mother, to make sure that they become somebody useful in society. That is a personal assignment for me. Let us hear from the young man. You have spoken and identified him as one of those people that came to shoot you. Let's hear from him. What do you have to say about what the lawyer said? That is when I don't know anything in life, sir. But now I have, I have become my, 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 my past, sir. I will not go back to it again, sir. I have repented, sir. Meaning you are confirming the fact that then you were led by evil spirit to shoot him. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Because of uh, what I am. Because when you be a member of Vikings, sir, so they will give you an admission to go and steal and bring everything you steal from there to them, sir. So, and uh, when I join it, I don't know that it, this is going to be, sir. What do you know about that day? What role did you play? Sir, when you are, when you are a member of that thing, what, what I know is that your life will be short, sir. Because tomorrow now, someone will, someone will come and shoot you. So it's not good to be a member of that, sir. What message do you have for higher assassins, kidnappers, armed robbers, and people who belong to secret courts, whose missions are just to kill, steal, and destroy? Sir, I'm giving that advice to stop it because it's not good. No, again, it's not there, sir. Likewise, you just spend, uh, you just waste your life for nothing, sir. They like, even when they are repentant. Sir, what I have to tell them is that let them have have mercy to forgive and forget anything that someone did to you. Just forgive and forget because if if uh, my, this bicep did not forgive me, I will, be, I, will, I, I will remain there for years. Maybe I will die inside there. No one can tell, sir, but I'll give that advice for, for you too. Because when you sin against God, God will forgive you. So when, when, you, when someone sin against you, you need to forgive the person, sir. That's what I have to say. Now that he has publicly said that he is ready to... Um, let go. He has already let go the offense in his heart. How has this kind of act of forgiveness touched your life? And what life do you want to start living? Seeing that the person you tried to end his life is now living and is even being used by God to save your own life. So I want to go back for my work because I'm, I'm a mechanic engineering. I want to go back for my work and start a new life, sir. You said you're a mechanical engineer. Yes, Academic sir. one, or you learn it. How? I've worked there for two years before something came over me and I leave the work. And Where did you work? At school camp here. I learned it. Because uh, after school, when I was going to GTC, after the school, I will go for my work. I'm still learning before something came over me, sir. So I, want, I would like to go back to, to the work, sir. What initially made you to join Secret Court? How were they able to deceive you to join Secret Court? What did they tell you? There's one time that uh, I was, because I was pushing battle before in this Enugu state. So after my work, some people will come and collect my money from me with force. So they say that they are a court member. So that is what leads me to go and join them so that no one can collect my thing again from me. So. Since you joined Secret Court, has anything good come out of it? No, sir. Problem, sir. 
were you truly protected or even destroyed the more? So no protection, sir. I'm just going on my own. Sir, with my now, friends. tell the world, who can truly protect people? It's only God, sir. Blasphemers that are posting things online, they will not see this one. They are not seeing this one. Watch. They are not going to share this kind of educative something that will take sinners to a place of righteousness. They will not share this kind of program that will take sinners from a place of sin into a place of righteousness. But anything that will discourage you and some of your friends from being set free like this is what they will send to you. If you have leaders that have this kind of spirit, what do you think will be happening to your nation? Your state? Your local government? Your community? And your economy? Where there is no forgiveness, there is nothing like prosperity. There is nothing like success. There is nothing like development. Because the people there will destroy everything through unforgiving spirit. There are many things you need to approve, even when it is not going to develop your own state. But because you have the law for your own nation, and for everybody in your nation, you just give that approval and sign it. But if you're a leader and you have the spirit of unforgiveness, you will not be able to sign that thing. Because first and foremost, you say, it's not for my tribe. It's not for my family. It's not for my own benefit. It's for other people. You fail to realize that you must be number one patriot of your own nation. You should love your nation and love your people. Whether your people are coming from the north, south, east, and west, they are all your people. Mantle of leadership should be given to people that have the spirit of forgiveness. Tell me any of these blasphemers that can solve a problem. They don't have what it takes to solve a problem. If you don't have Jesus, you cannot solve a problem. You are in school now and you're bragging. Nobody can touch me in school because you claim that you are in secret court. Are you not seeing your colleagues here? Watch. What you are planning to do is what he has graduated from. And he's telling you the repercussions. Repent. You brag in evil. As if you are doing the right thing. Why are you not serious in your studies? Why? You are learning a business. Why are you not serious? Some of you, the business you're supposed to have learned within two, three weeks. is what you are learning for many years. Because you are not concentrating. You are a minister. You are in one place. You say you're a minister of God. In one place. Life grows. You need to grow. With this bitter spirit in you. Spirit of blasphemy. Rebellion. How will you grow? There is no prosperity. Where there is rebellion. Unforgiving spirit. Or hatred. If you see someone prospering. You should also look within and find out the godly life the person is living and start living the same life. It is as simple as that. So you can prosper. Let us hear from the mother what she has to say. Shalom, church. I'm very happy this morning for what God has done to me and my family. When my son was in Enugu, alone, with his so-called father, because the man threw us away. He left us, abandoned us. 
and go his own way. I told them to my family, to my parents, how to stay. One day he came that he wanted to take his son. My parents said no, that they're not going anywhere. He fussed and fussed and fussed. I said, okay, mom, we cannot drag him. Let's allow him to take him. So they decided he will not go to his school and kill him there or take him away. So he took him when he was 10 years old. He was in Enugu. Then they walk. I went to that place once. When we go there, the man would just carry another woman and throw us away. The last day I was there, I slept on the ground when he slept with the woman on his bed with my son. I said, no, let me take him. He did not allow me to carry my son. I tried and tried, no way. I went back. I don't know, immediately I went back, he threw him away because of a woman. My son was going around the Nugu and I was in Iber State. I don't know. After so many years, I'm not hearing about him again. I went to the place I know that they're staying. I couldn't see anybody. I asked about him. They said they don't know where they are. Oh my God, I go back. So one day I was watching my Facebook. I went to internet. I saw, Mama, this is me, Emma. I said, ah. I did I say, Emma. Then I replied, which Emma? Because we, we, all of us thought that he's dead. I said, Mommy, is your own Emma. That day I shouted, Emma, Emma is alive. Emma, where are you? Mommy, I'm in the prison. This is seven years. I shouted, seven years in the prison. Emma, what happened? He told me. I said, where are the prison? Say, Enugu. That was the first day of me coming to Enugu. He directed me. I came to Enugu and see him in the, in the prison. And we are going about it. It's not as if that something is happening. He has five lawyers before the man of God, this one that God brings to me. He has so many lawyers. When you give them money, we will go and bring, I will scatter everywhere and look for money. I come. The, the, the lawyers who eat the money, they will not do anything. Five months, he, he will not go to court. Six months, he will not go to court. I said, now this thing is too much. So many ideas came, everything. This, this thing affected my, my health. My BP rise 200 over 180. Since that day, I haven't gotten myself. From this sickness to another sickness, I cannot laugh. I cannot smile when people are smiling. I don't eat. I go down. I went to the hospital. I stay three months. They will bring me back. I will see you again. They will carry me back. I don't, I don't know the problem. Message, you came. You want to die. They say, go. They don't want to steal your life. Every here and there, the message will be coming. I will still pray and say, God, please, can I see my son again? This is 18 to 9 years. Can I eat with him again? But before I would die, now let me just set my eyes on him because he is my first son. There are four boys and two girls. God, please, I want to see him. I was praying. See, one day, he called me and said, Mommy, please, you, you, want to, you have to see this man, man of God, though. I want you to see him. Look at his number. He gave me the number of my barrister. Then I called him, Daddy, are you Susan Super? He said, Yes. My son gave me your number to somebody. He said, Yes. I, how can I see you? He said, Madam, you come to Enugu in our chair. Said, I don't know Enugu. Said, you have to come. Send an address to me. Then I came the first Sunday. The first Sunday, God just touched me. I was sitting at the second seat here. When after praying, when the man of God, Pastor Christopher G was ministering, and the power of God moved, and he touched me, I fell down. I said, God, thank you, my first comment. You have answered my prayer. I came with my daughter-in-law to be that time. So we are praying. I came with tears. I was not, I don't have joy. Let me just say it like this. I go. I get to the man of God, and I go. The second day, I said, Mom, you are going to come again? No. I said, okay, sir. I came. I've come to this place up to five times, seeking 
for the presence of God upon my son. The man of God told me, do you know why I said you should come here? I said, no. Let's walk this thing spiritual. There might be something spiritual that is holding your son. So at the physical, it will be very easy. I said, yeah, that is true. I came, I, I bring his picture. We went for deliverance, everything. And I, I went to happiness that day. I told my son that God had released you because the man of God told my, my, my daughter-in-law to be that God will release your husband to you. That's not, not the that will make him not to come back. Where is your husband? <coughs> Where? Hold back. What is it? They say it's a case of stealing and rape or something. What so do you know about him? I don't know much about the case because he was already there before we met. How long has he been in prison? Um, going to 80s. How long is he going to stay? I, I don't know about that one. Did you not find out from the lawyer or anybody in charge? I did it. Why are you here? I came on his behalf so that he can be released. If you don't know his kind of character and you don't know the life he's living, how can you know how he will be set free? Because freedom is a product of confession. Yeah, I know he's not a good person. If you are life. coming to the presence of God, just Come the way you are. That is what sincerity is all about. You may not be holy. You may not be righteous. You may not be faithful. But however you are, just come the way you are. Okay, this is me. Peter said to Jesus, I know I don't deserve to be here. As for me, you need to go away from me because I am a sinful man. He did not say, no, I don't know the life I'm living. I don't know why I have not been able to catch fish before. He did not say that. He said, please, come away from me. I'm a sinful man. You cannot say you don't know. Before you get married to somebody, you should have known everything you know. Don't say you don't know. You know what you are trying to be diplomatic in your answer. You know, say everything you know. That is where the freedom lies. Okay. I think he's involved in the case, Sha. It has to do with uh, stealing and uh, rape and someone got killed. Meaning you are here looking for the mercy of God? Yes. The mercy of God will not allow you to be punished according to your sins. That is what mercy of God does. Even though you are guilty, the mercy of God has a way of finding itself an, an unchallengeable verdict that will not be challenged by anybody. But if you say, no, I don't know. I don't need mercy. Once you don't need mercy, it means you cannot win. Because everybody is a sinner. I, I, I need his mercy. I need it. So once again, what do you know about this issue? And what do you want God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to do for you okay. and your family? He has lived a wayward life in the past. You understand? Uh, he has been, been into criminal activities, stealing, courtism or whatever. I know he has realized his mistakes and he's sorry all the life and things he have done in the past. So the only thing I'm asking is for God to be able to give him a second chance, you know, to be able to repent and worship him so that, because if he's there, he cannot be able to serve God. He has to come out and testify God's goodness and live a life of repentance, living all his sinful acts and living a righteous life. That's, that's what I want. I just want him to be out from that place. So for God to have mercy on him, even though that his sin is, is too much, he has done a lot. I just want God to have mercy on him and bring him out from that place so that he can use his mouth and come and testify God's goodness. My name is Chinna Zigwebike. I'm from Enugu State. This is Emmanuel Okoronkwa from Abia State, Omaha. He's my fiance. Call the name Jesus. Jesus. What do you want Jesus Christ to do for you? I want Jesus Christ to set him free from prison and give him a second chance to be able to worship him as his true God. That's what I want. I want him to repent and give his life to Christ from his sinful ways, sinful acts, stealing, case of rape and the cutism or any kind of atrocity that he might have done in the past. I want him to, to come out from all those activities and be a changed man. 
live a life worth of relating and serve God in truth and in spirit. <laughs> ah. What do you believe Jesus Christ will do for you? I believe that with God, everything is possible. I believe that God will make him to come out from prison. There's nothing impossible for God. I believe it and I know it will happen. Now call the name Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command the mercy of God that triumphs over judgment to speak for him and I command his sins, your sins and sins of everyone to be truly forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be forgiveness. I command all demons that are high to influence his character, his behaviors, to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of killing, stealing, destruction, sexual immorality, robbery, courtesy. I command you evil spirits to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, fire the name of Jesus Christ! Let him receive eternal life. Amen. Complete healing and deliverance. <laughs> Blessings and breakthroughs. Amen. And let his testimonies be restored. Amen. Testimonies of freedom. Amen. Genuine repentance. Amen. And salvation of souls. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. And amen. Give thanks to God you are set free. Thank you. Thank you. Come back to the testimony. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My Lord, you have preached so slowly. And when we were praying in that place, I was holding his picture. Praying deeply. Somebody was dragging the picture from me. Uh -uh. He was dragging it. Me, I was dragging it because I closed my eyes and prayed. When I was dragging that picture, I was dragging it. When I said, open my eyes, the man of God drew the picture and threw it away. He said, the, he said, the usher, don't touch this picture. I said, it's so come time that my son is released. I was very high. I couldn't pray again. I was almost singing, singing to all the deliverance before I go. I made this man. I know that there is grace of God upon him that make him to release my son. Because what he told me, he said, mommy, it's a secret to don't dispose it, which I had the secret the, when he was released. I told him, I told him, look at the man of look at what he said about you. He said that he knows you, but you don't know him. He said, I, I forgot to know. I want to release you today because you have been released. And the, what happened on that day, it was very terrible something. When the judge leave him on the dock, there are two. The other person is not here. The judge, the judge just left him and go to the inside room. For past one hour, I saw the, uh, my barrister running around the court praying. I was by the side of the praying, say, God, this is today because the time he's going to court, five months, no court. But when I met this man of God, every month we go to court. Every month I'll come to Enugu. Every month I'll come to Enugu. Go to the court. He was praying at the court premises. I was praying too, calling my brother, sister, said, Ma, you push continue praying, you know that I want, I want to go with my son today. And before the accident, because the devil wants to take my life, and he really said that really want to happen. I got an accident three, ten times. This is my leg. I can, if I stand too much now, I will be having pains. All over my body, accidents. Everywhere. I will want to make it, I will fall, I will, I will fall, I will get injured. I will go, I went to church, I will fall, I will get injured. The person will fall and get injured up to ten times. I said, God, I must see my son. But I'm very happy that God used this man. Is God that came inside this man. I never see a lawyer like that before. Talking about to have issue with somebody. He was shot along the line. God now make him to be alive again. And he has the mind to look at the person that he had issue with. No, he's, a, he's, a, he's a just, it's only a few. The hundred can be only nine can, can do it. That the God will bless you in this life. No, and above that, my son was even there, crying, Mommy, I will die here. People will not release me, I will die. I'm okay, I'm tired. I've asked God to forgive me, and God has forgiven me, I want to go out. Mommy, we are, we, are, we are just planning. But this man now, I hope that God will use him to do that. 
Actually, God used him to do everything. He's just a, a father. I swear, I've never seen a man like that before. When my son was released last two weeks, he's supposed to be here because we came to Enugu. That was on Tuesday, either 9 or 12. When you look at ourselves, we don't have anything. And I really entered, we said we should go. He said, you want to go, you know, some of us have a new freedom. We want to go home and see uh, everybody. I said, okay, we should go. On Wednesday, we, we go to house. We went to other states. And stay. I say, I must surely come and thank God, though. Because it's the year that I got the deliverance, so I must surely come. Mostly, he felt sick after release. Me, I came back on Saturday, last week, to come to church and testify. I entered KK. One, one, uh, and I was a man carrying me to MLA, oh, this is where MLA stop. I said, no, this is not the way. The place I went, and I was calling man of God on phone. I said, this is the time of prayer. Maybe he will not pick the call. I just a message. We run all over the Enugu. I can never locate this place again. The man carried me go back and collected 4,005 for me. I was crying. I said, this is what made me to from upper state to come. And I sleep off. I'm going on Tuesday. What happened? After everything, I said, there's nothing I can join as things of God church. So since I'm ready to go to church, let me worship in any church. I went there and worship. We go. My God said, I did not come. I said, Daddy, I did not come. God is my witness that I tried to get this place. I could not see. It is my promise. I don't want to eat God's promises, sir. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make it. I didn't see the place. I want you to come. Daddy, we don't have anything, no. If it's my mother, we say that I am covered pot. That's how, my, how I am. If I eat, I don't eat you. No, no, but it's only God that knows. Daddy, I don't have anything at home. He said, I will surprise you. I want you to come and testify. That the transport fair I don't have, I will produce the transport fair for three of you to come. Praise the Lord. Daddy say, daddy transfer 100,000 naira to my accounts. He say, Mommy, I want to be able to come to the church today and testify. This is in your heart to come. That is why we are here today. To testify what God has done to me and my family. I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to appreciate this man. But my own, I, I, what I have in mind is that every, everywhere his children is, the same thing, God will see them through. Even though they are going on their difficulties, and when people are going and cry, his family will go and smile and also laugh. Nothing will harm him in life. Because of making me and my children to be here this morning, that the God must surely give you long life. You will live and testify this. God, even though I don't have any money to give you, but from other sides, God will raise men that will honor you. And I believe in that tomorrow that my son will stand well and also honor you too. In the name of Jesus. That is my prayer. I also thank Daddy Christopher Oji. This place was wonderful. I, I saw the Holy Spirit inside here. God just used him and used everybody in this place. And the, the grace of God that is in him is in, in this man of God, the barrister. Daddy, God bless you. God bless you, sir. Shalom. <laughs> If you are in this church and you are still not willing to forgive people, work out your own salvation. You cannot listen to things like this and go back home with grudges in your heart. You say people served you. They did not serve you well. And you are not settling them. You are not establishing them. You don't establish them. You say they offended you. They squander your money. What about this man? I will say your wife betrayed you. He became adulterous. And that is why you are not willing to forgive. What about this man like this? As I said, coming to sit here without the spirit of holiness, righteousness, Humility, forgiveness, tolerance, patience, joy, peace, self-control, obedience, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will not make you a member of the city 
of Jesus' international ministry. What is it that anybody can do to you that can be compared to this thing? Just tell me. What is it? What is it that anybody can say to you that will make you know to forgive such a person? Forgive your blasphemers. Forgive your offenders. Forgive everybody. Your real enemies are sins and sinful desires. Of which unforgiving spirit is one of them. You blasphemers. Your real enemies are sins and sinful desires. Of which the sin of blasphemy is one of them. Do yourself good by forgiving yourself. Forgiving other people. And by staying away from sins and sinful desires. Because you can. As for me, I have forgiven everybody. No matter what you have posted. No matter what you have said. No matter what you believe. Your sins are forgiven. For God's sake. So, himself is addicted. This one. Himself is addicted. What are you taking? What are you addicted to? I'm also a courtesy, sir. Which one and what role do you play? Sir, there are two courtesies that I joined. And that was out of Condition, sir. They are the one called Kegite Club of Nigeria. And the one called I use as Egede. What role have you been playing in these two secret courts? On the one called Kegite, I'm, I'm only a drummer, I'm the one that I'm, let me say, I drum. I play drums. On those are his members, I'm just a pilot. How do you mean? When you say that you are a pilot, what do you do? They only take permission from me before going to another town. We have, let me see, we have general and we have pilot, we have present executioner. What do they normally take permission from you to do? They heard them I tell me I should go and give message to them and want to declare message, look at what they asked to do, or we have something to go to here. Or let me say when our, our members have issues or problems or their mother is dead, normally go there to the most just to go there and see them in the most of our our conversations. How long have you been in into these secret courts? How long have you been operating? As a courtist. This is my SS1. That is 220. Meaning how many years altogether? Four years, sir. How old were you when you joined the secret courts? 16 years, sir. How did you feel at that very age joining these kind of courts? How did you feel? Were your parents aware? Sir, so just that I was not meant to join the court, but just that and let me see how they maltreat my father and my mom, like they might come into my house, beat up, harass my father. So I joined it because for me to do them back, since they did not see anyone in our, in our family to do. So I'm the one to do them back, sir. So that's why I joined it, sir. So. What have you achieved? Since you joined the secret courts. Once yes, sir. What are the things that you are addicted to that you normally take with your mouth? I drink. I normally smoke sometimes, not every time, sir. What do you normally smoke and what are the things you have been drinking? I only smoke whiskey. And I drink only black legend. What is your decision now? 
So I'm giving a promise that I will not go back to those bad characters anymore. I'm now a new person. Even since I just came into here, my conscience was not clear. So I think that I won't go back to those bad characters again. I'm now a changed person now from today. You see an elderly man who is here and God used him to set everybody free and that brought you people here today. What do you have to say to him? So I'm very happy for the man. Without him, I'm not sure that my brother could have come out to you now because it's been so many years I've not seen him and I normally ask, but they did not, they didn't, as my mommy did not even know how to tell me. But I'm so grateful that the young man, the, uh, my brother is here, and the man that God used to deliver my brother. And I also promise him that whenever on earth, I normally stand and I, I must surprise him. That's my own promise. Sir. Some people surprise their fellow human beings with evil. And they say, I just want to surprise the person with evil. Some go and shoot the person. Others go plan for the person, kidnap the person. Others go to assassinate the person. Others set up people to rob people. And they will pretend as if they didn't know anything about that. Whereas they, they are the ones that pass the information to other people that did the job. So how do you intend to surprise him as you claimed? God will bless him, and I also give him a defeating honor. I know that I don't have money or anything to, to give him, but all I have is God. You just see him too. His desire is for you to live for God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, in holiness, in righteousness, in obedience, and in the fear of God. Are you saying that the only way you can pay him back is to use your own life? To glorify God by living a life that is without sins and sinful desires. Yes or no? So I, I promise because of his sake and how he delivered my brother. I promise that I'm going to be a new person. I will stop believing those lives. I back this. That's the promise I will give to him, sir. Are you also promising to stop smoking and drinking alcohol and fornicating? Yes or no? So from today, those things are over. Yeah. All right. So, viewers will listen to their confession and confirmation of these glorious things that God did through the lawyer in our midst by making himself available, not just to forgive them, but also to um, set them free from being imprisoned. Glory be to God. All right. So, as you go and make God's word the foundation of your life, we pray that God himself will Open your heart so that he, the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit can come in and make your lives their dwelling place. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right. So, we will not leave this job for the man alone. He has promised to support the young man if only he can repent. So, by the special grace of God, we will be led by the spirit that rested upon Jesus to enter into Jerusalem triumphantly to give the young man that just came from the prison the sum of one million naira.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. The reason is because he needs to urgently have something. Something that he can use to take off his life in God's direction. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation and myself, Christopher Orji, we are going to give to the young man that came out of the prison the sum of one million naira. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And also to the young brother, if he is willing to repent and stay away from sins and sinful desires, we will also give him the sum of $500,000. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so happy, sir. Meaning we are giving two of them one million five hundred thousand dollars. Can blasphemers share this thing? Can I hear you? Are they watching? They are not seeing this kind of thing. How many people have they established? Ask yourself, the Pharisees and Sadducees of this current generation, how many people have they helped and saved? They don't go to church to help. They go to church to gossip, blaspheme, and destroy. They don't go to church to live by example. They go to church to collect people's number whom they can be spreading their false information to. This is God's project. Don't sit down and say, man of God has responded. What have you done? At least the man did not stop there. He said, he is going to help. I'm only coming into the matter because the man is a member here. And these people, they need help. They need what? Whether they are members or not. How do you, blasphemers, celebrate your own Palm Sunday? How? I was touching, I saw some of your agents you sent here. Go and see. They are here. One is over there. That side. I touched him. I was telling God, God, you have shown me. He is one of them. God said, don't speak. What will I do? I just said, thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Their weapons are what? Powerless. Their weapons are what? Powerless. How many of these kind of breaking news will go on social media handles? How many? And how many of you will place today's link on your WhatsApp status and tell your friends, watch and see how Palm Sunday is being celebrated in my church? How many of you? If you cannot help, don't destroy. If you cannot help, don't blaspheme. We know you can't do anything. That is why you are speaking. If you want to help, help. If you cannot help, we are being helped by God. We are being helped by who? So God bless you. Make sure you 
you live a life that is free from sins and sinful desires. And to make sure you have time to study your Bible. We are going to give you brand new Bibles. One for the other brother and one for him. And we are going to give the family 10 bags of logif rice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Now, if you are planning to destroy somebody whom God is using to do this kind of thing, ask yourself, do you think you can? Do you think God will allow you? It's not possible. You are fighting the battle that you have already lost. You are fighting the person you cannot win. We are not doing your job. We are doing God's job. We are not doing your work. We are doing God's work. You are not the one riding our lives. God is riding our lives. Can you destroy God? At least before you attack the donkey, you need to get rid of the person who is riding the donkey. And you cannot destroy Jesus. He has risen. Tell your neighbor, Jesus Christ has risen. He can be destroyed by anybody. My name is Emmanuel Machina, madam. I'm from Abia State in Omaha, but I base in Enugu. So, I'm mechanic engineering. All right, introduce the people standing next to you. This is my brother, Eyunna Obonna. That is my mother, Ezinne Obonna. That is my my pastor, uh, uh, Badesta too. All right, glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. During the course of today's beautiful service, you had an experience with the awesome and transformative power of God here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. When the man of God, Christopher Audrey, through the spirit of prophecy, located your family and you as well. Can you tell us your experience? Yeah. I was very, very excited because the man of God was looking at me and he said that my hands is full of blood. So I don't, I don't know that the man of God can see that because I was trying to hide it from him, but he see it. And told me, and I explained myself that I'm a member of Cortis. So I used to touch people, collect their something. Blood is in your hand. I live a, I live a bad life, sir. Who used to send you? You said you have friends. You people used to beat people, injure them, and go for such evil assignment. Who used to send you? No one, sir, because 216, my gangs went into the pastor's house and broke his door and they shot the, the man and they was thinking that the man have died. But I thank God that God really keep him because if the man died, I don't know what will be my end today. Because after that, they bought a phone for me to buy. So, because I did not follow them to the operation, this, that is my gang, so they bought the phone for me to buy the phone from them. So, I bought the phone, and I was using the phone. Two weeks interval when they were tracking the phone, and they got the phone in my hands. And they said that I should provide those guys that sell the phone for me. Which that uh, I can provide them because I don't know where they are, uh, where are they. So I spent like two months in station anti kidnapping squad in Nugu State. So I spent like two months and there, no one came to my case. So that is why they took me to prison. They took me to prison on year 216 November. So I was there. Life over death is not easy at all, my, 
It's not easy because I pass through a lot. Some challenges. People are dying there. No help. The food they will give to you, you can't even eat the food because of how they prepare the food. I was there with one of my friends. We are sleeping. With daybreak, I lost my friend. So, but God keep me alive because what the covenant I made with my God that I said that this prison will not see my end, that I will see the end of this prison. And I believe in that word. Where people are dying there, I'm, I'm fine. Nobody asking about me, my father. So I'm there alone praying for God to release me. Which I have spent a lot on this case by calling barristers. When they come, they'll just eat my money and go. No one will work anything. So there is one guy over there that introduced me to, to uh, this man of God. Said that uh, I should try him. I said, okay. So I called the number and gave to my mom. When my mom uh, called him and explained to him, he, t- uh, he told my mom to come to this church so that man of God can pray for me so that I will be free. So my mother came here, prayed for God, and uh, I not go caught up to three times and I was released. So I'm very, very happy. And I thank the church also and the man of God. Christopher Oji. So I thank him so much because through him, God set me free. And I'm very, very happy to be in the presence of God today because I did not expect that I would be outside by this day. But I thank God. I thank God for my life today. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It's our brother sharing this wonderful testimony of God's mighty intervention in his life. And just to take you back a little, we'd like you to recap. We'd like to know for how long you stayed in prison. I, sp- I spent uh, eight years and in prison. So life is not easy over there. My, I will explain because it's not easy. No one cared for you because all the people are here, there are almost 3,000 plus. There's people that spent like 20 years there, 30 years, 40 years, and it's, that place is not easy. For someone to help you over there, my dad, they find it difficult to help you because they say that uh, maybe you just came yesterday and you want them to help you. So, but I thank God for my life because when I was there, I learned work there. I learned work how to do all this furniture stuff before I came out. And I thank God that God has made it possible for me to see today and make me to be free. Because I didn't know how this happened, if I can explain. I don't know how to, but I thank God that I'm a free man again. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. We are the Spirit of God is present. Present, there is liberty. And our brother is rejoicing for the freedom he experienced. So, so I would like to know, how old were you when you got into prison? I was uh, 19 years. I was 19 years old. So I'm 28 now, 28. So because of the life of sin and courtism, our brother spent nine good years in prison. You know, the man of God, Christopher Orgy, has really taught us to live an obedient life to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing, but we should choose life. And choosing life is choosing the life of obedience to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So shall we also listen to the man of God giving you a prophetic message in today's beautiful service? He said that you are also addicted, that there is something you are taking. So tell us the things you are taking just before you experience the awesome power of God here. You are also addicted. You are taking something. Yes, sir. When I came over in prison, because I was not smoking before, so when I came over there, I saw people smoking, because without smoke, you can't make yourself happy. 
So I, I just got myself, see myself smoking, uh, SK and weed and uh, alcoholic. So, and I, I take it almost seven years there before I'm out. But since I'm out now, I'm not taking anything again. Because I said to my God that once he released me from here, that all this thing I'm doing, I will keep it aside. And I want to know him more in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So, so I would like to know, did you get any satisfaction from this life of seeing you lived? You were smoking weed, drinking alcohol. Is there any benefit it had in your life? Smoking is not good, though. Because when I was smoking, when you see me, you pity for me because I cannot eat. When I smoke, I will not eat. When you see me, now, you're thinking that I, I have a sickness in me, but that is drug. Because I, take, I smoke a lot. I used to spend like 100K a day in smoke. But uh, when I stopped, I eat and I did them myself again. So please, if you're taking hard drugs, Try to stop it because it's not good for your health. It will make you to do otherwise. What you want to do, you will do it. So if you're taking drugs, please leave it. It's not good in your system. So what else can you say about smoking of weed as well and a life of cultism that you lived? So someone is watching you right now who might as well find himself in that bondage of sin and the like. So how can you advise that one to flee from courtism and smoking of Indian hemp and the like? I would, I would advise you to stop smoking because it's not good in your body. It's not good at all. So, and courtism also is not good because when you join, starting from that day, your life will remain short because no one can tell when they will come and shoot you because when, when I joined, we used to go, maybe we used to have some issue with another courtes. Maybe you, they will kill someone, uh, they will kill our men, and our men will still kill them. So when you are there, my dear, life is not easy because all my friends, they have died. So I'm the only living one right now. All my friends, they have died all. I'm telling people outside there, please, if you are in any courtes, please try to remove yourself from there because you will not gain anything from there. Likewise, your life will be short. Thank you. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Those all around the world, I hope you are taking note of all he's saying and the wonderful advice he's given to you. You all around the world watching right now, hope you're paying attention. He's talking out from his experience. And thank God Almighty, he's standing here testifying of the goodness of God. You said, sir, that you went for operations while you were in the court. Can you tell us the kind of weapons you were using while you were in court to carry out your dubious activities? We use us and machet and gun also. That's what we use. So when they will ban you, they will give you your own ass for your protection. So that's what we are using there. All right, glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Those things are actually the destructive weapons of Satan. And the man of God, Christopher Audrey, has really taught us that we do not wage war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against Satan who operates through sin, and sinful desires. All right, sir, we thank God because this is a new chapter in your life. And we'd like you to tell us your experience here. Having come out of prison after staying nine long years, and then you're finally out. Can you tell us how you feel being in the presence of God today? I'm very, very excited and I'm very, very happy for that because I did not expect it. I did not expect it. I was thinking that uh, my life will end there. But uh, I thank God for life today, and I'm very happy to be in the presence of God today. Thank you, God. 
Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So we thank God Almighty because God Almighty also intervened in your life and in your family. So today we were in the service, in this powerful service, and we saw what God Almighty used, our dear man of God, Christopher Audrey, to do in your life. We would like you to say it in your own words. What did you receive from God Almighty today? I received many things. The man of God really gave me one million naira and my brother too, 500,000. So I thank God for him. God will open doors for him and make a way where there is no way for him and the church people in Jesus' name. And he gave me Bible and uh, 10 bag of rice. And I'm very, very happy for that. This is the Bible. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation, you are seeing the cash gift of one million naira presented to this young man and his family. And also, that is not the end. The man of God, Christopher Orgy, was led by the Spirit of God to also give his younger brother a cash gift of 500,000 naira from the Lovers of God International Foundation. And then you can also see 10 bags of rice, 10 bags of logif rice, and two new Holy Bible as inspired by the Spirit of God. Viewers all around the world, you're watching the practical demonstration of today's Christianity. Yes, our brother, having received this wonderful cash gift and huge sum of money from the Lovers of God International Foundation, and on behalf of the Marigold Christopher Orgy, how do you feel? Can you tell us? I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very happy because I did not expect it. But what I pray to God that anywhere that this thing is coming from, may the Lord give him in abundance. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So imagine coming out of prison after staying nine long years, the years that the canker worm and power worm had eaten. And then God Almighty is restoring you and also blessing you, not just physically, spiritually, but also in cash and in kind. Viewers are watching you right now. You're holding one million naira. How do you feel? I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very happy. Glory to God. I'm already saying that he's very, very excited for this wonderful cash gift. And also would like to listen to your younger brother. He also received a cash gift of 500,000 naira and a holy Bible on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation. Yes, our brother, I would like to hear from you now. Kindly introduce yourself. Um, I'm Daniel Augustine from Maya State. I'm still a student. Um, yeah, this is my senior brother. This is my senior brother and this is my mom. He's also my pastor, also a barrister. All right, we welcome you once again to the City of Jesus International Ministry. So you experienced the awesome intervention of God in your life and in the life of your brother. So what can you say in regards to all of that? Like, my brother has been in prison for nine years now. And like, I've not even seen my brother. Like, I was, I was small when the incident happened. So I keep looking for my brother, and my mom didn't even explain everything to me, how it happened, because I was not staying at home. I traveled. So it was nearly I realized that you, you, my brother is still in prison over nine years. I was, not, I, was, I was bad, feeling bad. So, but now I thank God that my brother is still here with me. Like I have someone I can call my brother right now. Like I don't even play with him. So I'm very happy to see him. And I also thank God for the pastor who gave us this gift. He gave me a sum of 500,000 naira and a new Bible, even 10 bags of rice. Also sent to my brother, 1 million naira. And I, I'm just thanking God and I, I'm just giving him a little what I have. My God will also bless him and provide. May be ready, there is no way for him. Praise our Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And yes, we believe you understood the circumstances surrounding your brother's detainment and why he 
went into prison for nine long years. So what is your decision? He said he bought a stolen phone. And then because of the life of sin and courtism he was also living, he went into prison. So what is your decision? Having heard all this and seen the consequences of sin and sinful desires. I know that I will, I will learned a lesson from this that happens to my brother. So like now, my life, I'm going to live my life easy and good. Like I won't take a risk of my life because I've already learned something from this that happened right now to my brother. So that is also a, that's also a lesson to me. So I think that I've already accepted God as my only Lord, personal and Savior. So I didn't think much now. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You're hearing it from our brother. He said he has accepted the Lord as his Savior and as his personal Lord. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And so for benefit of the viewers right now, we'd like you to give your word of advice. What can you say to you who are watching you right now, who are learning from your experience and learning from the experience of your elder brother? What word of advice would you advise someone listening to you right now? I'm just telling people that are watching at me over here, just to be very specific, to do bad is no good. You might not know whom will help you tomorrow. But just that, the only thing I have to give you is just that, just to be good and live your life in Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, our brother is saying that you should live a life without sin and sin for the desires and continue in righteousness. And so for benefit of the viewers, you're holding a cash sum of 500,000 naira. So someone may be asking, what's in the park? They are not seeing it. They're only seeing the park of 500,000 naira. I would like you to bring out the cash gift, which is inside, for benefit of the viewers. This is real. And this is practical. He received a huge sum of 500,000 naira in today's wonderful service. We give God the glory. So brother, how do you feel receiving this cash freely here at the City of Jesus International Ministry on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation, Logif and the man of God, Christopher Orji? How do you feel? I feel so happy. I didn't expect this from this man of God, but I know that it was the willing of God but I also thank you for this. This is my first time for someone to dash me this amount of money before. But I know that anywhere that this hand came from, this money that is going to multiply in Jesus' name. So I'm thanking the lovers of God and those who are watching. I'm thanking the lovers of God, International Foundations, and the man of God, Christopher Oji, who, who, who is the pastor of this church. I also thank you for your gift. And I promise to serve God with all my life. For now, henceforth, I'm not a changed person. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We thank God Almighty for your life. You have encountered the practical side of today's Christianity. Our brother is promising to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. So as you continue to make God's world the pillar and foundation of your life, and continue to stay away from sin and sinful desires, we trust that you're coming back with greater testimonies. The man of God, Christopher Audrey, will say that Jesus Christ is the divine driver of your life. So now that you have him in your boats, the boat of your life, allow him to drive you into righteousness, and the blessings of the Lord will never depart from your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. All right, so in just a few words, just to conclude, let's move over to your elder brother. Viewers all around the world, watch, and you would find that it is actually a huge sum of one million naira has been brought out, and you're witnessing this live here at the City of Jesus International Ministry on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation and the man of God, Christopher Audrey. So, sir, having received this 
huge sum of money freely here at the City of Jesus International Ministry, knowing fully well that this is your first time of coming here. And then God Almighty is intervening your life in this manner. How do you feel? I'm very, very happy and excited because someone I've not dashed this kind of money in my life. I'm very, very happy and uh, I promised to use the money well and do what that will benefit me tomorrow in future. So I thank the church and the man of God also. May God open his way and uh, make a way where there is no way for him and the family. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank uh, all the lovers of God International Foundation and man of God also, Christopher Oji. May the peace of the Lord be with him and the church. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, glory to God. So our brother is appreciating God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for this wonderful gift that they have received freely here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. So having received all of these gifts, and then not forgetting the 10 bags of logic fries you received on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation, and the man of God, Christopher Orji. Tell us how you feel. He gave me 10 bag of rice and uh, also a Bible. And uh, I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy. I promised to give my life to Christ, starting from now henceforth. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Our brother is really short of words. Imagine receiving a huge sum of money like this and the blessings of the Lord here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. We give God all the glory. All right. Um, we have been sent by the man of God, Christopher Orgy, to encourage you, and also on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation, to encourage you to make God's word a pillar and the foundation of your life, and continue to stay away from sin and sinful desires. Remember how the life of sin got you into the mess that God Almighty has delivered you from and has turned your mess into a message. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we'd like to hear from our amiable barrister who is with us right now. Just a word of encouragement for the people of God because he also had an attack from this cultist group, which our brother, who is now a changed person, once belonged to. And God Almighty kept him alive. All right, sir, we'd like you to introduce yourself. Shalom. My name is Mike Okoye um, from Anambra State. I'm a lawyer. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We welcome you to the City of Jesus International Ministry once again. All right, sir, in just a few words, would like you to give your word of advice. You know the challenges that you faced in the past, but God Almighty kept you alive, and now you are the tabernacle of God's testimony to the world. So just share your word of encouragement to people in position of power. Because comparing and contrasting your own life, you used your seat of power to promote righteousness, to promote love, and not to promote revenge. As the man of God, Christopher Orji, has taught us that the best way to retaliate is to forgive. So someone in power right now, someone, a barrister, a medical doctor, and the like, what word of encouragement or advice you have for them to use their position in righteousness? Well, I will say that we should all follow the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the man of God, Christopher Oji, will always tell us that love conquers all. Forgiveness is a weapon. And um, as you can see in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. He died for us so that while we were sinners, 
so that we will live. He forgave us. So forgiveness should be the cornerstone of every person and most especially those in authority. Again, love. If you have love, you will forgive. And you know, if you go through the scriptures, in Matthew 22, 39, the scripture says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But our Lord Jesus Christ moved it a degree higher when he gave us a new command in John 13, 34. He says, love one another as I have loved you. You must love one another. And he went further to explain the nature of love, no longer as you love your neighbor, but a sacrificial love. You're ready to lay your life for your neighbor. And he went further in John 15, 12 and 13. He said, love one another as I have loved you. And in 13, he said, greater love has no one than to be ready to lay your life for your neighbor, for your friend. So he went even three times in John 15, 17 to also repeat love one another. So we are under a command as Christians to love. And when you love, there is no, nothing that you cannot sacrifice. When you love, the world will change. If we should learn to love in Nigeria, Nigeria will be the best country. All you need is to love. Love those who hate you. Love those who injure you. Love them for Christ's sake. Love conquers all. And today is a testimony that actually the best weapon we need is love and forgiveness. So all those who are in authority, I would urge that they follow the footstep, the example of our Lord Jesus Christ to make love and forgiveness the cornerstone of their belief. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father has been emphatically talking about the love of God, how we should love our neighbor as, as ourselves, and also love our neighbor as Christ has loved us, which is a sacrificial kind of love, and also is encouraging you to use your position to promote the love of God. And I hope you took note of all of that. So we give God all the glory for this wonderful family that God Almighty has united through his word and by his spirit in the bond of love. And I cannot end this example by showing the love, the city of Jesus Christ International and uh, Lajib as well as the great man of God, Prophet Christopher Orji, has showered on these people. Ordinarily in the world, they should be despised. They should be hated. They should turn their back on him. But look at how much love he has given them. Look at how much prayer he has given them. He has actually, the city of Jesus, have just converted. It is heaven. The angels will be actually praising God. That one, one sinner is saved than all the members of this congregation that need not be saved. So I think that the glory should go to this ministry 
for the role they played spiritually, financially, morally, and otherwise. And uh, I thank God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for granting me the grace to be a bona fide member of this ministry. I think this is the greatest thing I have ever achieved in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father is saying that this is the greatest achievement beside his qualification as a verified and qualified barrister. We give God all the glory for using you as a point of contact and granting you the grace to stand in proxy. You know, the Bible encourages us to shine as light. And so the man of God, Christopher Audrey, rejoices with this wonderful family and has also sent us to encourage you, sir, that you should continue to be a beacon of light and a channel of light where there is darkness, to continue being a channel of love where there is hatred, a channel of peace where there is conflict or violence. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said, that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And we give thanks to God because we know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And you have your reward with the Lord Jesus Christ. So continue the good work of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And so we know that your life will continue to be a testimony, the living ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ out there. And you will always have testimonies upon testimonies to share in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So everybody is saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Anywhere you are, it is your turn. No one could stop Jesus Christ from resurrecting from the dead. And no one will be able to stop you from resurrecting. I command everything that is lifeless in you to resurrect. Receive the spirit of resurrection. Receive the grace of resurrection. 
I command your spiritual life to resurrect and continue to live for the glory of God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace of the living God Almighty and of his Son, our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, always be with you. Always be with the works of your hand. Always be with your nation, your continent, your generation, and the generations yet on board. Both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Those who believe are celebrating. I am seeing your business resurrecting. I am seeing the grace of God upon your life resurrecting. I am seeing the power of resurrection falling upon you when you go out. And falling upon you when you come in. In Jesus Christ's name. Everything in you will resurrect. And continues to live for the glory of God. For the glory of Jesus Christ. And for the glory of the Holy Spirit. Your life will be the dwelling place of all the blessings of God. Meaning the blessings you have been looking for are seeking for you. And are already finding you. It means you have no business with anything that is called death. Shalom.